Take a bear bitch, get the squeeze, and he tryna put on a show. Who was trapped like the neighbors, then it clips on him for pole. Nigga know by boy nation when it's up though, we don't go. Cause shoot a movie, hell it clips and hollow tips can make a show. Listen nine, two, two, threes, got choppers and cool beans. They say bug came through and left 50 shots on the steam. Big ass stick, he pull the trigger, it's kicking like gas yeah, feet. Big telescope on top of the stick, that bitch reached 1500 feet. Like what you want, got book you iron, nigga. What you tryna see, got 45, 40s, and nines, nigga. Anything you need. Got two, two, three, and sixty twos. Beats in here, different breeds. Bug Nation, we go where we please, and we'll never leave. Like, nigga. Got book wine, nigga. What you tryna see? Got forty five, forty and nines, nigga. Anything you need. Got two, two, three, and sixty twos. Beats in here, different breeds. Bug Nation, we go where we please, and we'll never leave. Bug Nation, we go where we please, and we'll never leave. Bug Nation, we go where we please, and we'll never leave. Gang. What's good, everybody, man? It is another episode of the Wiki Wiki Wednesday, man, with Chocoberry Bees and the Bug Nation. We got the Bug Nation in the building. Shout out to everybody in the chat. My boy Pyro, number one, he's he, he he's the greatest out there, man. Pyro Maximus was in here. Silverback Tactical, a.k.a. Tactical Defense, a.k.a. STD. Y'all know who he be, man. You know what I'm saying? It's that man with the dirty ding lane Yeah, we got STD up in the building. We got my boy Tactical Ski in there in the building. What's happening? What's the what's the deal, man? You know what I'm saying? What's up, everybody, man? I miss y'all Friday, man. I had so much going on Friday, y'all. So I had to I had to let it go, man. I'm telling you, I couldn't even do it. It sucked, man. But how everybody doing, man? How y'all week been going so far, man? How how everything been going with everybody out there in YouTube land? It's been kind of crazy, 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 crazy. Let me get here. There we go. There we go. I'm in here like swimwear. So I'm on the internet. Get on my, what you call me? Yeah, there we go. Man, what's up? Feeling slow, man? What's going on? What's going on? How everybody doing today? Yeah, there we go. Man, what's up? Feeling slow, man? What's going on? See? I don't know. I got feedback from somewhere. There we go. Hey, it's a lot. Yeah, it is a lot going on across the country, man. You you're right. It is a lot, man. They it's so many distractions. Why all of a sudden all these weather balloons and all this old old stuff going on? What's up, my boy, man? What, what's going on? Oh uh, um uh, Carl, man. How you been, bro? You know what I'm saying? How everybody being out there, man? Yeah, man. Check your uh check your phone in just a second, Carl. Let me get you right quick. Send it straight to your phone. Yeah, man. Uh, man, well, how everybody been doing? Hold on, man. That's it's crazy, Odin. Yeah, there we go, y'all. Y'all, give me a second, man. I'm trying to figure out something, man. I got a lot going on right quick. What's going on, Skiller? Skiller, J. Howard. King Henry, what's going on, y'all, man? Oh, there we go. Y'all coming to the stage. There's a Chinese lady and a hardworking um, mole rat, a.k.a. Uh, cousin to the meerkat, GHG. We got tactical ski now. And my boy, Chinese Trigger Chan. What's up, brother? Chan, what's going on? What's, what's going on? <laughs> what's going on, boy? Man, what's going on, man? Man, I, I see everybody in the in the what's called. I see my boy call like I'm trying to. I just hold it, man. What the hey, man, y'all know what's crazy. Why don't we just have a shooting at Michigan State and they're uh voting on the um gun act uh today. For real? Yeah, that that that, that, that don't sound coincidental. <laughs> Ain't that something that don't sound coincidental. Carl, I had your cell phone number in my phone, and I don't know what's going on with my phone. Like, because I was finna see this link. Um, There we go. I'm going to send it to your YouTube. I mean, your Instagram. I'm going to send a link to your Instagram, brother. 
Oh my God, this this thing here, bro. I swear this thing ain't beginning on my nerve. That's crazy. The day before they have a yeah, shooting. Fuck that. I've been doing the out there. Deal with the the the, the, um, the gun thing. Here oh yeah, man. But y'all notice something. Every time it's time to deal with some gun something, it's always something. It's always something, bro. Like uh um, Every time, like for real, every time, y'all, is is always some. Yeah, I Call think the gun ban, the assault ban, the gun deal they talking every about. Every time they're trying to change shit in the, oh, over here in Tennessee, they trying to make it where you can be 18 to um, purchase a handgun. But see that? Well, you I'm should be at, 18. To be honest with you, bro, if you can go fight in the service military, and they give you a 9 millimeter, right. you should have, baby, have a 9 millimeter at home. You yeah. should be. 21, 18, you should be 18 to have a pistol. If you can carry a rifle or a shotgun, you should have a pistol. To me, they got stuff so stupid, bro. Like, it's backwards. Like, everybody, like, the government is dumb. It's the smartest dumb thing on earth. It's smart when it's trying to uh, be egregious to you. And it's dumb when it's just common sense should be used. They both be you say I can have a rifle. Down to, um, ATF you say I can have a rifle at 18, but I can't carry a pistol because I can't hide it. A rifle do more damage than a pistol. A pistol, right? Come on. Like, come I was on. looking at an article on on YouTube. I don't know how how I'm gonna look into it, but they was talking what about saying? They was talking about future purchases. That they talking about putting uh uh tracking chips and guns, GPS chips and guns. Not Man, that's watch not this. One. Watch this. Man, they put they put they put GPS chips and guns, um, with fast and the fears. Yeah, bro, we. Bro, I seen some guns in the hood with chips inside the, the, the grip. Bro, I can tell you some stuff, bro. We're going to have the conversation not lying. Yeah, like, man, man, the people been tracking stuff. Oh, yeah. Man, why, you, boy, I'm going to leave it alone. If you don't know, you don't know. What's up, man? What's up, brother? But What's I just going on, some, man? I've been looking for your phone number. Look, I just looked. I'm like, man, Odin, call. I'm like, man. Howard, I'm just putting in there everything. Like, man, what, dude? I don't know what's going on my phone. I'm gonna take it to Apple, bro. I'm gonna take this phone to Apple because uh, we even begin echoes, and when somebody call, it just throw you off. Like, it's been acting crazy, bro. Yeah, I just had to um call in my watch. They sending me a new watch out. Um, my watch, you know. You know what? It didn't start until I hooked this watch up to my phone. But see, my 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 watch is connected to my phone bill. So my thing is, my sh my call shouldn't be dropping at all if I'm paying y'all extra ten to fifteen bucks for a service on the watch. So, yeah, I'm gonna, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna put I'm gonna put the I'm gonna go and put the phone or the watch, the service on my phone. I mean, on my watch and on my um uh, and on my tablet. I'm gonna do my tab. I'm gonna do two tablets because one tablet I'm gonna do a lot of data on to uh watch TV and to watch Pornhub when I'm in the truck. You know what I'm saying? And you have a bigger screen, you know what I'm talking about? And then uh, the the other one is for when I do my videos. That was a joke. Y'all was supposed to laugh, but y'all lame. <laughs> y'all are lame. Y'all lame as a hit. You're going to be on the news, man. You ran over somebody while knocking one off. <laughs> now, I don't indulge in raping myself, man. You know well, I saying? got the Galaxy uh, tablet on my plan, but as soon as I get the iPad, I'm switching it off and putting the service on my listen, iPad. Call me. I, will. I got you. Yeah. Yeah, squad business. I got you. Nation, so man. what is going on across the world, man? Man, shootings and man, it's crazy. Man, y'all, y'all never notice. It this don't see. I'm old. You know what I'm saying? And I'm glad I used to hide pull my gray hairs out of my beard. Man, I don't even give a damn no more. Man, I'm old and I'm glad to have age because with age come wisdom. You see what I'm saying? Of age and experience. I remember the 94 crime bill. Before the 94 crime bill, what happened, Carl? Mm. What what big thing happened before the ninety four crime bill? Drop me in the back. Drop you in the back. You said drop you in the back. Oh, yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. I can't stand him. Okay, I'm gonna give it to you, Columbine. Yep, the big school shooting. Yep, Columbine, Trench Coast Mafia, Tech Nines, Oozes, all that got banned because of Columbine. Then came the Brady Bill. Y'all don't notice every time they try to put some type of gun control, some get shot up. Mm -hmm. You don't remember during the Obama administration, the gay club got shot up. Yep, they won that. Yep. What's good? Well, were they in California or who were they at? Florida. 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 So, Florida. So, so the the Democratic ticket, I feel like they work on feelings. 
everything, every law they base is based on a feeling. What's up, Joe? And, you know, um, and they're always placating to people and they just seem soft all the time. You know, I, my kid can't go to the right restroom. I, and it hurts us. Um, w- there was a school shooting. It's, it's a senseless shooting and guns are to blame because we have too many guns or, you know, whatever the case is, it's to them. It's all about feeling. And that's not the way you make laws. Nope. The laws should never be based on feelings. They should be based on facts. And I honestly think that they would have every state like California. Every single state would be like California. And when, when, when you create laws and you remove power from the, the right individuals and you give them to the wrong individuals, then you end up with laws like, you know, you can steal up to $950 and it's only a ticket um, in, in California. That's why CVS moved out of, they closed so many stores in San Francisco because homeless people coming in, just grabbing baskets. Yeah. And load up the basket and just run out the door. And you can't do that. And they can't, the employees can't touch them. You know, insurance regulations stated that employees are not allowed to get in the way of a shoplifter. So it literally comes down to what happened to old fashioned, I'm going to whoop your ass, you leave that door with my stuff. Or, you know, you draw a gun, I'm going to draw a gun and we're going to have a fight. Or, you know, the police show up and they taking everybody to jail, you know, like none of this ticketing stuff. So it goes to school prayers. It goes to, um, um, religion and schools. That's where all that shit started. And look where we are now. It's, we got to reverse this at this point, or we're going to get worse. At this point, I believe it's going to get worse before it get way better. And I think I'm going to be dead before they end up getting it better. You know, I don't, I don't think you're gonna be dead. I just think everything is gonna be a reset. I think a reset is closer than what people really think it is. I, I just, just my intuition, premonition, whatever you want to call it, man. I feel it's like it's gonna be a reset, child, and um, it's gonna be a major you, reset, and it's gonna check a lot of, it's gonna check a lot of stuff because what's can you happen- can can you elaborate on what a reset okay, is? What, when I say a reset is a reset is going to be it's going to like a reset checks and balance because it's going to start financially because right now the people in power are financially empowered because of finances. You see what I'm saying? They finances is going to be just like the last reset we had was what the Great Depression. Depression. The Great Depression was the last reset we had. You hear me? Then we had a mild reset which was twenty twenty uh two thousand eight. With the mortgage collapse, that's a mild reset. Now is 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 gonna be, it's gonna be a reset on the size of the Great Depression, but with not with, with all what, what would I say? It won't have all the vices of the Great Depression, like all the food lines and stuff. But it's gonna be like one of those. It's gonna humble a lot of people, because that's what's wrong with people now. People don't have no humility. Mm-hmm. They don't have no compassion, no no understanding, and and you're gonna when you're broke, you get understanding and compassion real quick. Wait, <laughs> so this reset you talk of, um, is it gonna be like I know you said financial, but with financial comes a lot of other things, desperation. Oh, oh yeah, yes, yes, yes. Listen, um, it's gonna be some and then a, it, and then past that, you're gonna have race mixed into that. Um, I think a lot of, I think you're right. A lot of things going to come because when people get desperate or they are on the wrong side, you know, of the, of the deal and everyone's, you know, living the high life, then you start to have these, um, I mean, the movies tell it there's movies like Elysium, you know, where all the rich people moved to a certain area that's untouchable. Mm -hmm. Right. And then you got everybody else out there there just fending for themselves, you know, and Mm -hmm. lack of healthcare and, you know, it's just shitty life. Right. So the rich get richer, the poor get poor, and there is going to come a point that there, I, it's just natural to fight the power, you know, like it's it's overdue, right? The, um, first, the first major reset. I don't mean to cut y'all call, but I want you to think about what I'm going to say. 
The first major reset that we had was the Boston Tea Party. Right. No taxation without representation. Then, it, like I said, the mild reset was the, the Dust Bowl. You know yeah. what I'm saying? was the Great Depression. Then we had a light reset, like I said, 2008. We done had a couple of little, because we done had recessions, and they just ain't call it what it was. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? They, they hit it well. They flooded. They flood with this paper money that means nothing. Paper is nothing. Y'all don't understand. Paper means nothing. It's nothing. It only have value when the Fed say it have value. When somebody gives some value, it's not valuable at all. That's why you you have a certificate of a of a bill. Um, you mm-hmm. don't actually own that money. Yeah, yeah. It is a certificate of what's in the treasury, right? Um, just like people think, oh, I own my home. No, no, you don't. You don't, you don't own it. Because you have a certificate it. of deed. Yep. That means the government mm-hmm. technically owns your home. They allow you to stay to, there. You, know, <laughs> you pay it off and you still don't own your home. You have a certificate of deed. Boy, I love you. I love you, Carl. You know why I love you, bro? No homo. I love you, bro. Because you segue right into my topic. You segue into just by question. You segue right into the topic because I the uh the the the, the thumbnail was misprinted, but it, it got the same. It it, it 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 gives what I'm trying to get at. What is your definition of freedom? Because I, I didn't want the financial in front of it. You know right. what I'm saying? But what is your definition of freedom? And it's a two-part question. Because tonight, that's what we've been discussing. That's how I, I'm glad that you asked the question because it said, wait, right into, I was trying to figure out how I'm going to get this up in here. You just, I like the way you did that. That was awesome. Um, But but like you said, you see how the rich are doing it now. The rich, mm-hmm. the real rich are really not owning nothing. And they go into these islands and they think they're going to be safe. It ain't no bunker. It ain't no island gonna save you nope it ain't gonna save you so you might as well go and get with the program and a lot of people that got money now when they get broke they got two things they're gonna do go crazy or they're gonna kill themselves kill so a lot of them gonna wipe themselves out you're gonna yeah. get probably 30 percent gonna wipe themselves out and then the rest gonna turn into animals it's like mm-hmm. putting a man in, you can take a man you can take a man and i and take a regular man, decent guy, go to work, take care of his family, put him in a penitentiary for five, five years, and then release him and see what you got. Mm-hmm. A monster. You so, have a so, monster. So let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. So if, you, if you're a decent man and um, and shit goes down, right? Mm-hmm. Right. You, you own a bunch of guns. I own a bunch of guns. Do we get with like people who own a bunch of guns and protect our families together? Yes, because you, you know to. what? Because that means we're going to be marauding. Because when supplies start getting low, where we got to go? We got to start kicking in doors, right? And getting oh, food. Yeah. Oh yeah. We got to go kick in the Walgreens, you know, get medicines. That means, you know, we got to try to trade, barter, do anything we can. To survive, right? Right, right. By any means necessary. So know that other people are going to be doing the same thing. They're going to be rolling up in, you know, 10 pickup trucks. Oh, they're going to be deep. You're right. You're going to fight 50 people. You Two people going to fight 50 people. It ain't going to happen. You know? So you have to think about security and numbers. Hey, I'm going to tell you all something. I'm going to tell you who gave a good template. And everybody don't pay attention to this. The Walking Dead. Mm-hmm. The Walking Dead letting you know what to do. What's going to yeah. happen. Oh, yeah. What's going to happen when it ain't no law. See, because, see, let me tell you a lot of you rich people. See, I live by some affluent people. And they got private security. They got people with full automatic machine guns. They got Highland Park University Park Police. But guess what? If shit hit the fan nine times out of ten, they not going to be in UP or HP. They, they dipping. They got somewhere else to go to. Right. When they already see it's getting hit, they already they already getting they got already getting in the boonies. And they surrounding themselves with like minded people so they can create a society to protect themselves. But right. man, I'm I'm telling you, like it's gonna be a reset. 
It's going to be a reset. And you watch your politicians and you watch these people that look like they animated because I've been seeing videos. And then I go back and look at videos myself and zoom in on them. And like, man, this dude, this don't even look real. This, I mean, a lot of this stuff don't even look real. Like it looked like some sci-fi movie, just like Joe Boss said in, in the comment. It is it's like a sci-fi movie. Like, bro, that 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 goes back to hints to the question. What is freedom? What is freedom? You just said you never own a house, you never own the land. And to me, I'm gonna tell you some people not gonna think I'm crazy. Owning a house is the dumbest thing on earth. That's yes something that the, yes and no, yes, yeah, yes and no, yes and no, because you can get something out of it as long as you as long as you maintain it. But what if you get to the point to where you can't maintain it? That's true. You can't you, pay taxes, you can't pay, you know, you can't maintain the house, you can't put a roof on it, you can't replace windows, you can't foundation. So you're gonna up, lose cold, right? cold, you're gonna fall out of cold. You can't cut the grass. They, they they got cold enforcement again. I don't seen people lose their house from not cutting their grass. Uh -huh. Somebody died and they forgot and they got family members out of state and the grass grew six feet. We sit God forbid. Bunch. God I'm forbid they leave. They live in an HOA. You know. Oh Lord, and that's the <laughs> biggest crock. That's worse than the banking system. The bank. The everybody needs a house. Man, well. If the if the if if the HOA fees aren't exorbitant and the the um the person running the HOA isn't a tyrant, then they can be good. But HOAs do stop for people from parking cars on jack stands in the driveway, um, from having illegal buildings, right? Mm -hmm. Um, so let's say somebody built a shit out back and they were turning it into um a pub, right? <laughs> You don't want people out there partying and you know playing loud music every night. But, but you don't need an HOA to do that because if you're smart and you're a rat, you just call the city. And then, but but still, uh, it takes the city. But the HOA is faster, right? Yeah. Um, it keeps all, people all, from all painting your house is pink. Wait, but wait, but wait. Neighbors can be faster. Um, okay, I'm gonna say it. Statute of limitations up in Texas two three years. People used mm -hmm. to walk in front of my house in Irving. The city of Irving says that's a public street, but you're not for the park in front of my house. Well, I can't stop in front of my house. I got to block the street to put my groceries in the house. If I'm just running in the house, I got to park in the middle of the street because it was apartment complex that stayed around the corner from my house. I saw putting their tires on flat. Mm -hmm. I did that two or three times. Guess what the people stopped doing? Parking in front of my door. I said, man, listen, if you're going to park on the street, at least leave me somewhere. If you're going to park, let me be able to walk right through where the mailman walked my walkway. Do not block my walkway. I put a sign out there, they like they ain't respect. I put six, seven cars on flat. Mm -hmm. Three, four times. I did about two times. I got the message after two, and then I had a person thought, well, I parked here today. He ain't getting me. I got his, I got him again. When I got him all, all four, yeah, they stopped playing. But it's ways to, it's ways to make people stop doing stuff. It's ways yeah, but I mean, you don't you won't have that that greenhouse, you know bright greenhouse and then you want somebody painting their house pink like but is they house i can't tell you what not the color of your house see that's the but problem. hold on hold on now go ahead go ahead, go ahead. Hold on. We can debate this. now go if ahead. you let's say you move into a neighborhood right the whole neighborhood is italian themed it's got you know stucco and it's italian rock and like just beautiful right or you move into a neighborhood and every home is uh victorian style or an, uh, another neighborhood is all craftsman homes, right? right? So there's a there's a there's a style and a motif to that neighborhood. But when somebody wants to come along and change their outside of their house into a fucking castle, <laughs> you know, they want to put butcher's corners on, you know, with um, what do you call it, um, towers and shit, and yeah. then put dragons on their house. And what the fuck is that? You know, there has to be. <laughs> A stopping point, and that's what HOA is. Uh, he said they got a dragon. They got a right. Got a imagine, imagine building. Okay, so you imagine you living in a fluent neighborhood, and Pantera moves in, and they want to put that big ass thing they had on front front of their house. That big old monster head on front of their house. I'm an evil. Listen, I'm 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 gonna I, be honest. I'm an evil neighbor. If I get tired of seeing, I'm gonna ask you to do something about it. You don't want to, uh, oh, granddaddy. This got to be. 
for real official. <laughs> Ain't nobody, <laughs> nobody but real. <laughs> but that's that's the that's the beauty of a choice. So they're they're a good thing and a bad thing, right? Just yeah. like it's when they tire tyrannical, like you see, right, right, and they do get out of control because with money comes power, with power comes abuse. <laughs> Moat and gargoyles. <laughs> <laughs> Your house gonna get set on fire. Hope you got good insurance. But I'm just saying, you know, I just know people that you we are action. You you man, what are you doing? Don't you see the aesthetics of the neighborhood? Like, come on, man, don't be a fool. It's my house, I do what I want. And well, it's not well put the gargoyles and the dinosaurs and, and the uh <laughs> dragons in the inside. <laughs> Have a good time. Right. Yeah. Oh boy, you'll get tired of weird stuff happening to your house. <laughs> Man, you could just have listen, I'm just gonna give you some hypotheticals. You just sitting in the living room and just a dead dog just comes through your, your window. <laughs> you got a big plate glass picture window. Oosh, a big dead dog. Look, got I, got, I, got, I got I got an HOA right here where I live at, man. My HOA ain't about shit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm being honest with you. I mean, but look. We don't pay a whole lot, man. We pay um uh, one hundred and twenty dollars a year or whatever, you know. Now, okay. uh, my wife was on board for a little while. She was like, you know what? I'm tired of these bastards. I'm, and she just jumped off that shit, you know, because they wasn't doing anything. And these people had the nerve. See, we got two entrances to um our subdivision, you know. So she would constantly tell them the entrance because I live in um you know at the end of the um uh the other entrance. Everybody else lived toward. You know, on the opposite side, you know, so she would tell them, hey, look, y'all need to, you know, we need to do all this stuff on the other um, on the other side or whatever. They're like, oh, well, we know never go by there. So we don't know what it looks like. My thing was, how the hell are you guys, you know, the president of, you know, the president, vice president, treasurer and all that. But you don't go to the other side to see how it looks. You only look at that one side, you know. So finally, it started going down there, seeing that, you know, the um, uh, the sign or whatever that we have was falling apart. Um, the, the trees need to be trimmed. They were paying a guy to come out here who was supposed to do it. But the guy, I guess he knew they wasn't coming to the other side. So uh -oh. he was like, hell, I'm just going to uh -oh. collect my money and just do one side. <laughs> you know? Right. Can so, y'all hear me? Yeah. Yeah, I, yeah, we can fuck? hear you. You probably can't hear yourself. Look at him. Ragged ass uh, headphones. That's the problem. But anyway, no <laughs> look at him. Look, he's just sitting there, just oh, looking. Just look. <laughs> but yeah, so um, uh, you know, they wasn't doing anything, stuff like that, you know. Um, so we jumped on them, told them, look, y'all need to get down there, look at the other side, start getting that stuff together, you know. Um, right. But long story short. Part of the problem with it, with these people that had been on the H on, you know, the uh, the president had been the president for, I think, like 15 years. You know, this dude would talk about what everybody else needed to do to his house, to their house. He didn't pressure wash his house. I mean, you know, his house was like it was supposed to be white, but it looked yellow, yellow and green, mm -hmm. you know, because of all the mold and stuff. The other yeah. lady who was on there wasn't doing shit to hers, you know, and we saw, you know, as we started jumping on telling them, hey, look. Y'all are bringing the property value down. It's not, you know, these renters or whatever who's doing all this stuff or whatever because you have more, you know, people renting their houses out. I said, you guys are doing it. You're the president and you're supposed to, you know, be an example for the community or whatever. I said, but y'all ain't doing shit. Nothing. Right. My boy, my boy, start acting crazy again. Stream y'all, y'all been doing good. Hey, stream y'all, just your raggedy ass equipment. <laughs> y'all, now I, my, my, my he still can't hear. Look, he can't yeah. hear. Can you hear, bud? Yeah, I can, hear, hear. Yeah, can, I can hear you. Yeah, because your shit raggedy. Anyway, <laughs> your but sister. now, look, I got a neighbor now, man. This woman um, sit there, her backyard. I mean, she has a couch in the backyard. Um, she has her fence. She tore down her fence and shit like that. You know, um, she has maybe, I say, a quarter of, her, uh, of a new fence put up. Uh, grass, her grass one time looked like it was about four feet high. And like I say, I'm in a, um, you know, I pay an association fee. Right. I had to go over there, knock on the door, sit there and tell, look, you need to cut that shit. I say, because what we have right now, we got, you know, mice coming, you know, from your backyard, snakes and everything else coming over to mine. That shit ain't cool. You know, I said, I cut my grass every week, sometimes twice a week. My shit looks good over here. I pressure wash the house. I do all that shit. Hers, not a damn thing, you know. 
And still to this day, and we're talking about, you know, this, this, if I could take a picture and I probably would, I'd take a picture and put it up in the, um, in that little group chat and everybody that's on it. Y'all see that shit, man. I mean, oh, yeah, you do that. Shit. Do that. Yeah. We need to that's see this. terrible shit, man. This chick, look, she said that one time something died in her backyard, you know, and she had a little buzzard party right there in the backyard. I mean, it was like a ton of buzzards just right there in the backyard or whatever, you know, like, I mean, they had on hats the whole night, just partying back there. <laughs> Eating whatever the hell it died, you know. I'm damn. sitting and I'm looking at my out my window. I'm like, damn, you know what the hell's going on? And first, I was cool with it, you know. I was like, okay, yeah, maybe you know, I sit there and tell her she need to call somebody or whatever, come over and get. It. Man, I sit there and look. This chick back there, you know, um, doing a uh, look like a FaceTime live or whatever, showing everybody the buzzers in the backyard. And at that point, I lost my cool, man. I went over there, and knocked on the door, and said, look, I don't know what the fuck died in your backyard. You need to get that shit up. I said, because you got, not only do you have the buzzards on your house, them bastards on my house. And I said, they tear, I got a brand new roof. You need to get this shit together. I told mm-hmm. the association about it. And like I said, the shit goes nowhere, you know? So like I said, sometimes the associations are good when you have a good group of people, but when you got a group of people that just really don't give a shit, mm-hmm. hell, man, you might as well just hang it up, you know? Right, and, right. I, you know, and I think neighborhood associations can be pretty good because, you know, they beautify the outside of the neighborhood, right? They keep everybody's fences in line when you're driving down the drive around the outside of the neighborhood because, you know, certain neighborhoods, you see them, people got nice fence, nice fence, nice fence, and somebody got a fucked up fence. Like, you panel's missing, you can see into the backyard, and the backyard's untidy, and then you got okay fence, okay fence, you got some that are leaning, leaning two different directions, Neighborhood associations are supposed to keep all that beautified, right? Um, and planting flowers, planting trees, uh, keeping the entrance really nice, you know, putting the little, you know, flowers around the entrances and shit like that. And then, you know, just making sure the neighborhood's in check. I mean, that's honestly, we need to police ourselves, but in certain situations, many people don't. They get complacent and lazy, right? Yeah. And they, they get to worse and worse and worse. Next thing you know, they got, you know, they become, let's say you moved in, you, you had a hoarder move in, right? And this fool got two and three boats parked up in his yard. He got cars. He got, and all of them flat in the driveway. He can't even park in his own driveway. Now he's parking on the street. Now he's taking up street spots. You know, um, he's having to pull trash out of his house and leaves it on the side of his house. Cause the, the trash people won't pick it up because it's not bagged. Right. And so now he's got all his trash piling up. Like you said, couches, all kinds of shit all around his house now. Right. Mm-hmm. You can call the city and the city can come out and cite him, but they ain't going to do shit. No. Right. No. That's where a neighborhood association comes in because now he, there's, there's bylaws and it states that if you don't, take care of your home and keep it beautified and you get too many infractions we have the right to sell your house out from under you yep put a lien on your shit right and y'all like that don't it what hey but say sometime in some of these places man some of these hoas man i'm talking about they'll make you catch a real life like capital murder charge Oh like, yeah, yes. yeah i'm yes. dead serious because i done seen it man look dude i bro i was dating this chick one time dude I whip up to a hot man. She had a bad little crib. She in the Dallas Metroplex area. Nice neighborhood, gated community. You got to go through the gate. Uh, bro, I was in my old school. My old school ran hot. It ran hot. That was the purpose of me going to a house. My old school ran hot. I need to replace a hole. We leave. So it leaked a little bit, but I put a, you know, one of those little oil pan things up under the kitchen. I know where I'm at. So I'm like, I can't leave. You know what I'm saying? So I, did what I need to do. Did my due diligence. Bro, we left. By the time we come back from AutoZone to come with the hose, so I can just replace the hose and put new antifreeze in them. But they got my car. He finna put me on a flatbed. No, man. All somebody got hectic. The, the, um, homo, the homeowner association, HOA lady. I'm the HOA president. We don't have this. Look, woman, you saw me come through the gate. You saw me at the gate when they was buzzing me, calling her to ask, can I come inside the, the neighborhood? You seen I had a problem. You got an email saying that, hey, we got a visitor. His car is leaking. He's The, the security done sent the email before I even came through the gate. 
Man, that woman had my car up on the thing, man. I swear I'm gonna blow her brains out. And I think she knew it. Ah, uh, the cops, I'm, look, baby, before the cops get here, y'all can pull that down and let me fix it and get on about my business. I'm not gonna pay you. You know what I'm saying? I only been there like 15 minutes. Bro, it got bad. And when I seen that, from that moment on, bro, I stayed in the HOA neighborhood probably like three or four times. And I stayed there long enough to flip it and get on up out of there, bro. Yeah, I don't, I don't do them. I mean, like I said, I got mine. Yeah, if I can't, and, and most new ones in Texas now, if it's a new subdivision, it's HOA. Oh, yeah. I mean, some of them, man, there was one up here that we, um, uh, when we were looking at uh, getting this house right here, went to some of these areas. And this one area I went to, man, these jokers were talking about uh, $300 a month HOA fee. You know? Mm. And, I mean, beautiful house. You know, beautiful house, beautiful neighborhood. But like I said, that HOA fee. And then the other thing is that um, I couldn't, um, you know, park my work truck there. You know, yep. like my work truck is a, you know, F-150 or whatever, you know. So, I mean, it's not like it's, you know, a big bucket truck or nothing like that. Yeah, like a, a semi or something. Yeah, you know, but they're like, nah, you can't park that here. I was like, well, hell, I guess I ain't moving here. You know, my wife, she loved the house, you know, but I'm like, nah, first of all, the HOA fee is too damn high. And then I can't park my um my truck here, my work truck, you know. So we, got, we, we have a neighborhood here in Dallas that is notorious for pulling people over. Oh yes, we got. If you don't have a sticker on your car that says Highland Park, <laughs> boy, you be too. <laughs> yep, you they are pulling you over. You right, <laughs> right. So you, you don't travel through jail. Highland Park unless you got your tags, yes. inspection, no warrants. You got your shit in order, right? Hey. Um, and I mean, you can pass through, you know, but yeah. if you stop and you out. Don't Your car doesn't look right and don't belong like it's in the neighborhood. They're you coming to get you. Black They're coming to get you. SUVs. But at the same time, you got to think those people pay a ton of money to live in that neighborhood, right? And they pay a ton of money for that HOA, which is also supporting the police department. Yep. So they don't have the same kind of riffraff and bullshit in their neighborhood that most other places have. Because them cops are patrolling them streets. You don't and, hear fireworks. You don't mm -mm. hear gunshots. Mm -mm. You don't hear loud music. You don't mm -mm. hear burn, rubber burning. You don't hear shh, unless you buy SMU. Now you because that's closer to yeah. Dallas. But if you go in Highland Park, okay, put it like this here: Highland Park is the same police department that Jerry Jones told them I'm late for church and drove off, and told them to send a ticket in the mail. You know where I stay, and they didn't know what to do. They just stood there. But if you come to Highland, man, I went to jail driving through University Park. That's how I found out about the park cities, y'all. If this was what? What year was that? That was like 2000. No, 99. 99. I'm coming through. I'm coming through University Park. I've Lovers Lane. That's the old Lovers. Right before you get to University, um, you was getting right there on the side of SMU. Now, you know, I'm thinking Lovers was going to take me to Lovers across Dallas, across the tollway on mm -hmm. the other side to, uh, what is that? Uh, what they call it? North Park. On the other side of University Park, on the other side of Highland Park. So I'm driving down there from 75 thinking I'm trying to cut across. You're supposed to go down Mockingbird, not Lovers. Mockingbird will take you straight across, but Lovers won't. Man, I got down by Lovers and got right there to the dead end. You had to make a right. It was this big house there, and it's a shopping center to your left. University of Paul Police pulled up on me and Kendrick, bro. I was in a Crown Vic. And this one back then, on the drug dealers drove Crown Vicks. Like, drug dealers drove Crown Vicks. If you seen somebody in the Crown, a 90 motor Crown Vic, you knew they was... Drug dealer drove Crown Vic. So me and him in the Crown Vic. I look, I said, man, where we at? The dude pulled up on my University Park Police. I said, man, was you a security guard? I'm thinking, because I'm thinking I'm in Dallas. I don't know nothing about these cities. Man, that man pulled me and Kendrick over. I didn't have insurance on the car. I had a registration. <laughs> I bought the car from my homeboy Red. So I ain't did nothing. We just rolling. I got a SKS in the, in the trunk. In the trunk. And so uh, me and Kendra, they stopped. So Kendra left me because I'm the driver in the state of Texas. You're not the passenger. You don't got to stay there. He went to go call us a ride because he knew the car finna get towed. Mm -hmm. Cuz found that SK in that car, slammed the car down, threw me on the car, put me in cuffs, ran over to Kendra, stuck the gun in his chest. Don't you move. Kendra's like, no, I said, don't move. He gonna kill you. Bruh. They let Kendra go. They took me to jail. I went to jail for the driver, no license.
because I have a license there. I went to jail. I stayed in Hallam Park jail for three days. And they jail was, I'm going to show you that they jail is made for you not to go to jail. They jail on the head. The jail, the fire department, and City Hall was the same building. It's a beautiful building across the street from this park. I go into jail. There's one cell for men, one cell for women. It's a camera in there watching you. They never come back there and, and see you because they got a camera watching. And on the side of the camera, if you look a little bit, you can see into the female cell. Man, I, I learned about the park cities then. And when I tell you I learned about the park cities then, you don't play with Highland Park. You don't play with Universal Park. If you're on a main street like Mockingbird that's going to go through or uh, Highland Park or if you're on, um, what is that? Um, lovers go so far. But lovers, you got to make that right to get on Hillcrest. You can't keep straight. But if you jumping on Hillcrest and you're on the main street to get back to Northwest Highway or something, hey. you cool. Hey. But if you make that left and go into that neighborhood to my sightseeing, I guarantee you, you're going to have four or five of them on you. And bro, they done ran your tags. Mm -hmm. They know who you are before, man. Yeah. But so, but when you when you're affluent like that, and you live in that kind of neighborhood, you pay that kind of money. Oh yeah. You don't have to worry about crime. That's why they have a. They're protected, right? Mm -hmm. That's why they leave their windows open. You see these white people; they just leave all them curtains open. You see the Christmas tree in their dining room, living room, and. They happy like that, but we don't live like that because of our economic disparity, right? So yeah. we live in the middle of crime. <laughs> we got we got middle class people committing crime because they want to be rich people, right? Mm -hmm. Um, we got poor people committing crime because they want to be middle class people. So. I go back, I digress, and I say that homeowners associations can be good and, and it can be bad. bad. Right. But if you're if you're living in an in a good one, great. But if you live in a bad one with tyrants, move. Right? Or change change the leadership. One. If you have the money to live in a university park or Highland Park area and have that sticker on your car. Then that's great. You don't have anything to worry about. Nothing. You okay? You right. Got a, you got a one minute, a thirty seconds to one to two minutes at the maximum response time. Dead mm -hmm. serious. Dead serious. Like don't be, bro. Look, Universe Park right here. Universe Park, but depending on where you located, if you on that fine line of Dallas, SMU, Universe Park, where we live, we on that fine line. Now, when one gonna go to university first. Then this right. gonna send you to Dallas, but guess who gonna respond? University, Dallas, and you might get uh, SMU police if he get the call and he in the area. So you are gonna get converged by three police departments, and if you're on that fine line between UP and and Highland Park, you don't want them to the, the, the gang up on you. Like, yeah, University Park is more lenient than Highland Park. Highland Park don't play no game, right? And that's my next that that's that's gonna let me know I made it long. I'm trying to move to Highland Park as long as my kid is in school. And if I can get my daughter to come live with me, she can go to University Park School because they schools, they public schools is like going to Jesuit. Or, um, it's or like going to private school. Yeah, it's like going to a private school. Like Jesuit is the male school. And what's the, the school right there? Um, on, um, damn, on Walnut Hill. Um, Ursula Academy. That's where uh, Bill Gates' wife went to school. Melinda Gates went. She just gave 60 something million to build them a gym. Like the Highland Park school system have a school system that's so superior to any other school system in the Metroplex. Like that's the only reason why I want to live out there. It's just to get okay. my kids go to school like that, bro. So, you, got, you got young kids, bro? I got six year old. I tried to look. I was trying to get out here to get my son when he was playing football because uh everything come from Highland Park go to the NFL. Jerry Jones' grandson was playing for Highland Park High School. So, Bug, let me ask you this. So, would you say that you are financially free if you can live in Highland Park? You've made it. I won't say I'm financially free. I'm I'm on my way to financial freedom. 
Hell yeah, I can say if I move to Holland Park. Because <laughs> the cheapest thing in Holland Park gonna be five mil. Like for real. If you right. think I'm lying, look it up. Look it up. Right. How much the, the, the cheapest regular house that we'll pay 60 grand for, they gonna you're gonna pay two million for it like that. Right. So yeah, I ain't gonna tell it like yeah, if you can stay in Highland Park, if you can live in Highland Park. Now, Turtle Creek. Wouldn't. When you say yeah. live in Highland Park, you talk about living and you debt free though, right? You yeah, debt free. I ain't talking. I ain't talking about living in the uh, uh <laughs> you paying a mortgage. Robin Peter to pay Paul. Now nah, I'm talking about you. Let, let me tell you what freedom is to me. Freedom is financial freedom. I owe no man no. nothing. Yeah. I owe no bank. I owe no credit card company. I owe nothing. nothing. If I go get the credit card and I say, mm, I want to take me, uh, Odom, Chan, Skilly, and uh, Bugs' granddaddy, aka Real Fish Fish Cake, and I want man, I'm gonna take our list and our families to Belize for the week. I'm gonna pay them for you taking out. That's financial freedom. To me, that's my idea of financial freedom. My idea of financial mm -hmm. freedom. I don't. I don't have to live in Highland Park. I want to live in Highland Park as long as my child is in school, because then I will. Go talk to her mama and we'll make work out something. Hey, look, I just want my child out here because she'll have a better opportunity and she'll you'll meet better people because those people it's all about putting yourself in, in a place to meet people in the network. So you got somebody, you got I got a six-year-old and she growing up with all these kids and they go to high school together and they know each other, then everybody go off to college. You around millionaires and billionaires. You are around people with the money mindset, so you are the company you keep. Setting them up for success. That's it. So let me ask you something, Bug. So um, I'm half Japanese and half black, right? Um, Konnichiwa. Yeah, I'm Negro knees. That's what they say. Oh, man. Um, Listen, hold on, hold on, hold on. Wait, I got, I got to do it. Hey, you my brother? <laughs> <laughs> my brother. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, I grew up, I grew up around military bases all my life. So I've always moved. I've always traveled, right? Right. The thing is, is I come back home and my cousins, they were like, you talk different. You don't sound like us. And they all grew up in Terrell and Mesquite and Dallas, you know, some of them living over in Grove and Ledbetter and, you know, some other places. But they got. They in the hood. Let's just put it that way. They, they, they live in the hood, right? So they have a certain talk and I talk differently. And of course, you know, they ride me by how I talk, but I shut them all down one day because we all hanging out in the country and, you know, bullshit and do what kids do while parents are shooting dice and drinking and, you know, barbecuing and, you know, doing what adults do. Right. So they said, you were talk different, you know? And I was like, look, I live in a better place. It's not my fault. We live around the world. We've traveled. That, again, that's not my fault. So why are you teasing me about my life being better than yours? You should aspire to do more with your life so you can do this. You, you, did you tell them you ain't really say because my life's better than yours, did you? Oh, yeah. He it, it is. It is. Yeah, he went there. Yeah, it is because now, would, I, I've what, been to their houses. What, what makes I've been to their better? houses. Okay, so I've been to their houses, right? They live in shotgun homes. Was your, the your, was your, fi your, the financial, your financial situation was better? That's what you're saying? No, I was just, I was worldly, right? I understood people from a global view. Um, my The way I grew up was because of my dad, right? And, and my mom. So, you know, my dad was educated. educated you know he's world traveled um you know he's in the military um so i got to go along for the ride right but when people right. are of lower income lower position in life they'll always tease you and try to bring you down to their level so they feel one up so that was my true. minute that was my minute to fight back and basically level the playing field on them right and when I told him that, look, you live in a house and you got holes in your floors. You don't even have cabinet doors and you got sheets for, for doors in your house. Don't come at me like that. It's not my fault. I live where I live. But 
inspired to do better for yourself. Yeah. And, and you know, he has a point there because uh same way he said, you know, he grew up a military kid, same thing with me, mm-hmm. you know. Um, and whenever I'd go back to New Orleans, I heard that all the time. You know, mm-hmm. you talk proper, you talk you bougie, you, you or you know, yeah, you call, act call like you're rich. Yeah, call me little rich. Yeah, same thing, little rich right. kid. You know, I'm like, shit, right. I'm not rich. You know, my dad just decided to get the fuck out the city, get, get the yeah. hell away from New Orleans because he wanted better for his kids. That's you know, and that right there is what put us in play. You know, in the place that um that we are. You know, right? We have family now, same thing. You know, sit there and talk. Mm-hmm. It's not our fault. Your parents decided. You know, they didn't want to leave New Orleans. You know, or they didn't want to get away from their mama or their daddy or whatever the hell was going on. Yeah, you mm-hmm. got if. If you want better for your family, you do what you have to take and do. You exactly. Know, like it. You're gonna. It, it doesn't matter. But you'll have some people. You know, it's like I say. You know, you'll hear them even on these chats or whatever. You know, talk about. Um, you know, I like to be around real G's and all this and all that or whatever. What the fuck is a real G? You know, a real. Somebody G taking care of their family. Yeah. Taking care of everybody around them. That's a real G. And trying to make everybody be on the same playing field as them. If you got the same ambition as him, because. That's one of the problems. I want to be around a real G. What's a real G? A G ain't nobody going out here taking nobody's yeah. life, robbing nobody. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Family to provide for their family. No, that's not a G. They twist that shit to keep yeah. that, you know, that street mentality or whatever. And the thing is, when the fuck you gonna get away from the street? You know, if your whole life is based off the street and shit like that, well, like they say, live by the sword, die by the sword. You know, exactly. Want to be um uh you know street? Want to be a real G or whatever? Then don't complain when your ass is broke. Or when somebody is doing better than you or whatever, you know, mm-hmm. and, and you go and sit there and say, oh, yeah, you're this, you're that or whatever, you know, that's some bullshit. And the same thing like um, uh, what uh, uh, Joe Vaz said, you know, you talk white. That was the same thing we heard, you know, because my cousins are all up there, you know, mispronouncing shit or saying shit. I couldn't even fucking understand, you know, mm-hmm. but I'm talking white because I talk different. You, you know, know what? So I you talk know, in a way that they don't talk. They don't talk. And I'm going to tell yeah. you something. My daughter. My daughter, my daughter, um, I was staying in Irving. So Irving is a suburb of Dallas. I stayed in North Irving. South Irving is more closer to West Dallas, closer going back toward Oak Cliff. Cross the, you cross the Trinity, you in Oak Cliff. You West Dallas to the left. So South Irving is more Hispanic and more like it was more hood of like you got your levels. You know, you got the ghetto, then you got the people that's trying. So North Irving at the time, when I moved to North Irving, North Irving was close to Valley Ranch. Valley Ranch is where the Cowboys live in Los Colinas. Los Colinas is Irving, but Los Colinas call itself Los Colinas because that's where affluent people stay. Los Colinas, Valley Ranch. And then in Los Colinas, they got a, um, a, a gated community called Cottonwood Valley. That's where Aikman used to live. Cottonwood Valley, they HOA is horrible now. But million dollar homes, the cheapest house over there is 1.3. So you got levels. So we stayed closer to Cottonwood Valley. We stayed right in the little corridor, North Gate. That it was nice then, it's trash now. But we stayed North Urban. So my daughter went to Siegler Academy. Siegler Academy is one of the best schools you can go to in Urban. So when we used to come home to Louisiana, oh, his daughter white. His daughter white. He she talked white. Then she go stay with her mom. Now she ratchet as hell. And it's me and her had this conversation last night. My daughter turned, what? Money turned 25 tomorrow, to be exact. My daughter turned 25 tomorrow. We had this conversation last night. We were just talking, and she was just like, I remember when I was just, when I used to talk proper, and I used to, I said, yeah, because the environment. Think about when you was in North Irving, you wore dress pants, dress slacks, blouses, and heels. You looked at nice. But then when you went to Louisiana, you dress like your environment. And, and and that's one of the things, like like what both of y'all said, uh, you said, Ray, and what, what uh, Carl said. I had the same problem. I go home. I came from nothing, y'all. I came from the ghetto. I'm talking about, bro. I came from where uh, we had an orange card like this, bro. You hear me? It was a card. With an orange card, if your liquor go out, you would run a plug from your house to their house. You know what I'm saying? People steal electricity from each other. You know what I'm saying? That type of situation, bro. Like, it ain't, ain't nothing... That's what I came from. It made me who I am. So it ain't nothing to be ashamed of. Mm-hmm. Shit, my parents mm-hmm. made poor decisions. My mama made poor decisions, bro. You know what I'm saying? That's just what it is. My mama paid, made poor decisions. <laughs> my dad didn't give a damn. So it is what it is. 
but mm-hmm. I overcame that. When I go home now, I just had a conversation probably like a month ago with my cousin, my favorite cousin. I love him to death. He said, Bug, man, you can't be telling these people what you're doing, what you got going on. And because they feel like that you are acting like you better than them. How am I acting like I'm better than you when I'm trying to tell you, hey, I want to do this. What I want to do is motivate you because you've seen what I came from. You still here, but look where I came from. If I can do it, you can do it. That's it. You, you know, that's that's right. I want to help you up. Right. You got to want to do it, though. That's yeah. the main thing. But yeah. instead of you looking at me, don't be hating. Showing, hey, look, Bug came from the same street behind us right here. We all came together. Bug was slinging that iron. He didn't get caught up. Yep. You know what I'm saying? He always been to get on YouTube with legal guns. All my guns are legal. The ATF can come and ask me about any gun on my damn channel. And I got a receipt for it. Tell you where I purchased it from. All that shit legal. But you get mad at me because I want to do better for me and my kids. And if that's the case, I won't go visit those places. I'm going to stay the fuck away from those places because those are the places that make me use my gun to put me in the same situation that they in. Because see, what people don't understand is three, almost th- it's three years, almost four years ago now. I was fighting the case. I just got February. I just saw the paperwork today because I was looking for my new handgun license. Mm. February 21st, the state of Texas said I can have my gun back. I went to court on February February the 1st. I had been fighting the case, carried two to 10 years for three years. I lost everything. I lost everything except for my guns. I lost everything. I lost my charge. I lost my car. I lost my house. I lost everything, bro. My dogs. I lost everything, bro. So I'm on the rebound. So I'm a testimony. I give it to God. Like, but for a person to say, oh, you different, you different. Yeah, I'm different. I want to want to be different. I'm a life smarter. And I try to be around like-minded people. And all y'all that be in the back chat, y'all can attest. I try to tell people, inspire people to do better. You know what I'm saying? I ain't trying to shit on nobody because I can't shit on you. I know what to do to shit on. But what that's going to get me? They ain't going to make try to rob me. Because really, though, like I look at that shit, though, like when you shit on somebody, dog, you know, I'm finna shit on this man. I'm finna shit on this nigga, whatever that might be. To me, bro, that's really like some sucker shit. You it know is. what I'm saying? That's it some is. sucker shit, bro. It you is. know, you should, you should, you know what I'm saying? You should, like me personally, I always want to see everybody do good. You know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, like you saying, your folks back where you come from, if they don't, um, if they don't want to do it and make change for themselves and, and, and try to do something different, live something different, you know, step outside their box, then they'll just be stuck there. You know what I'm saying? But yep. hating on a motherfucker, though, that, that just, should, to me, that's just somebody's character, man. What's in their heart? You got to surround right. yourself mm-hmm. with like-minded people, you know, with people. You don't, if, if, and it's like they say, if you surround yourself around, you know, bum ass people, or whatever, you're gonna be a bum. You're gonna expire, you know, aspire to be a bum. Be a bum. You sit yep. there, and you hang around people who are trying to make it. You sit yep. there, and you learn from them, and, and that's gonna sit there and motivate your ass to make it. You know, and, and one of the things it's like I sit there and say with myself, man. You know, back in the days when I was younger and shit. Well, hell, when I was in my twenties and shit, man, I was one of them dudes, you know, militant and shit like that. You know, white man holding me down. White man is not allowing man, me to man, do this. You shit. holding you down, and look. I mm. sit there and it got to the point. I'm like, shit, man, I'm sitting here going on with this bullshit or whatever. Talk about the man holding me down. The only man holding me down was the man in the That was my goddamn self. You yeah. know? And I sit there and told a whole lot of people, yeah, you sit around here and talk about, you know, the white man holding you down. Ain't no white man holding you down. You stopping mm. yourself from doing the shit you need to take and do. Yeah. You know? If you want to get a better job, fuck, what the hell are you going to do to get a better job? And that's just like now. You sit there and you look at it, man. And I was just telling my wife about this. You know, a lot of young people nowadays, you know, uh, sit around here and talk about, oh, yeah, jobs, this job, that. But a lot of them motherfuckers want to sit around and smoke weed all goddamn day. And you know, smoke weed, play video games and shit like that. What the hell do you think is going to happen? A job ain't just going to fall on your lap. Hell no. Nah. You know, if you want to sit there and smoke weed, the thing that you can take and do, go out there, get you a job, work 20 years or whatever. And then after you retire, you can smoke all the fucking weed you want to smoke. You can Big smoke weed every day with that five or ten grand coming in a month, right? Big gas, you know. But in Big gas, you that, know what I'm saying? Just do what you got to take and do, you know. Because if you sit there and the longer you sit there and hold it off, hold it off, hold it off, or whatever, the harder you gonna wind be. up. You gonna wind up being fifty years old sitting there. You know, woulda, coulda, shoulda. At that point, and I don't too give late. Some people sit there and say, you know, oh, it's never too late. That's a goddamn, goddamn lie. lie. Bullshit, right? Right. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's a goddamn lie. lie. You, know? you better have a cheat code. 
You yeah, better have yeah. a get rich quick plan. You but 50 you know, years old and you don't got nothing. You better have a homeboy that got 30 bricks that you can hurry up and dump it and pray that you can get off of it and you got to 100 grand to be you something because if you don't, you fuck. <laughs> Shit, well, hell, look, look. If you got so, that type of money, you did something right or whatever, but most of them don't have no money because all their money is being spent on weed and then when they get the munchies on something to eat and it's a never-ending damn cycle. All that jewelry. So, yeah. Bug said it. Bug said it best a while ago. You need to level up your friends. And Get around yeah. better people. Yeah, that'll take you to the next level. Yeah, but I mean, hey. even 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 then, you know, what I'm saying you can hate that. That'll help you with your mindset. You know, what I'm saying, but still, at the end of the day, it's still up to you, man. Yeah, yeah absolutely, it is. absolutely. Yeah. Up to you, man. But I I definitely agree with that, man. Because like, I lived in Atlanta for a long time. I'm born and raised in Alaska, and I moved to Atlanta. My family's all from the south and all that you know what i mean so i used to always go down there growing up but anyways i moved down there in 99 you know what i mean and shit i was like i'm never coming back to alaska you know what i'm saying i'm never coming back but you know coming back to alaska was the best thing i could do you know what i'm saying and like when i came back i just came back with that mentality like okay i'm not finna move back to where i, where I left when i was up here mm -hmm. i'm not gonna associate with those same people that i associated with when i was still living here i want to associate myself with people who got more than me doing and doing things so you know exactly what you guys are saying i you know i, just, I agree 100 percent, man but i just would say that right. you gotta want to do better man that's like yeah. the main thing man like you you gotta want to do better and you gotta you gotta be able to take a chance man yeah you know people, yeah, people are scared to take chances on themselves you know yeah, yeah. and, that's yeah, but it, and what's one. weird it, i'm sorry go ahead oh go ahead okay uh, well, the first time I tried the police department and got all the way to, to my background check and ended up not getting into the academy. And and like I told my kids, yeah, I some I wanted, but maybe that wasn't for me. And then when I, uh, when I heard about the fire department, shit, I'm going to go for that then. So you can't never let some that didn't go your way the first time stop you from doing something that yeah. you want to do a second yeah. time. Yeah. Right. I mean, that's like, you know, what I'm doing right now, man. I strip with my wildest dream. Yeah, yeah. Shit, I make a whole lot of money. You know, I strip you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a bitch uh, slut. Uh, hey, look, you got my woman over here laughing, man. Hey, what are you saying? What's your butt? What are you doing? Huh? Yeah. Hey. <laughs> Look, for the ladies, for the ladies, why don't you publish your OnlyFans page? <laughs> it's gonna be only spam because it's gonna be like a spam sound. <laughs> but yeah, but look, man, this right here, what I'm doing now, man, I I never thought, you know, I'd be doing this. You know, my background was law up. enforcement, you know. But then, um, uh, when I left from New Orleans, because I was working with the police department out there, when I left from New Orleans and came up to Virginia, you know, it was like either. Go back to the police department, which they were sitting there talking about, you know, I was going to have to go through the whole academy all over again. I'm like, you know what? The hell with that. I ain't going to do that. You know, or go work, you know, juvenile probation. I don't like kids and I probably whip, whip some of them. <laughs> <laughs> That's a no go too. So I had a dude come to my house or whatever, you know, cable guy and stuff, you know, and I sit there and ask him like, man, how you like what you do? You know? Oh man, sure. I you know? love it. You know, I mean, I'm always getting raises back to back. I'm like, shit, that shit sound good to me. You know, so I went and applied or whatever, you know, got the job. Man, shit. Hell, um, next year be 20 years doing this shit. 20 years. I got uh two and a half more years retired from this shit. You know, I got military yeah. money, then I have this right here, and I'm done. I'm like, shit, I'd be retired at 55. Hopefully, if things work out the way out, I, I wanted to. Hell, I'd be fine. I'm not gonna say completely financial free, but able to just say, fuck it. If I want to go and make a little extra money or whatever. I can. I, can, I can go strip. Yep. You can yeah. go strip. I just hope you need some good by then. Ah, Ray, stupid. You know, I, I hope I, you need some good. I do that shit. I hope no, you got mega needs. Look, look, look. If they if they got fat strippers and 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 you know young strippers and all that shit, they, they have an old stripper. Hey, I already when right. He gonna girl, be he, he gonna be a senior citizens home stripping. Shit. Hey, boy, maybe all the smelly fish. Walker. Walker. Uh, 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 Walker. Uh, scratch and sniff draws on while you stripping. Hey, yeah, whatever, hey. silly shit. <laughs> <laughs> he said you got scratch and sniff uh, yeah, draws. Look, look, good, man. Man. Hey, hey, skilly, skilly gonna be my DJ playing the drums butt naked. <laughs> <laughs> one hit wonder. That's his name. Yeah, gonna be. Yeah, one hit wonder. Uh, <laughs> he gonna be. <laughs> hell 
on now, right? Gilly <laughs> yeah, gonna be playing so, the drums. So, no, let me ask that. you this. <laughs> Gilly gonna, he gonna be playing the drums in a diaper. But you know, is he gonna be playing in time now? God dang. No, he gonna be out beat like a bug. Listen, <laughs> listen, no, listen. Hey, Ray gonna, gonna hit the white hey, and then he gonna hit the. When Ray do this here, that's when he gonna hit the beat. When Ray stop, doom. But look, look, doom. that shit ain't even gonna matter. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be using a walker any goddamn way. So <laughs> no we got Ray up this in the wheelchair stripping. <laughs> shit, hell man. Right. I got to, yeah, look in the wheelchair to spin that bitch around and take something off. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Coming to the stage. Coming to the stage, Ray Fishnets. Yes. He's gonna, he's gonna try to do a squat, and he's gonna, you're gonna hear him like grunt, uh, mm. trying to get up. <laughs> nah, I need to go squat and fart. <laughs> <laughs> he's taking off the Velcro suit. <laughs> Look at this toe, baby. <laughs> nah, no, man. Shit. But What's for real, though, no. taking off suspenders. For real, and see that's 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 the game right there. It's the goal either. To, to get somewhere to where you can get that pension or retirement mm-hmm. or put yourself in position to be your own boss. Yeah. So I got a question. About. Go ahead, brother. So why is it that men have a bad chick, right? Beautiful mm-hmm. woman. Mm-hmm. But then they fuck around and cheat down. Man, come you know why? I'm gonna tell you. Because well, the same cause, cause, thing because the same thing happens with people they're affluent, right? They're middle class and they go to the fucking hood. Why you got your ass over in the hood? It's fun. Yeah, I, the hood is fun. Bro, I don't know. I don't know if I'll ever stop going. <laughs> I won't stop going to the hood. I'm just gonna stop. I mean, I understand. I understand doing risky shit, right? Bro, it's, for it's for the same fun. reason that people speed, and it's for the same reason that people, you know, d- do anything risky. You go over in the hood and your life is set. You, you know, you work for the post office. You got a good job. Why the fuck you over fucking around in the hood? Because the worst the people, though, man. What are you talking about? Because some bad shit can happen, and you can it's lose your happen, job. You can bad, lose your life. Bad shit can happen anywhere, though, man. But it's I know, fun. but listen. But hold on. there's, a, there's you less of a chance if you hanging out in the right places, that's right? A logical person. Yeah, you know, but that's yeah. Nah, listen it to still me. happen though. The hood is fun. It ain't nothing like a rusty good ghetto hood rat. Girl, a project <laughs> you ain't got no loving until you got you some six and eight loving. Yes, you get tired of that mansion, pretty. Yes, you like it. Yeah, man, you go over there with that dirty. You can you, the stuff you can't tell your old lady. You can go over there. You dirty skank helper. <laughs> yeah, take it, take it. Who your daddy is? Mm, you like that? Yes, me. Daddy. Yeah, you. Yeah. You talking about having a bust down chick, right? Man, fucking right. You got one. They keep they keep marriages together. Yeah, but so so <laughs> as men as men, why do we cheat down? Because we don't have no preference. Whoever gonna give it to us, we're gonna get it. Right. Yeah. You was not born to be monogamous. No, you ain't a sleeping with that crackhead running down the street, monogamous. but you'll choose somebody one step above her. No, you won't, because she's gonna be prissy and she's gonna be telling you well, what look, does the fuck a, does hold on, let me make my point. Freedom. Let me make my point, John. Yeah. <laughs> this is freedom right now. This financial freedom right here. Right. The freedom to bust this chick down and, and still go home and don't lose nothing. No, not about look, that. Look. That 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 pretty woman. I, I'm just gonna be real. Most women that got degrees and make three hundred or uh, six figures or more a year are assholes. <laughs> yeah, but see, they, they go and find home. that dude. They they go and find that dude that got out of prison as willing yeah. to kick their ass, <laughs> right? <laughs> Dude, Fuck the dog yeah, shit out of her and treat her like the a whole shit. You treat her like a woman. She want listen. Everybody, woman, want to be treated like a hoe every now and then. No lie. No, no it's, but, bro, but, I can. No. You can go over there the and have love making, but every now and then she won't be fucked. You, that dude gonna fuck her. He have no listen. She got some, and he don't, and he, and he got some that she want. Some hard dick, and he gonna treat her. Ain't gonna treat it like a princess. Woman get tired of being treated like a princess and on the pedestal. He gonna treat it like she's a dirty wash tile and throw it to the side. And she gonna go home and get treated like a, a diamond and polish right back up. And then she might need six, seven more months, depending on how good he hit her. She gonna go back and do it again the same way with a dude. Dudes just do shit because we don't got no business and we kill the king. It ain't no reason. It ain't no method to the reasoning. Man, I done had, I got a good woman now. I'm to my great woman now. And I still be looking at bitches be like, hmm, I'm about to put this dick on her. And no damn way. And then I think about it. It ain't working. So then what I do is go home and treat her like I was going to treat her. And if she don't go for it, that'll make you go get it. But see, I got a good chick. So she's going to allow me to be me. She's going to be the slut when I need to be the slut. And she's going to be Miss Congeniality when I need to be Miss Congeniality. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like that. 
Shout out to you, girl. I ain't gonna say your name. You know you are. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, man, it's like all the the shit is backwards. It is. You know it is. Because the chick is making all the money. Gonna go find the motherfucker that want to be the passenger in the car and shit like that. You know, with the seat all the way back. Mm -hmm. You know, he don't want to drive. He just want to be the rider. Mm -hmm. you know? Don't want to do it. Gonna, don't want to fix a flat tire. The don't dude who got tire. the money or whatever, he gonna go right. out there and look for the chick that you know don't have because him. I guess it's less of a headache or whatever. You know, and she's gonna do no, no, no. Well, yeah, that, yeah. Both of both of them is for fun. Both yeah. both of them are fun, you know. The, the 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 broke dude who don't have shit, who likes to sit with the, you know on the passenger side or whatever with the seat all the way back. Who the fuck want to do He's that? A fun shit. dude. Hey, you know? I done did it before. I ain't gonna fake. I've been this guy. I've been this guy. I'm a rich dude who's going after the um female or whatever that don't have shit. Kind of the same damn thing. Less of a headache because he could sit there. You know, she getting on his nerve. He can sit there and say, "Shut the fuck up." She gonna say, "Okay, daddy." You know, and that's it. She gonna shut the fuck up because she knows she don't want to lose that shit because of all the benefits that come with having to do they got the money. Yep. You know? And now for the, I'm yeah. gonna make this point, right? Since you just got logical, now for the make it to you in layman terms, I'm uh, gonna put it in 100 percent negative. What the problem is is control. Yeah. That woman can go get that hood nigga and control him because she got something he don't got. Financial. Thank that's you. It. She got the financial, but see that dude with that money. She can't do him like that. No, she can't yeah. baby boy him. She can't treat him like her son. See, these women got this. Uh, you know why though? You know why though, Bug? Because it's a difference between being a boy and being a man. And every now and then, every woman want that boy. She want that boy. And if you don't know how to be that boy for your wife, just for a split second, or your old lady for that split second, just to fucking appease her ego to, to keep her balance, she gonna go out and find that dude from the hood. Carlos, that she gonna give that fifty dollars to. He gonna go get him a fifty, and he keep flipping fifties. He been flipping fifties for the last two years. He still ain't went up to an ounce yet. And she gonna keep him. He need to quit him with some Zy and he listen. To and she gonna keep him with a glass and a Zy when she gonna pick him up. And guess what he gonna do? He gonna take all the angles of Earth that he's going through and all the tribulations all of the public beating them in her vagina, and she gonna love it. And hey, that's why I say, look, look, you see what Joe said. The PS5 money, the PS5. Oh my, oh my mama! Wait, <laughs> oh my mama, nigga, yeah, Xbox got, One. No wait, she got the PS5. Got money. PS5. She got the money. new I'm Jordan dead. money. She got I'm the uh, uh, you know, if he wants to wear some, you know, Versace, Balenciaga, and all that. She, she got the, the Versace. Versace. Yeah, she, and he can real. sit in the passenger seat with the seat all the way back, and ain't got to worry about shit. You know. Yeah. And he gonna that, go to the roof, Chris, and know he eat Taco cool. Bell. He barely eat Taco Bell. He really eat the dollar menu at McDonald's. She take him to root Chris. He go picking up the steak with his hand because he don't know nothing about etiquette. <laughs> right. <laughs> he eats the salad like pork to cut his steak. <laughs> this, fool, this fool picked up the, the butter knife to cut the steak. <laughs> He's a steak knife for his butter. Oh, man. Oh, yeah, but it's, I mean, it's crazy, boy. man. I mean, I don't know. I, I never understood that shit, you know. Oh, here you go, y'all. I told my wife that, you know, um, we were talking about, you know, the, the back in the days or whatever, you saw all the pretty girls used to go after the drug dealers, you know? Yeah. Yeah. They went after drug dealers. Oh, and yeah. I didn't give that. a damn, you know, knew these motherfuckers. I mean, shit, y'all just said. He hit her friend and her, her cousin. cousin. Like that. Huh? Mm -hmm. He was hitting her friend and her cousin. She didn't oh, give yeah. a damn. Everybody. She didn't give a damn. No. Oh. And was happy about that shit. Yeah, that's my man. He taking me shopping. All right, shit. He ain't gonna be shopping long because eventually the man gonna get either, either bully gonna get him or the man gonna get him. You know? yep. One or the other. Somebody gonna get his ass. Hey man, what I learned that? like I listen, really, Ray. I used to be talking to these chicks. I was probably like mid-20s. And uh, I met this older chick. This what made me switch my game up. I met this older chick. I said, say man, I was talking to her. She said, What you do? I said, I sell weed. You know what I'm saying? And she was like. So what you gonna do after you sell weed? I said, shit, I'm gonna give me some crack. <laughs> <laughs> she, said, she said, so what about crack gone? What you gonna do? I said, shit, I'm gonna take this pistol. I'm make somebody who go to work every day give it to me. She said, well, now you good for us, fuck. And uh, after we have sex, we can't talk anymore. You don't have no ambitions. <laughs> I was like, damn. <laughs> she told you the truth, though. But bro, bro, she made me think. Yeah, yeah, she made me think that day because after I busted down, bro, and I was like, damn, it's good. I'm gonna try to double back. She won't try to hear none of that. She ain't answer none of my pages. I was like, okay, <laughs> I was drove, you know what I'm saying? I got curved, but then you know what she made me do one day. I rolled in my old school, I was in my impala, I was rolling, and then I was like, damn, 
if I can't sell dope, what can I do? What do I got? What can I do to fall back on to make money and make dope boy money? Then I was just sitting and then my partner and them said, say, man, we finna go to truck driver school. They went without me. A couple of years go by. It dawned on me again. I was like, damn, what can I do to get some money? Then I said, man, fuck it. I went to truck driver school, got me a trade. I started learning everything that I can learn. I started doing security. I started doing anything to why I said, if this don't work, I always can do that. And if that don't work, I can always do that. And then there was something that an old school dude told me, yeah, Jay got out of pen. He said, say, little bug. I said, what's up, bro? He said, bro, you got to treat money like a highway. He said, how many? and at the time, 35 used to have five lanes. He said, how many, how, how many lanes on the highway? I said, what, four? Plus the emergency lanes. He said, yeah, right. Five lanes, right? I said, yeah. He said, and he got emergency lane, right? I said, yeah. He said, that's how you need to have your income. You never get your money from one source. You always have a different avenue of money just in case one gets shut down. He said, because don't the freeway get shut down? I said, yeah. He said, but then you got to exit. You got to ramp. You get the back road, right? He said, I always have a different way to get money. And I was, yeah, and, and that dawned on me. And that that's some of the things that helped mature me to start. Hey, to try to I told my kids. I tell my kids that all the time. Uh, my youngest is 23. So um, I always told them, you need to have a career and then you need to have a side hustle. A side hustle, for real. And uh, the best side hustle is, is something you love doing that you can make money at. Yep, so you won't ever look at it as work. Right. I was DJing and I was working in clubs, doing raves, all kinds of shit, right? So mm-hmm. it paid well. Like ninety six thousand one year cash straight out. Damn, no taxes. No taxes. Damn. And I worked like that in that same place for six years like that. Dope boy money. Mm-hmm. And, and then I was working my day business job business. too. Mm-hmm. I was working my day job. Oh yeah, yeah you're, you're doing good. Bro. Yeah. yeah. Man, you don't you don't have to tell me. I mean shit. Like I say, my thing was, you know, but my dad sent um uh me and my brother to barber school. So we got a barber's license, you know. So it's like, well, yeah. You work your regular job, you can go cut hair on the weekends and stuff like that, you know, or you just cut, you know, cut hair right there in the garage or whatever, you know, it mm-hmm. didn't matter. Mm-hmm. We had ways of making money. Same thing. I DJ too. DJ for a good little while, you know, made that little money and stuff like that, you know, and then it got to the point where it's like, you know, uh, uh, people started lowballing you to the point where it's like, hey, can you come out and, you know, do this gig for two hundred you know, dollars for exposure? <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, but nah, I never did clubs. I was I didn't do clubs. Clubs yeah. wasn't my thing, you know. I mean, I sit there, you know, parties, weddings, and stuff like that, you know. But my thing was not nah, at a minimum to pull out all this shit that you know um, I had and stuff like that. Nah, we're talking about six hundred dollars at a minimum. Right. Know? Catalog music. There's a lot goes on before sound check. Everything goes on before Ooh. I even leave the house. We right. look. We were running TVs and everything. We had the TV mm-hmm. videos. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. All that you know, and like I said, the most I think we made or whatever you know for um uh for about five hours or whatever you know DJing and all this you know DJing with the TVs and stuff like that was like uh shit thirty six hundred dollars for about five hours worth of work. Wow, three of us. Ooh, that's good money right there. Yeah, that's real big money. But like I said, now I mean you know that's why I said man hell I just sold um uh shoot I had a uh, the rain seventy two. Um uh in the rain 12. Man, I just sold mm-hmm. all that because I'm like, you know what? I got it sitting here. I ain't doing nothing with it. I still got all my speakers, you know, my uh my tops and my bottoms and my subs and shit like that. Still got that shit because I'm like, you know, I never know when somebody might, you know, say, Hey, can you come out and do like family or something like that? Yeah, doing that, yeah. Yeah, going out there and just actually doing it. No, nah, man, unless you're gonna pay me right, I ain't doing that shit. You know, hey, look, I'm gonna tell you one of my hustles, man. And and this is awesome. I used to my partner used to throw parties. I used to bounce for him. So I was a bouncer. That was $100 a night. Plus, you know what I'm saying? What you take off people that coming through the door, they get caught with weed. Okay, you want me to tell the sheriff or you want to pay me? So you make three, four, five hundred dollars at the door a night. You know what I'm saying? Working the little parties or whatever. We'll do that. Then I clean your guns. You know what I'm saying? I look at your gun, tell you what's wrong with it. You know what I'm saying? I, if I can't do nothing with it, I'll take it to my gunsmith. But, you know, it's all type of ways to get money, bro. Like, me and my kids used to get the, the lawnmowers and just go around the neighborhood. You know what I'm saying? You make it $25 a front yard, $25 a backyard. 
Yep. Bro, we do 10 yards. Bro, we, we split the money down even. We eating. If, if it's just me and Yayo, shit, we do 10 yards. We split that. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I mean, you got a hundred some dollars in this pocket. I got a hundred some dollars in my pocket. Shit, we done wasted four, four hours on, on the Saturday because we done started early. Man, come on, man. Like, it's all type of ways to get money. And then in Dallas, that's what I love about Dallas, Texas. If you broke out here, it's on you. Hmm. It's too many yeah. legal ways to get money. Am I lying, Odin? Am I lying? Yeah, it's too many ways. Listen, it's, listen. It's, if illegal immigrants can come to this country and get a fucking job, anybody broke, can get a fucking job. Yeah. Like, you anywhere, have no excuse. Yep. Yeah. You broke anywhere, that's on you. Right. Yeah. That's because you don't want to get up off your ass and get to it. Sure. Yeah. I don't... Yeah. You know, and the thing is, it's like you know, and it takes money to make money. You know, it's just like say with the DJ thing. You know, that shit ain't cheap. You know, buying DJ equipment is not cheap. Not oh cheap no, I mean you should be out like, 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 like Silverback said. You know, two hundred dollars an hour. You know, what he charge? And I mean, that's like the 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 sometimes the the average. You know, anywhere from one hundred and fifty to two dollars, two hundred an hour or whatever. Or say if you're doing like a four a four hour gig or whatever. I mean, you can charge somebody. You know. Five hundred dollars or whatever, you know, for four hours, you know, in some places, you know. But yeah, you get some people or whatever, man. It, like I had one person sit there and ask me, "Hey, um, uh, can you come out and DJ?" And then this joker sit there and told me that, "Oh, I pay you two hundred dollars." I said, "Shit, I wouldn't even bring my damn speakers out for two hundred dollars." That don't even get on the truck. I said, at a minimum, I charge you three hundred and fifty to bring my speakers out, and you can hook your iPad to it, your iPod to it, or whatever, and stream your own music. I say, but I ain't bringing nothing else out. They just don't. They like people don't think when they, they start talking and they try to hire somebody. They don't think about what goes into it. Like yeah. because when you start to hire a DJ, that DJ now has to meet with you. So they got to take out time out of their day to come meet with you, right? And figure out what kind of party this is. What kind of music am I going to play for you? Do you have a certain playlist you want me to? to play songs from um or any special songs for any event situation you know what style of music let's say you don't have that music let's say it's going to be a a very candlelight dinner party well then you got to play pretty much love songs all night yeah. right down tempo love songs chill music right and if you're not that type of dj you got to go source that music right yeah. so you're going to spend hours and hours cataloging music and then you got to import that shit from from your drive where you downloaded it into serato and make it recognize it all and then put that shit in special crates right yep. and then you got to do sound check so you got to pull all that gear out and hook all that shit up make sure everything's running lights working videos working and then you got to pack all that shit up and then head to your event right yeah. mm -hmm. and if something's fucked up you got to fix that on the fly you call yep. on your homies hey I got a speaker down. Can I come pick up your speaker? You're 12, you know? Yeah, come on over. So you got a detour to go get that. Then you get to the venue, tear all, bring all that shit out of the car, set it up at the venue, play for the time, which you get paid for. You didn't get paid for any of that previously, right? Mm -hmm. And then you got to tear all that shit down and bring it back home and put it all away, right? For the next event. So there's, there's like for a wedding for me, there's at least 10 hours of prep before I even get to the event. Yeah. So when you talk about, you know, oh, I was just, I was, I'm willing to pay you $20 an hour. Fuck you. Straight up. <laughs> <laughs> At this age, you will get cussed out. Like, <laughs> said, don't even disrespect. But that, that's like yeah. drawing. That's like drawing. Man, I don't to so many people want me to draw them some, and then when it come down to paying me, oh, I But you know, people man. want something for nothing. Yeah. Right. You know, I, I, I got a, a matter of fact, I got a book full of stuff on the Drew people. I ain't giving you shit. I keep it in my, my book if you, if you ain't going to pay me right. People want right. something for nothing, man. You know what I'm saying? They want the cheapest price, man. You know what I'm saying? Hey, man? Skill, how did you try to play some drums? I don't play drums. <laughs> that was just for fun. Uh, uh, Odin, why how you much you charge? Funny. <laughs> <laughs> and don't you Dude. say nothing, C-Man. Right. Dude, don't play <laughs> drums. Drums, drums play Skilly. Skilly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> say, yeah, man. Yeah, man. Pe people are something else, man. People are just, you yeah. know, they're full of shit. You know, and like I say, everybody, everybody wants to shortchange you. And you know, the ones who 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 shortchange you the most, family. Yes, so family are the ones that will really. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah like, for free. oh well, how come I gotta pay so much? Because uh, that's what the going rate is. Right. I mean, yeah, I might sit there, you know, take a little bit off. But I ain't taking much off. 
No, I take a little bit on for whatever, but, you know. Now, whenever they, um, uh, because I, I used to bring all my stuff out, you know, like for this, uh, well, not for everything, just my speakers, my, um, uh, my controller and stuff like that, because I wouldn't bring no turntables, no shit like that out, you know. That shit is yeah. heavy. I bring, yeah, oh, hell yeah. So, I, I mean, I got that, uh, the Pioneer, um, SZ, that's like my go to for every damn thing. You know, mm-hmm. and that was the only thing that I would take out because I wasn't bringing. You know, I had the uh, uh, the S nine. Like I said, I just got rid of the uh, uh, the Rain hey, uh, uh, MK two. I just got rid of those. You know, but that shit right there, that was just for me to have fun at the house. You know, now if I went out, like I said, my go to was my SZ. I'm like, shit, that's an all in one piece. Hook it up, hook up Serato um, uh, to that or whatever. Do what I have to do and play music. You know, mm-hmm. but like I said, for family events. Depending on what it was, if it was like something for um uh uh my wife's grandmother used to have a thing for every Thanksgiving. That right there, shit, man, I bring that shit out, you know, and just set it up for nothing, you know. Because mm-hmm. like I said, that was family. But anybody say like, oh yeah, we're having a um had one of um uh my wife's cousin sit there and say, hey, uh, we need a DJ, you know, for this thing right here. Um, uh, I got two hundred dollars. I say, well, you ain't got a DJ. <laughs> I said, that's all I can tell. You don't have a DJ. Not for two. And I don't give a damn family. You know, you're a cousin. You know, you're right. you doing this. You know, you're having all these people come out for your son's graduation and want me to come there and DJ for 200. You're out of your damn mind. It ain't happening. Right. You know, it ain't happening. And so after that, you know, because I used to do photography too, you know, and I'm like, shit, hell, these photographers, man, they're making a killing. You know, you know what? They are. I'm going to sit there and do some photography too. You know, so I start, you know, I put a lot, you know, um, uh, the dudes that I, you know, um, DJ group guys that I hang with and stuff like that. I sit there and tell them, hey, look, if you guys have an event and they need a photographer, hook me up. I come out there, you know, and I was setting up the green screen, the whole nine and stuff like that, you know. And mm-hmm. man, one time I went out to a, um, uh, a military event and I made just in tips alone, $500 in tips. Just tips, you know. Now the money I was making, you know, for the um, pictures I was doing and charging them, I made seven hundred dollars off of that. I'm like, shit, man. I told dude, I say, you know what? Call me anytime. I'll be out here for this shit. So I got this. Now, the only thing, COVID, for those two years, COVID, I couldn't go out there and do it because my wife, you know, she's um, uh, immunocompromised, so I couldn't go out and do it. You know, but I told my boy, I said, look, this year, if y'all have it or whatever, let me know. I come up there, set up everything or whatever. And shit, man, we're golden. All I need to take and do is just set up my little jar so people can tip and then have my little thing set up so they can pay me, swipe your card or whatever the hell you want to take and do, you know, and just go from there. But yeah, the whole DJ thing, man, I'm like, you know what? Fuck it. It ain't in work DJing because nobody want to pay the DJ, you know? Right. is making all the damn money now. So when I was working in clubs, you know, you get those little girls that come in for bachelorette parties and they're the most fucking annoying things ever. <laughs> But, you know, they want to run up to the booth and they want to request all this music, right? And they want you to play it right now. Like, because they, they act like they're only going to be there for, for 20 minutes and the limo's going to pull up and they're going to the next place, right? So this one girl, I um, can't remember her name, but she came up in a little, you know, slinky um, sequin skirt on, mini skirt. And she was out there dancing on the floor and she comes up and says, hey, DJ, I want to hear these songs. She, she rips off like five songs. And I was like, okay, let me see if I can slot some of those up in rotation, you know? And she goes, no, no, I need you to play them now because we want to dance. We want to dance to some good music. Well, the dance floor was moving. Like, it was full. Like, what do you mean? Play good music. So she goes, this is the, what, what we dance to. This rest, the rest of the, what you're playing is shit. And I was like, okay, we're going there. So um, I didn't play her music. And she comes up and she's bugging me again, you know, bug her friends are bugging me now. And then this girl says, look, I want you to play my music on board and tell the manager. And I said, manager to the DJ booth. So, <laughs> um, she goes back on the dance floor after we handle that little, you know, get the fuck away from my DJ booth business. And this girl was squatting on the dance floor. I just happened to play playing little John or something. And she was down there, you know, twerking and she was squatting and I looked. And the light hit her just right, right? And it swept right across between her legs. And she wasn't wearing panties. What? And so I looked again, and I was like, oh, shit. Man, my brain starts working, dude. So um, so I thought for a second, 
and I grabbed the microphone, shut the music off, stopped, turned the lights on in the whole club. And I said, if anybody wants any roast beef, it's between this girl's legs and a sequin skirt. She got her pants <laughs> on. <laughs> shut the lights back off, turn the music back up. Everybody's oh. fucking rolling, dude. <laughs> Ah, you're wrong. Yeah, we'd have jumped you after the club. Yeah. <laughs> she was so mad. Her friends are mad. Why would you do that to her? And I was like, look, she was being ugly, you know. Mm-hmm. But did Don't, it look like roast beef for real? Or, or, it or did. It did, man. It was like neural meat. Like, Ugh, I hate it. Listen, y'all, listen. I'm, I'm going to share one of my stories with y'all. This is Tales from a Bug. Now, look. <laughs> I'm gonna jump. I'm gonna jump back. I'm gonna jump back, fellas. Okay, it was this chick one time, bro. I thought she was cute. She was beautiful. And so, me being a pervert, I am. I said, send that picture. She sent that picture. Look like this. <laughs> <laughs> Had stuff hanging from it. <laughs> one of them was like a seal. It was longer than other. It was symmetrical. <laughs> I said. Damn, like some rolled up Dumbo ears, <laughs> bruh. I never called it. I never called again. And she to this day, she probably don't know why I talked to her. If you out the girl, you know you are. That's why I didn't call <laughs> her. That shit looked like some melted fruit roll ups. <laughs> <laughs> like I, I can't get jiggy with that. I can't get jiggy. So with this. <laughs> one time, one time I got with this girl, and she was real cute. Every time I saw her, you know. <laughs> Makeup on, hair done, beautiful. And anyhow, after the club one night, she came over to my house and um, I woke up and she's sitting on the end of my bed and she doesn't have her makeup on and she looked like a whole different girl. I was like, startled, yeah, she, you know? I had a couple so, of incidents. That's why I stopped drinking in public. <laughs> so, so um, I, I said I gotta go to the restroom. So, you know, I had to pee. So I get up and go pee, and her eyelashes are on my sink. <gasps> had that happen at a hotel? I I ghosted her, man. Like I didn't call her no more. Like mm. I, but it was the fact that she looked so different. You know, it was it was like them them TikTok videos. You know, yeah. you see this girl. She just busted, and then she put on all this makeup, and she's gorgeous. Like, holy shit, you know? But you get her home, and you gotta... I, I just couldn't see myself... Like, I wasn't attracted to her then, you know? And if you don't have attraction, Mm-mm. that's half of it for us. Yep. You oh, know? we just horned out. And that's, right. only after, that's only after 2 a.m. That's the after 3. Anything goes after 3. Right. <laughs> everything goes after 12. After, after 12, everything goes. <laughs> Strobe light, honey. <laughs> anything goes. <laughs> anything. Any, wait a minute, anything after 10, after 12, and everything after 3. That means right. that I had bad luck. I'm going to close my eyes and the Hennessy working. Yeah. You know, and you know, I talk about people being shallow. I'm gonna admit I was shallow in that moment, you know. Um, it's okay. It's okay. But yeah, it, and I always consider myself the nice guy. I give you know people a fair chance, right? I don't, uh, I don't hold myself on a pedestal, you know. Like if you're good people, you're good people, and that's more, worth more in looking mm-hmm. into than than looks, right? So no, that's a lot. Right. Um, give me a, a a solid woman who's got your back who's not going to play games, hit you, you know, fuck around on you. Like, mm. it's got you fully backed up. I will take that five or six versus taking that eight, who's always going to cheat on you and play games and lie and, you know, hustle you, right? Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I, I'm about good relationships, not bad ones. And that even extends into my business, you know. Um. But yeah, I had, and it's a, it's so it just made me think, you know, earlier why we cheat down and, um, you know, like, cause that's effectively what we're doing. We're going to get that chick that we wouldn't have normally slept with, you know, mm-hmm. but why it's, is that, why is that fun to us? Like, why, why don't we ever because, seek the same level or better? Because we know it is forbidden. Anything, think about it. When you was a kid, your mom said, don't do this. Everything she said, don't do, you did. 
everything she said you could do, you didn't. That's just what it is. It's just the rebellious state of everybody. It's it's their nature. It's your nature to do stuff yeah. that you're supposed to do. It's in your nature, man. And that's how they be, because half the time the stuff that you go do, you don't even want. Right. I was I was looking at Andrew Tate them the other day. And he told this chick, a guy don't want you, he'll sleep with anybody. And Charleston White told the uh, chick, a dude to stick his thing in a, in, a ga- in, a, in a gas tank. And he not lying. But when a woman cheat, she going to cheat because she got some feelings or she got to like that person. We don't got to like you to hit you. We can hate your guts. But the opportunity to present yourself, because you don't supposed to be doing it, you're going to do it. So I'm going to ask the age-old question. Why is there a double standard about men sleeping with a ton of girls and, you know, he's he's praised for it, right? Mm-hmm. And then women do it, sleep with a ton of dudes, and, you know, she's a hoe. And she's a they, slut. They both a hoe. And you ain't one no more, they both hoes. But I'm gonna tell you why but, women, but, but men don't face the same stigmata as the women do. I but do, I'm, they're all hoes. Men well, and look, I'm gonna say this a woman, you're supposed to get a woman for a virtue. She can't be a virtuous woman if everybody done been in them. You don't want to make none that's yours. A lot of people been in your wife right now. But we talked you. about this. That's the girl you want. Yeah, that's the one I want to have fun with. That's not who I want to be with forever. You said you wanted that to be your wife because she's going to do everything that the other girls couldn't every I day. I lied. I lied. I'm, I'm backsliding. <laughs> I'm backsliding. I'm, I'm calling myself a lie in public. I lied, damn it. I'm sorry. Apologize. But I got to be real with me. Yeah. You don't want that. You know why you don't want that? People are creatures of habit. If she been a hoe all her life, you think she's just going to wake up and stop being a hoe? If people been eating all their damn life, you know how hard it is for people to lose weight? Well, that's the same thing for the male. If a male been a hoe all his life, what a woman think a male going to do? What the hell does that change for her? Oh God, well, man, so it's it's that. just like it's just like bug. You, you quit all you quit doing all the illegal shit that you did, right? And yeah, you started living I right, living straight. My, wait, time out, time out. Fuck it. That's call a spade, spade. I wean myself out for years. I deal with and die, but every time time got hard, I go get a pet. Time go hard, I put some. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, gentleman of leisure. Use your imagination. Yeah, mm-hmm. I did whatever it took to get that money at one time in my life, and I played and played and played. Do you understand when I just was in Louisiana a week ago? It felt good to tell my nephew. I said, man, I don't sell no drugs in over 10 years now. That feels good. Mm-hmm. That feels good. But it took it took time, preparation, and discipline. Because every time that things got hard, I backslid and went back to what I knew. So if I went back to what I knew to get some money, times get hard. I'm not doing what she want me to do. What's she going to do? was natural but see what's to say a person can't change their habits but let's just be real you can change your habits but you're gonna backslide man i don't give a damn if you smoke crack every blue moon if you smoke crack for 30 years every blue moon you're gonna go and hit that doula and then you're gonna be like damn i don't even know why i did that but you're gonna do it it's human nature if it's something that's been repetitive and you've been doing this, man, it takes time. Like fat. You don't get fat overnight. You get fat over time. That's why you can't lose that weight dramatically. It'll come right back. I'm just saying, just like that logic. Use the logic that I'm saying and implement that logic. It takes time. It does. It took time to become a hoe. It's going to take time to not be a hoe no more. I just don't want you to be in that curve and you're not trying to be a hoe. I want you to be at that curve. This ain't what I want to do no more. You made your mind up. You fed up. I okay, so that downslide. That just what so, so what if you met this chick, right? Marriage material. She got good job. Let's say she's an attorney. Whatever, right? Mm-hmm. You, she, everything you like about her fits, right? Right. But then you find out her body count like 250 people. God <laughs> damn. I done had this situation. Right? But now she's different now. Like she doesn't do that. I don't give a damn, <laughs> nigga. I be on YouTube. I go everywhere. Everybody know me. I'm famous. I don't give a damn about the fame. I want the money. 
I want the same money, the type of money that they're paying. Oh, this Taco Bear Bug. I don't want to go nowhere and dudes in the corner giggling like we be giggling. <laughs> he don't even know. She go hard. Man, come on, bro. We claim we don't care what other people think, but we do care about what our peers think to a certain degree. I don't want to go nowhere with no nigga giggling. Listen, I promise to God I had this situation, bro. I had this situation. I had this situation. I'm going to say it out here now because I ain't ashamed of shit. I had a situation. I was dating. I was dating. Uh, I was dating Mika. Yeah. And Mika had hollered at a dude that used to be around one of my partners. It was his people, but I ain't know that. You know, that's their history. One day we at Cuz's house. Cuz slick captain like, yeah, he don't even know I knocked this girl out. Boy, you must not know who I am, nigga. I'm King Sheriff. That don't mean nothing to me. So, you know, he kept slick capping. Yeah, yeah. If y'all don't know what slick capping is, he under his breath, bringing it to my attention that he had sex with her. So he kept slick capping, blah, 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 blah. I said, hey, so you hit it? Can you still hit it? It ain't nothing that I done penetrated. It, it, it ain't nothing that I infiltrated I can't penetrate. So if you can't double back, then you ain't did nothing. Then the nigga tried to double back. Shot down. Then I say, man, what's up? You Man, look, you need to tell me this so I don't go around these people because I don't need to shoot you on because if you catch me in a bad mood, that's going to be a bad situation. Yeah. From that moment on, bro, that's when I knew then. I don't want a hoe. I was like, damn, was you a hoe? No, I want a hoe. Dude said he wanted to, you know, eat the buffet. That's how he did. Then I go back. So what you did? You smashed? Nah, I, I ate out. I don't. So <laughs> good for you did something I might do. <laughs> they held off. Appreciate you. And then that made him feel that made him feel like lame. Like, bro, like, no, nah, bro. No, nah, you don't want that, man. You don't want the woman, your wife, to be that woman that got 200 dudes and you know you got about three, four hundred women on you. Somebody got to be clean. Somebody got to have at least under 20. Man, both of y'all. Somebody got to have some morals and ethics. <laughs> man, I tell my partners this all the time. If you a felon, how the fuck you going to go marry a felon? One of y'all got to be legal. Right, you somebody got to buy the gun. Man, I'm just right. saying, bro. I'm, I'm just that's just my logic. It don't apply for everybody. It's my logic. I'm gonna have fun with you as a whole, but you're not gonna be my woman. And if you, I give you ten. If you got over ten, I can't fool with you, cause that means it's anywhere in the United States I can go. We are gonna run into somebody that hunts you. And what if they did it good and you get to remember this? Ooh. But bug. So what if that? What if the girl said that about you? I yeah. don't give a shit. That's her prerogative. That's her purpose. Hey, right. A couple of them told me I was a slut, and they stopped talking to me. I respect them for that. I respect them for their honesty. Respect me for my honesty, and I'm gonna respect you for your honesty. Well, see, yes. See, Bug said he was a hoe. So hey, I, I hey, he was a hoe back then. I was so a hoe back then. Listen, I can respect. The only reason why I'm not married now because I cu- I asked a couple of people to marry. And really, I wasn't ready to marry. I was just marrying them just to pacify them. Let's just be real. I thought I wanted to be with them, and I thought that's what they wanted. That was going to keep them, and I asked to marry them, and they bullshitted me. So they did me a favor and them a favor. Appreciate it. <laughs> Shout out to you two sluts. Shout out to y'all. Y'all the real ones. You know what I'm saying? MVPs right here. But I said this here. I was talking. I was like, say, Mika, C-Man, C-Man. I think C-Man, we had this discussion. We was in Bud Days. Man, when you going to get married, man? I got a little low. Oh yeah, you said you got yeah, you got a little something. You gotta yeah. you mute it, boy. If you <laughs> no, and he paid money for this too. Yeah, he said he had to get a couple. He had a, what? Well, let me see. Bug said he got he got to get a little bit of this out of him. He be ready to go. But that, I mean, you gotta. My thing is, I never understood that that double standard stuff. My thing is, if you call a male a hoe, you can call a female. If you call a female a hoe, you can call a male a hoe. This is true. No, I can't hear you. Something going on. This raggedy ass shit. <laughs> <laughs> we gonna hold it down for you, though. Bug Bug pays big money for this for this uh. The streaming stream yard service bullshit. and then fuck it up. He said bullshit. I heard I read his lips. Yeah, hey, hey. But but bug is that uh two hundred dollars for six hour DJ. You could tell from his equipment. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of headphones are those, Bug? The 
the ones that don't work. That's the name. <laughs> <laughs> No, nah, we can't hear you. Yeah, baby. Oh, no, I never understood that. So my thing is, if you call somebody a, a name, then be a man. If you work, run around sleeping with different women, you a hoe, too. Mm hmm But it is. We need to fuck with him one day and say we can't hear him when we can. You know that. And that's the reason why Bug ain't got his lace front on. He took it off. <laughs> When he woke, when he uh, went to bed last night, forgot to put it on. <laughs> yeah, look, when he got on live, <laughs> just touched his forehead because he realized something was missing. <laughs> <laughs> hey, bug, go put your lace front on. You forgot to put your lace front on. Hold on. Yeah, hey, you hey. You forgot to put your lace front on. You're gonna put your lace front on. Good. <laughs> yeah, hey, hey, you, you know, you notice his hairline is way back there, right? <laughs> 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 hey, you got your red one for Valentine's Day? <laughs> nah, I, he he got a he got a box of just for me. Oh, <laughs> uh, we about to talk about you because you can't hear us and we can't hear you. <laughs> oh, he can he can hear. Oh, you, you this can is hear us, can't ass equipment. Talk. He can't, he can't speak. Talk. How does it have to be a host that can't talk when we're talking about you? I know that's a damn shame, man. <laughs> but you know, in all seriousness, if um, if Bug did put on a wig, you know, he would look just like this. Hold on, just a minute. Camera, let me flip that around to the back. He would look just like this. Oh no! no wait, wait, wait. wait. <laughs> He could so rock that. <laughs> oh. oh, man. Yeah, man, it's crazy. Man, it's crazy. <laughs> the world is crazy, man. I just hope my kids be able to weather the storm, man. I'm trying my best. Right. Yeah, that whole question about financial freedom, man. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. Oh, shit. Um, that whole question about financial freedom, I think it's more about being prepared yeah. for the, in the inevitable or uh, what may happen. And I hate to call myself a prepper, but I am. Yeah. Um, you know, in my, in my garage, you know, I got... Y'all like one of those eight foot tables some under y'all some busters. <laughs> Boy, y'all some busters. I swear to God, let me let me get me out of here right here. Y'all some busters. Y'all some busters, boy. Boy, y'all some busters. Ooh, but you know, busters. we gotta keep the show going. Hey, hey boy, y'all some busters. Boy, just like his granddaddy right The host now. go missing. We got a host. You know, if you don't like how we a host. <laughs> Bug looking just like his granddaddy. <laughs> oh, y'all some busters. Y'all some real busters. <laughs> Say, man, something wrong with you, Ray. Y'all better leave <laughs> but, my but, grandson. But as I was saying, as I was saying, I got about this much little horn to get out of me, man. And then I'll be ready. I'll be ready to be somebody's husband. And when I be somebody's husband, Mr. Dev do his part. That mean if you cheat on me, somebody gonna die. I said it on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> what it is. One of us got to go. I don't feel like I'm going nowhere. Yeah. You hear me? Yep. Yeah, that's just quite yeah. That's why I, I, I take I take the sanctity of marriage so serious to where that even when I asked somebody to marry me and I was playing games, I wasn't going to go through it. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm not going to play. I'm not going to play. But, but wait a minute. Hold on, Bug. You can't say you take this sanctity of marriage so serious, but you were sleeping with married women. Yeah, that was before I knew. Before I, that's how I lost everything that I had because I was breaking the sanctity of marriage. When you know better, you do better. When I was informed that you don't supposed to do that, and I got that knowledge, and I continue to do it, I suffer and I learn from that. So I don't to this day now. I don't pass up a lot of good trim because they were still married. I don't even want to see it. Don't talk to me. Mm -hmm. Don't talk to me. And then I'm gonna ask you up top. If you ain't married, I might can bring you on into the uh, parlor. 
relationship the bug is trying to build. I'm trying to build me a five piece. But you know what I'm saying? If you ain't in that, you know, it's not. Right. I feel like the king should have his concubines and, and his wife all together. So if I marry all five of y'all at one time, that's not big of me, right? The I mean, federal I'm government not, says it, different. It the on, federal, it the federal the government says different. Than the people, yeah. If the they agree with different. it, then, hey, y'all in agreeing. The federal government said you can marry. What if I marry all of them at one time and that'll make one person? No, you cannot marry multiples from our government. I about to say, I thought you could marry time? I at one point, at one point, I take it back. I want to say it was somewhere in the 30s, maybe early 40s. There was a uh, fundamentalist. Um, in fact, no, no, I take it back. LDS Mormons. The the federal government said that they couldn't have multiple wives. Well, and the, the feds came in and got wife. them. So, and they they killed a bunch of dudes. Like there was a big old shootout, and they killed a bunch of dudes behind that. That's crazy, so, man. Right. It's crazy. But there are more women than men out in the world. But could you imagine, like, if people can't take care of their kids now, could you imagine dudes having five, six, seven wives and all them kids running around? Like, it would it would be real bad. Yeah, it would be bad. Yeah. yeah. It would be bad. It would be bad for real. Like, And look at that dude on um, um, Sister Wives. He going through it right now. She got what five wives and one of them left and took her kid and his kid with her and and like, he's all beat up on TV, you know. He's not the bug much. He did the wrong. See, you're gonna get into this arrangement, <laughs> knowing it's to death do a sport. I ain't no divorce. Yeah, we Where can't you hear you, bud. I said, ain't no divorce. Where you going to the, to to hell? Can y'all hear me? Yeah, no. we can hear you. We can hear you. We can't. Your video is not matching your voice, so. No what, bro? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I'm just saying, though. I don't know, man, but I don't got all the answers. I just got the answers for me. I got a little less. I got probably about a couple more months of sledding in me, and then I'm gonna be ready to be married. If she want to get married, we can get married. If not, I'm not getting married. I'm too old now, shit. I'm at the age now, shit. I I, I made it my goal, shit. Uh, I'm at that point. That we're not gonna get married. We're not gonna be married. If it ain't broken, it ain't fixed. But you know, like I told her, and she got to understand. I was uh, shit. I, I had some meat. I had some exploring to do. I had some growing to do. Because my whole life I had been with in a relationship. Shit, I raised other people's kids at 19, young. You know what I'm saying? I didn't, mm -hmm. I never able to to explore. So I was always in a, a relationship from the age of 19 to shit. Now I was always in relationships. You know, even when I had two, three people at one time, but I was in relationship. Man, I had to get rid of that. You know what I'm saying? Once I get it out of my system, it's almost out of my system. And that's what it is. It's about building the foundation for them kids and grandkids. Now, it ain't even about me. I don't even care about me no more. It's about them grandbabies and, and my, my kids. What can I leave my kids so they can leave my grandkids? So I always ask people this. Legacy. After you get married, there's going to be a day. You're going to wake up in the morning and something's going to feel different. It's going to feel real different. Like, I'm really in this. Like... <laughs> When did that day happen for you? And um, usually mine's around three weeks or so. I've been married just my second marriage. So, yeah, it's around three weeks. Oh, oh, you've been married twice, bro? Yep. Oh, man, that's what's up. Right. So um, I'm one of those people. I'm in it to win it, right? My ex-wife uh, had two kids with her. And... Um, house you know cars i was working at at&t i had free medical free dental free optical um you know everything's going good lived in suburbia right and then um through those two children she gained some weight she went from like 130 to about 210 and she just couldn't peel it off you know so i didn't see her any different but um 
you know, she said, um, hey, since you got free medical, I want to get gastric bypass. Mm. So we go and see these doctors, you know, and um, doctor tells us, he says, uh, make sure you got your 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 family in check. Like if you all need counseling, go to counseling, because I'm going to tell you that 80 percent of any augmentation surgeries, people get boobs, weight loss. <laughs> yeah. End up in divorce. It's disastrous. Mm-hmm. He goes, so. You know, I want to make sure you guys make it, you know, so and she was like, yeah, we're good. And her family's all LDS. They're Mormons. So I'm thinking, OK, I'm Gucci. You know, they win it to win it. Right. right. Nope. She starts losing weight. Her sister who uh, lived in Turtle Creek, um, she was running around with all these people that have boats and, you know, we call them thirty thousand dollar millionaires. But um, oh, yeah. some of them were trust kids, on, trust fund kids. Yeah. So she starts running around with her over in Turtle Creek area. And, mm-hmm. you know, next thing, one thing leads to another. And she got eyes for somebody else. And, and, uh, one night she tried to come home and she tried to push herself through the door. And she made it into the threshold, picked her up by one foot, drug her back outside, dropped her on the sidewalk. And, uh, I said, no, you out. You know, you step outside the home like that, you out. You can't come back home. So. Right. So did the divorce thing got, you know, she took, I had refinanced the house and she took, you know, the, the, um, the overages out of the house, you know, she ran out with like 35,000 out of my house. Um, but that just, it's a fucked up situation because, um, um, you know, when you, when you marry, and you in it to win it like that. And somebody, you never know who you're marrying. Like they could change one day, 30 years into your marriage and say, okay, I want to be lesbian. And you're like, where'd this come from? You know, like we built all this and you just want to separate. Cause you know, now you're telling me you had these feelings all along, but you know, now you want to do this. So I was real hesitant to get married a second time, real hesitant. And my buddy was like, you told my current wife, he says he's never going to get married again from what he went through on that first one. Yeah. It ain't happening. <laughs> so she made it her goal to marry me. Like, you know, she did everything right, you know, still does everything right. And so, you know, I, I told her, if you're going to earn that Howard name, there's some caveats. You got to learn to barbecue. You gotta know how to fry chicken. <laughs> hey, on God. All right. If, if you can't do nothing else, you gotta learn you have to be able to cook and clean and oh, you know. God. Right. That's the bare minimum. Yeah, right. my wife, she didn't cook at first. She learned she she finally learned how to start cooking. I said, but well, I might as well <clears throat> if you don't learn how to cook, then I might as well be with Nick. The hell you yeah. <laughs> I knew you I knew you wanted to let that game design. <laughs> Real, what I'll be like, what I look like with a woman that don't at least don't learn how to cook. And she end up learning how to cook. Like, dude, I'm not I might as well be with a nigga if you ain't gonna learn how to cook. Uh, right. I'm just being real. <laughs> hey, now nah, that's real though. <laughs> hey, I respect I respect the skinny. I respect it to the fullest. Mm-hmm. I respect it. Because uh it is there are certain things cook, we so need, right? We both can't cook and, and we talking about raising kids together. Why what the hell are we gonna do? <laughs> right. There are certain things that are needed, and if it's kind of like the same thing for a woman, if a man can't cook, how like if he can't work on cars and he can't do certain things, what is he worth, right? My worth, I like my wife. I learned how to do brakes through my job through mechanics here at the city. I put uh-huh. brakes and stuff on my own car. My homeboy, right. he had a car. I'm like, dude, I'll show you how to put the brakes on. You ain't even got to pay me. I'll show you how to put the brakes and rotors on. He paid. Mm-hmm. Um, pet boy to put his brakes and stuff on. I said, well, that's on you. I right. said, but the more you learn how to do stuff, the less you keep being out your house. Right. Remember that? Mm-hmm. Learn as much as you can. Boy, you boy, you just said a mouthful. <laughs> boy. That boy just said a Hey, hey, y'all been like y'all heard him. Uh, Ray Fishnet, you heard that boy? No, I heard him. Man, that boy just said a mouth. That was, that was a jewel right there, man. That boy mm-hmm. just said something. You better learn how to do most of the stuff in your house. I learn how to do a lot of stuff. <laughs> yeah, man, I do all kind of shit in my house. That's all I do, man. Because my wife is like, oh, 
we ought to pay somebody to do this shit. I'll be the hell I do this shit for damn self. You know? And I figured that shit out. That's why I told her. I said, that's what YouTube is here for. YouTube will yep. show you how to do every hey. damn day. Silverback yeah. said, why y'all just can't get another woman? You say you're a man. Silver got got he got uh he got uh sexual transmitted disease problems, so we ain't listening to him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, Skilly talking about he might as well be with a dude if his woman can't cook. But I mean, yeah, that's that's, that's taking a little bit too far there. I no, mean, they got his uh, point across. No, they no, it's not. Across. It's, they got, it's a bunch across. of women that can't cook. That's well, married. Well, look, I mean, man, look, look, looking crazy. Look, man, look, I'm gonna tell you like this. Nah, nah. When I got married, man, my wife couldn't cook a lick. You know what I'm saying? But as long I mean, as you she learn. Cook. We still, so, yeah, she learned. She learned. She learned from my mom, and my wife cooked way better than my mom now, you know. But we were living off a of hamburger helper for like two years. Boy, you saw my baby mama. My baby <laughs> mama was some macaroni and fried chicken. She cooked man, look, so, hamburger helper, shit like that. That's what that's what the hell we had, man. Hamburger so, helper, Captain Crunch cereal, shit like that. So but if y'all don't know, didn't know I, if y'all don't didn't cook neither, my wife learned how to cook. I told her, I said, "Hey, this ain't gonna work." You gotta right. learn how to cook some. If y'all don't know, my wife's Caucasian, right? So we have this discussion in my house all the time. So she'll make something, and I said, "Did you season it like white people or black people?" <laughs> and so she'll say, "Like black people." <laughs> <laughs> so everything she makes, everything she makes, she has to say, "Call come taste it." Bro, you and ain't nothing. I, you ain't nothing. <laughs> you you, you trifling. I just want you to know that call. <laughs> So I have to usually go in there and tune it up a little bit. Like she makes spaghetti and like oh. it's, it tastes kind of Wait, flat, wife, right? So I start wife. reaching for all the Italian seasons. I'm pulling down eight seasons, right? And, you know, like I'm chopping up fresh garlic. Like sometimes I just reach in garlic, grab the jar of minced garlic, right? And I'm putting two big old heaping tablespoons in there. And, and then I come with all the seasons, you know, the oregano, the basil, the parsley, everything, you know, so... Once I tune it up, it tastes great. Now it's, you know, when I start adding like Rotel and a whole can of chunk tomatoes and and like fresh onion. And so when it all starts coming together, it's chunky and nice, you know, and it's mm -hmm. it's full of flavor and volume. Right. And so I said, honey, that's the way it should be. Like, what were you making before? This is just like tomato sauce out of the jar. And, and noodles and noodles. Right. And right. Like the box. <laughs> right. <laughs> But my wife was like this. I but know what you're talking about. My wife had to She had started saying Jamal because she used to do. She was heavy handed with the seasoning. I'd be like, God damn, girl, what you trying to do? She's like, I want to taste my seasoning. I said, God damn, how much you want to taste? Shit. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, look, no lie, bro. Man, Mika had went through a salt stage, bro. I was like, man, what the, <laughs> bro. Man, one day, man, I bit something and just got high blood pressure off the doctor. I, 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 I almost stroked out. I was like, man, what the hell, bro? I, I put too much salt in it. Yes. Then she went on a pepper. It's like she had a seasoning. Too much salt the first. Did it with the pepper. Did it with the Caesar salt. Then I bought that OG $2 salt. I got to buy some more because she done blew through that. Boom. I was like, whew. But now she 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 good now. But yeah, my, my wife like white good. Folks. I'm gonna turn you on to something, Bug. Go to the store and buy Uncle Chris's seasoning. Man, my brother put me on that a long time ago. Uncle Chris's steak seasoning. Yeah, that's something yeah. good. You can put that on anything. Right, anything. Yeah. I don't care if it's on your green beans. They're gonna be yeah, phenomenal. It It'll give it flavor. <laughs> yeah, right. my wife, she does a lot, a lot better now. But I mean, you gotta communicate that, man. You just can't but sit see, back and be like, and that's how, man, that's how it, it ends up getting destroyed because you're not saying. You know, you, you don't say, well, you know, you're doing a great job, but, you know, you're a little strong with the seasoning. You know, kind of, you know, you, you hit me too hard with the seasoning. But, but I mean, as long as you communicate, man, a lot of that stuff is... is, is so, is, check this out. I got three of these in my kitchen in the cabinet, right? But look. <laughs> <laughs> God, <Lee. laughs> I ain't fucking around. I go to the store and buy them all, dude. My <laughs> wife... Now, my wife will make something or whatever, and she'll sit there and see it on YouTube and shit like that. Well, not on YouTube, but, you know, like on the internet, trying to find yo, something. Yo, yo, and trying to make stuff, yeah. yeah trying, to, trying to find something to make or whatever, you know? And she'll make right. it, and she's like, you know, how does this taste? I said, you know, and I sit there and ask, I'm like, well, fuck, was this some shit that you know you found that white people make? 
<laughs> shit ain't fucking no sick. offense, white people. No offense. Yeah, 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 no offense. No offense. But I sit there and I say, you know, there's no season in this shit. You know, she said, right. I, don't know. I said, go back and look at it. Go back and look and sit there and research the person or whatever. And I guarantee you, the person that made this is white. You know, I said, because white people don't do seasoning like black folks. You know, we're heavy right. on the damn. I mean, we're not, you know, we're not too heavy, but we're just right with the seasoning. And that's like I said, when my wife went, um, you know, because I'm from New Orleans. When my wife got down to New Orleans, now she's from Virginia, and, and I mean, it's totally different. She got down yeah. to New Orleans, yeah. like they do in New Orleans or whatever. Shit, boy, it was on. That's why I said my wife cooked better than my mom now. And my mom hate to hear that shit. But I'm like, yeah, she learned from you, and she learned to do it better than you, mom. You know? And oh, I was, oh, the fine she word. She had a cousin. Her cousin. Hey, real like, yeah. <laughs> cook, or whatever. And they go all going on, oh, yeah, he can cook, he can cook. Man, my wife went out there and seasoned some fish and stuff like that. And, you know, they had his fish and they had the fish that she seasoned. And everybody said, oh, man, this fish is seasoned so good. Man, that joker got mad, didn't want my wife to cook no more. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't get mad or whatever. People sitting there talking about the food is good because he don't season his shit. You know, and I, and I say that all the damn time. You don't season your shit, man. This shit isn't good. There's no season. He just take and put like some salt and pepper. I'm like, dude, what the fuck is mm -hmm. that? You got to mm -hmm. put some more. It's a more. No, there's a whole lot of other mm -hmm. shit on your food, man. Right. Salt and pepper is not the only thing. You got to put yeah. some more on there. Hit it with some more. And one thing my wife did for the first time, I think last year, was make me some stuffed bell peppers. And they was good. I said, oh, look, look. Silverback said, even if, man, look, I'm going to tell you like this. I ain't got no problem telling my mom that. When my mom, when we were younger, my mom would sit there because she knew I was honest about shit. You know, I'm not going, I don't candy coat. That's never been my thing, you know? So my mom would sit there and, uh, you know, like if her and my dad are getting ready to go out, she asked me, they call me Rudy. Rudy, how does this look? Uh, not good to me, mom. She's like, okay. I asked your dad. Your dad said it looks good. Ah, uh, it doesn't. She'll go in there and change. And that's always been me. My mama called me up and she asked me a question and she knows she's going to get the honest truth. And I'm going to mm -hmm. sit there. Like I said, when it comes to my wife cooking, mom, my wife can outcook you. You know? And I don't care. My mom is like, well, you know what? That's gl I'm glad your wife can cook. She can always cook for you. I said, you're damn right. That's why I live with her. <laughs> that's why I live with her. She cook her ass off. Like, yeah. yeah I, ain't got, I ain't got no problem sitting there doing that, man. I love the hell out of my mom, you know, but I tell my mom. Yeah, I hear me. Yeah, but yeah. Boy, God, oh, now I'm fixed Oh man, I'm fixed. You got an echo real bad. I know. I got rid of. Oh. I'm fixed. I fixed it. Uh. <sighs> Fuck. Yeah, but being man. being honest, man. You know, and, and like I told my wife, don't take it personal when I say you got a little bit. You know, at first she took it hard. I'm like what? I'm like, no, don't take it hard. I say it's better for me to tell you now than later on get down the line. Still, you know, and you be like, you think you cooking it and you throwing down. Well, I'd rather for me to tell you it in the beginning so you know what to do or what not to do. And it's not to say you can't cook, but you're learning. You, you can cook. cook. Right. Man, so cook. so you have to. You can't cook. You can't cook. For anybody that can't cook, you have to learn to cook by taste. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. First, if you don't have a flavor set, develop one. Yep. She got um, her flavor set now. So the, it's something real easy to start with and that you can me. fuck up real me, bad. Me. And you learn how I taste. And no, no. Like Start with SOS gravy. Oh man, that is because that's one of the best. Right. That's one right. Of the best over the chop you up some onions, right? Yeah, gravy you can make and right. darken those onions in the pan, and then you go to bring in your flour, right? You're gonna bring in your milk, and you better start scratching fast, right? Because you got to make gravy. You add, you add milk to your gravy? Yes. That's yeah. and, oh, and hamburger meat too. That's you got to brown your hamburger meat with your onions, so you right? Your onions and you season it. that, right? And then you bring in you bring in your flour, and you got to scratch everything, right? And then you bring in the milk. It starts stirring. St keep stirring, and then you got to season the shit out of it. Yep. Garlic salt. Have, have your seasoning ready. If you if mm -hmm. really are good, you could pre mix your season, put in like a little cup, shake right. it around, taste it like that. What I want. Then you can, and and as you brown it. And you turn it, mm -hmm. up, you hit the season. So keep adding milk. The, just keep stirring, right? Add, and that stuff's gonna thicken up it, on you. It's just gonna put it over yeah. toast or rice. You Gucci, like that's what military I eats. S S S SOS gravy. But if you fuck up SOS gravy, you can't cook. I would say for real, like that is one of the best packet gravies you can buy. 
No, no, no. You don't buy a packet. You make it from scratch. But I know, I'm just saying, when, <laughs> on a Saturday morning, that shit sits so heavy on your stomach. You're gonna take that second nap, and you're gonna have the best sleep ever. But you know what I make the best gravy out of? Off chicken. Oh shit! Yeah, with some of that chicken grease and some right. uh, and some flour. Girl, I can make a gravy out this boy. I'm talking about man. Look, I'm so cold, y'all. I make gravy. I make a gravy off of uh, of like beef tips, beef tips and uh gizzards. I make a gizzard huh? gravy, bro. Like, dude, man, I, I surprised this woman, man. It won't be like when I do go in the kitchen, I don't play no game, bro. Like one time I cooked them right. some um I cooked them some uh oxtails. Man, that shit didn't last in here, bro. I mean, listen, it was one oxtail in the in the room, and because I, I bust up an oxtail to make the meat out my gravy. So mm -hmm. it was stringy in there because I had them boiled them until man, I slow cooked them until the meat just came out the bone. So I had a lot of them in there. So a lot of it, the ones that I wanted to stay, I waited to put them in. I let it cook for about two or three hours and then I put it in. So mm -hmm. they'll be kind of firm. You can eat the oxtail, but I had a lot of them had them just until the man. I'm talking about put this stuff in the freezer before I come back home. But Bryce done pulled out some rice and Bro, they they done ate it again. I had potatoes and everything. Man, that that was good. Good. Yeah. So like, 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 like New Year's, my wife went to make cabbage and beans, right? And then so she comes home and she's like, "I'm making cabbage and beans." And I look at her and I look at the pot. And I was like, "Where's your ham hocks? Where's your smoked ham hocks?" She goes, "What?" Yeah. And I said, "Oh shit, I'll be back." <laughs> went straight to the door store, store bought some ham hock. Throw them up in there. <laughs> Oh, and she goes, what is that? And I said, it's anywhere past the knuckle up to the forearm on a pig. And they take those and they smoke them. And um, so I threw those in that pot. And she goes, this is really good. And I was like, yeah. And I put some bacon in there with it, you know. So. And, and, and what? Your, um, and cabbage, cabbage, cabbage and beans. Green, and cabbage green. Yeah. 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 Uh, see, we used to take and put the, um, uh, well, sometimes the ham pox, but most of the time it was the damn pigtails. Yep, the pigtails. Mm -hmm. Put the pigtails up in there, you know, but I don't have to that shit no more. Right. Um, that shit, yeah, now cooking, I ain't gonna lie, I cannot cook, man. I'm like one of the few men in my family who can't cook. Now, when it comes to like a, a seafood boil or some shit like that, oh man, I tear that shit up, boy. I sit there and I season my shit so damn good. It's like they say, if you do a seafood boil and that shit is burning your mouth more than you're tasting the flavor, you did the shit wrong. Yep. You know, it should be, you should sit there. You should still have break a sweat from that seafood, but you but should, you should taste the taste flavor first. Shit. You it should, should be flavored then fire. Then yes, heat. sir. Yes. Listen, but not even, I, not even to the point where it burn, you know, burns or whatever. No, nah, it's yeah. just a, it should just break up. Yeah, you should break a sweat out. Yes, you know? but you should still be able to taste the flavor of that um uh that seafood. And it doesn't matter what it is, if you're doing, you know, like uh um turkey necks. Boiling turkey necks, or doing you know like the potatoes, or doing shrimp, or doing crawfish, anything like that. There's a way you got to do that shit. Mm -hmm. Some people like you know, um, I had one guy up here was sitting there talking about, oh yeah, yeah, man, I could throw down, I could throw down, you know. Went over there to the house and shit like that, you know. He did his little ball and shit, man. I took a bite of that shit, man. That shit was so damn hot. I was like, man, I can't eat this shit. This shit? Oh come on, man, this Louisiana style. I said no, this ain't no damn Louisiana style. Not if it's that goddamn hot. I was just gonna say that, bro. That hot. Louisiana style is flavor. Mm -hmm. Bro, my people down south, when you start going past Lafayette, going back toward Jefferson Paris or uh, yep. West Bank, you know what I'm saying? Don't call the West Bank New Orleans. You start going to New Orleans because really they're West Bank. Them people yep. slam on that West Bank, boy. Boy, I got some anus on that West Bank. Go so hard, boy. The, like he said, you should taste the flavor. When you suck the head on that crawfish, you should be tasting flavor. I now guess fucking nasty. To get to the next that's, nasty. That's, what that's, that's nasty. Man, you got to suck the head off the crawfish. That's that nasty. You head. sucking out all them guts oh, and the man. pancreas and the hey, liver man. and all that man, shit. Hell. You know hey, what? Man. Don't nobody hey, give a damn. They the eat booty right here. The only, the only thing it did, man, is probably gave gave a whole bunch of people, you know, high blood pressure, diabetes, pressure. and shit like that. But you know, the whole time you do it, that shit good as hell. That shit now. I mean, now the bad health I'm about to create. Yes. I, was, I think this year I'm gonna rent one of those um those uh crawfish boilers, the ones that tilt. Yeah. Oh yeah. 
Yeah, dude, so it's like 55 gallons or something, right? Yeah. So Instead of just your like normal, pot. like, pots, right? Because yeah. I normally have to run two pots because we have so many people come. And then we take all that and we dump that in one of those real big Coleman coolers. And it's full mm -hmm. to the top. And we just tear down, right? But this year, I'm going to do it different. And I'm going to spend a little bit more money. But, you know, those $300 boxes of King Crab Legs at Costco? Yeah. I'm going to use two of those. And then I'm going to use um, 50 pounds of Tiger Prawns. The three-bite shrimp, the big one. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Come on, man. Tiger Prawns are the biggest shrimp you can get. Right. So I think I'm going to do 50 pounds of that. And then two of those um, $300 boxes of <laughs> Crab Legs. Yeah. Yeah, right now, uh, four and then muscles, yeah, 450 is not gonna get he you to buy. He said, Buy for about now, nah, that ain't gonna be the big one. That's gonna be nah, the nah, that that's gonna be that one about this big. If you he can want get that big one, one, that big one, you want that 50, that 50 gallon drum one, you want the one they, they make barbecue grills out of. That big no, no, no. so oh, it's it's all stainless steel, yeah, but it has a it has a big old rack in the center. You you load all your shit into it and drop it in that water. And that yeah. season of water, right? Yeah, but when you go to dump it, it doesn't. It doesn't. It, you have to. You have to turn the handle on, it, and the whole thing dumps. It looks like a concrete mixer almost. I, I know what you're talking about. I seen one. Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah. They do them like, in the big I'm, I'm, a, I'm a, you know, been wanting to buy one, man. But the thing is, you can't now see down there where you guys are at. You can find them shits or whatever, you know, at different places. Up here, I got to order it, and you know, yeah. most of the places that you, um, you know, I'd have to order from hell, the shipping is just as much. Yep, you know, right? You do better driving down there to get it. Yep, I have somebody to meet you at the state That's line. I might do that, man. Hell, when when next time I come down there, you know, just see if my brother in law can pick me up a big one, yep. you know. But, um, yeah, man, it's crawfish, crawfish season, huh? it's crawfish season right now. My I know it's crawfish season, boy. I know, shit. Boy. Ooh, you know what season. I found out? I'm allergic to crawfish, I'm allergic to shrimp. Now, look, they told me I was allergic it's to crazy. shrimp. They told me yeah. I was allergic to shrimp or alcohol, and the doctor said, well, you know what, more likely it's the shrimp. I said, you know what, hell, I'd rather be allergic to the alcohol. You, you know, I I eat the shit out of shrimp and crab, and like especially when you get those when you get the female crabs, and they have the roe, the eggs in the bottom of that shell when you bust it open. Oh, that's so good. That stuff is great. Oh, you freaky, freaky. Nah, see, crabs to me, crabs to me is too much work, man. Yo, That's man, to get work. nothing. To yeah, get... Now the king crabs with them big ass legs and shit like that. Those mm -hmm. are cool. But them little small crabs, that's too much damn work, man. I ain't got time. Yeah, that's too much work. So you got you got to learn how to snap it in the right place. And that's still too much work. No, nope. no, because the meat the meat literally just comes out of there. No, I don't know. Man, I, maybe I, I don't eat, do them right. That's why I, I can eat I lobster. Know. I can eat lobster. I can eat salmon is good. I can eat oysters. I can eat mussels. I cannot mess with shrimp. Yeah, oh, I can't eat shrimp. I don't like lobster. I cannot lobster eat shrimp. And, 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 and crab, I can eat the like a stuffed crab, but they legs look like insects to me. Like like I was in, I was just in Louisiana, and my cousin Vicka, man, she cooked some king crab, blue crab, bro. When I seen that pointed tip, I just thought of a horror movie. I couldn't even eat it. I just. Me, he says Starship Troopers. <laughs> Say for real. That's for real. It makes yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, man, I watch too much TV. That shit too much. That's too much work for me, man. I ain't got. I'm sitting. I'm trying. I, I want to enjoy that shit. I don't want to sit there and you know be getting frustrated trying to break this shit out and you know picking meat hey. all over the damn. Man, that's, that that's a pain in the ass, dude. But they get a gumbo flavor though. If you don't got crab and shrimp in the gumbo, bro. Oh, because I got to eat. Bro. I got to eat the gumbo. They got to make the uh. The seafood is gonna vote for me, so they'll put some crawfish in there. Ain't too many people gonna buy the lobster and put the lobster in there for me. You know, so they don't like me. Mm -hmm. it, you know what I'm saying? But if your if your gumbo don't have, like you said, some type of seafood in there, some chicken, and it better not have rice yeah. on the inside. If you got rice inside your gumbo as a filler, no, and you're not pouring your gumbo not over rice, rice, you not got you don't got no real gumbo. But don't you got, come you to gotta, my house. You gotta have. I don't like you. Some chicken liver, but you know, chicken um, uh, gizzards and some heart. And some but heart. not everybody's roux is good though. Some people's roux tastes burnt. Man, some taste dirty. You from Louisiana, I haven't found nobody from that boot. Like I said, past that yet that cook gumbo. Man, listen, I'm allergic to shrimp. I, I smelled the roux that smells so good. I went and hit it, boy. My lips swole up, man. I looked like the clumps. 
Look, <laughs> nigga, hit me with the Benadryl. Boom, boom, boom. I'm full of Benadryl, trying to. Bro, it smells so good, I had to taste it, bro. Look, it ain't too many people. Only people mess up gumbo is peep and taste. Look, <laughs> my wife, my wife is allergic to um uh to shrimp. She makes my shrimp gumbo, my seafood gumbo, and she'll make her own gumbo. Mm -hmm. And when I sit there and tell you, both both of them good as hell. Then okra gumbo. Oh boy, shut up. That shit See, right there, shut bro. Up. Okra shut gumbo, up. man. Shut that up. shit is the damn truth. Shut up, man. Listen, you know? I'm gonna tell you the last God bless the dead. My ain't uh Elton May, man. My ain't Elton May, man. My cousin Dolores mama. Yeah, I got sick as a dog that day. She had an okra gumbo, crab, shrimp, oysters, the livers, the chicken, the sausage. Because normally when you see people put sausage up in the, them fillers, because they don't be in real gumbo. You know what I'm saying? But she had it. Bruh, I took them Benadryls because I knew I was going to eat some. And I ate too much and it, it caught up with me though, y'all. But yeah. Hmm. But, but yeah, I'm, I'm telling you. You talking about that, that gumbo was full of meat. When I pulled it over my rice, because I pulled it over my rice, it's like the, the meat drowned out the rice. You just, yeah. Oh boy, yeah. I see. Look, look. So you from Louisiana. So what yeah. go, what 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 you have your gumbo, mm -hmm. you have your rice that goes with your gumbo, and what's mm -hmm. the other the one other thing that goes with it that you gotta have? Now we're gonna see. How um a Louisiana your ass is because most people I guess and it may be different for uh, for you where you're oh at. no because we don't know yeah it may be different because down it's south they cook they gumbo different than they cook they cook the no no well this is this is something that just kind of go on the side on now, the side of the gumbo me they go right there Nola uh, gun guy said it you gotta have that shit with your gumbo you that got root? potato salad. Oh yeah! Yo. If you ain't got no potato oh, salad, oh, on yo. the side of that, and, and, and I ain't talking about that mustard potato salad neither. Yeah. Not the one that that's full of mustard. mustard. Your potato salad, your potato salad, don't go in the side bowl. That no. shit go right there in the bowl with your gumbo. Go with your gumbo, because it's gonna cool goes. your gumbo off, and it better be cold. You damn right. It got to be you freezing right. cold. It got to be cold, bro. Tell and you gonna hit both of them and hit both of them at the sun. People don't know about that. So that's not a hot cold thing. The savory, the cold. Um. And it yeah, it's balancing things out. That creaminess balances out all that sauce, right? But yes, because that sauce so, be that sauce be flavor, and that right. of the tater salad. Oh man, it's like a symphony in your mouth. It's like it's like yeah. and twelve I mean, birds that, dancing on your tongue. Is and it's there, just man, good. It just tastes like something is missing, you know. Right. My wife, and like I say, my wife learned that shit. You know, when um uh when we lived down in Louisiana, she learned that shit, and when she makes her gumbo, I'm telling you. Gotta be she'll make potato salad right there to go with that shit, man. To go with it. And it's just like Grandma it's like having that. coleslaw on your uh, on your brisket sandwich. Mm-hmm. I'm not, but I don't like coleslaw. Everybody, listen. Let me tell you that. Everybody can't make coleslaw. Everybody can't make potato salad. Everybody can't make gumbo. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Now you gotta learn. You gotta learn. You gotta and, learn. And, and, and the thing it, is. It takes time to learn how to do that shit. And you're going to fuck it up a few times. Yeah. If you fuck it up, don't get on your feelings. Learn from it. Look, I can't eat shrimp, but this woman can tell you, I make the best grilled shrimp she ever had in her life. Man, let me tell you something. Like, when I get in my little moods where I just want to be a good dude, I go get the thickest lamb chops I can get. Or get that lamb shoulder and cut it, have it cut thick lamb chops. I get the lamb chops and put the lamb chops on the grill. I um, let them grill some. Then I take them off. I sear them on the pan with some good old uh, olive oil and garlic and lime. Put the baby back up on there, dude. Then I put my shrimps out and I already season my shrimps and all that good old stuff. And I stick them babies around that lamb chop that they eating. And I'm going to keep it on that side of the grill that I don't eat on. And get their stuff together, man. That woman tell you, man, I make her some steak and lamb chop with some shrimp in it, bro. She be like, like, how you make shrimp so good and you don't eat them? Because, man, I just, I, I know what good food tastes. I'm a foodie, man. I'm fat. I love food, bro. Hmm. I love food, bro. And that's one thing, like, I'll eat women. Let me tell y'all, help or something out there. You know how you're going to keep your man? Cook something. I went Feed home. him and bring him plates. Yeah, look, I went, this, I promise to God, man, I went home. This woman named Janice, bro. Janice, bro, I used to be in love with her when I was little. She was yellow, though. She was the only yellow bone woman that I would have gave it to. Man, my, my nephew, my nephew grandma died, and I went over there. This is my first time eating spaghetti since I was 16 years old. 
man, that woman cooked some spaghettis with some um cowboy cornbread. The cornbread tastes like it got like um uh, on the inside of it, it tastes like it got like a sloppy joe inside the cornbread. Bro, this woman cooked so damn good. I paid her. That next day, I gave her some money because I told her I was going to pay her because it was good soul food. And I told her straight up, I know you got a dude, but you can keep your dude. I just want to for food. When I come home, I'm going to pay you for food. I'm going to take care of you and just put you on the roster for food. We don't got to do nothing else because that woman can cook her ass out. If women cook the way that woman cook, that's old school cooking like my grandma. If women cook like that today, you can keep your dude. You know what? I have high cholesterol, high blood pressure. I got high everything. But I just taught my wife how to make crackling cornbread. Boy, what you know about that? That boy got some color in him. <laughs> you hear this? You hear this fool? Uh, man, you hear this man? Uh, uh, Ray. I hear Ray, you. do you hear him? That fool. I hear. But hold up. I've never seen nobody that high yellow on the color spectrum say something about some damn crackling cornbread. That's because my dad, that, man. People, people look at me like I'm retarded. Man, okay, so I'm gonna show y'all something, and y'all, 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 y'all gonna, gonna be like, "What's this? Some crackling cornbread? Boy, I ain't had that. Man, I ain't had no good crackling cornbread in over ten years. God, right." And she used to use some kind of other cornbread mix and like a bag, and I said, "Nope, I'm gonna, I'm gonna let you go if you don't use anything but Jiffy." Hmm. Oh, Jiffy for cornbread? Oh yeah, you gotta use Jiffy mix. Now oh, Jiffy ain't right. the same no more. Man, screw that. Give me some homemade cornbread. That's Jiff is cheap. That's, that's is real cheap. easy to screw up. That's real easy to screw up. I know it. That's what I'm saying. Man, that woman made cowboy cornbread from scratch. Bro, I ain't had none of this since my ain't, my ain't right. Bobby died, bro. Like, dude. I, my, wife do some, my wife do some hell of a macaroni and cheese from scratch. Every, every Thanksgiving, they want my wife to cook it. She done perfected Say. that shit. Say, the best banana pudding ever had was my ain't else to be. Mika seen S to B make this banana pudding one time. Mika is not as good as S to B because S to B got an ingredient that I think she missed or as a measurement that she missed. But Mika made they they run and nicknamed. I think she make the best compared to S to B. S to B gonna always be the greatest. But she make say man, that's one thing. That's why I'm fat now, bro. I wasn't fat at first. I was skinny, man. I go get some pictures and show you some pictures. I was slim, man. That woman start cooking. I'll say everybody can't cook hot water cornbread. Nope. Bro, you. Oh, man. Everybody can't cook hot water cornbread, bro. Mm -hmm. That's a skill. That's an old school skill. Mm hmm. Yeah, for real. That's an old school, too. Old school, bro. Like old people used cookie? to collect recipes. That was a thing, right? Oh, they yeah. had that, that little box with the three, um, with the little index cards in it and it had all recipes. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. I got oh, my yeah. grandmama's. Did a roller dicks, man. Say some of them recipes, boy. That's something I love to do. It's three things I like to do, and y'all finna laugh when I tell y'all this. This calms me down. Watching water, just watching water calms me down. Cutting the yard relaxes the hell out of me. Ask me why I do not know. Cutting and manicure in the yard, edging some hedges, and just oh, because once it's done, boy, you think you know how you did a masterpiece. Yeah, say man, <laughs> that just do something to me. <laughs> and and y'all, and when I cook, y'all like I cook, and I'm gonna tell you what my my specialty is in my family. I can cook anything because my mama always taught us how to cook and take care of ourselves. But I'm a cake guru, like that boozy cake. When Mika started doing boozy cake, is because one day we was we had a cake off. Like we man, we even show you how to make a cake. Man, boom! I made a uh, I made a uh, a Palmer Sun brandy cake. When Bryce got out of jail a couple of years ago, the cake was so damn good that we ran out of alcohol that uh, they started uh, eating the cake to keep their buzz up. It was just good, dog. But that's my thing, though. Cakes, I cook. When I feel good, bro, I cook. And if I get in the depressed mode, I just go cook, man. Oh, you in North the Houston the Woodlands? Yeah, I know where you at, man. Them laws bad up now. <laughs> he said in the woodlands man the woodlands something else it's nice out there in the woodlands though they mind their business and you better All mind right. yours yeah you better mind yours going out there look at so this look dude. at that boy you ugly hold on that's my dad and my brother man that's your dad and your brother yeah oh you're a nigga 
<laughs> Told you. <laughs> that boy's a color. <laughs> you a color. I told you. <laughs> you slave trader. <laughs> yep. I have Negro knees. Yeah, I Negro knees. Look, I make that. Look, I be making that joke to about our black knees now. Right, bro. I'm real. I'm real life. Look, cause look, my eyes are tight for real. Like people be like, you now don't even smoke weed. No, no, get high. I really drink when I'm at home. And if I'm drinking, they, they let you know if I'm really drinking, I'm relaxing. The talk noise on the live. But if I'm really drinking, it's because I'm stressed out. You know what I'm saying? I'll be chilling, trying to just <laughs> mellow out because my little life is a little hectic sometimes. But you a real nigga knees. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, brother. <laughs> <laughs> so your mama was Oriental? Yeah, my mom's Japanese. Oh, oh wow. man. That's what's up. Yeah, Dad, she's a 4'11", little tiny woman. He brought her back from the war? No, no. Um, he was in Vietnam. He was doing R and R over in, v- in uh, Japan. Mm-hmm. So yeah, he met her during Vietnam. But man, I met this Japanese woman. She was so nice and sweet, but she was crazy. They believe in respect and honor. They honor is so they, yeah. They real about that boy. Mm-hmm. They respect the honor. They'll, they'll stab you behind that boy. Nice yeah. day. Shout out to you, Monica. Yeah, you boom boom so hard, Monica's. Oh. Yeah, so I'm looking for a picture here. Hey man, this dude here. Uh oh, y'all, we got OG Tank. We got that fairy berry up in here. Ray, he, we got your girlfriend in here. OG Tank. <laughs> hey Tank. So he, he, probably, he probably he probably laying across the bed half naked right now. <laughs> <laughs> Take you laying across the bed naked with his chin up like the seal to my what y'all do? <laughs> fun boy. That boy's a fun boy, yeah. Fun boy. With Check his tank out, top boy. on. With a tank top on. Rubbing on his belly. <laughs> I'm playing with my neighbor thinking about you skilly. <laughs> no, he not. <laughs> <laughs> I don't no. like boys. I like women. You like women. They look like, like lady boys. Lady boys. Yeah, no, for real. I had a Japanese friend. Her name was Monica. I, I couldn't pronounce her real name, so she just said Monica. I, I promise to God. I promise to God. She was cool as shit. I was fucked up. I was a fucked up person. Man, shout out to all the women I fucked over out in life. Y'all, I apologize. Hey, I hey, hey, Tank, ain't nobody thinking about you naked. It's just every time we see your ass on the camera, that's how you lame. Them fucked over women ain't gonna be watching this feed. You know that. Man, they do. They watch it. Man, you'll be surprised. All my haters watch me, man. I shout out to all y'all. I appreciate y'all. Y'all keep me. Because they're gonna come on live and be like, you remember when I stuck a finger in your butt while you're coming? Man, they she's not dead. So you know what I'm saying? <laughs> that is not I'm not in jail. So you good. It's just certain things to book my shit. Yeah, I, I, I'm waiting for that girl to come on because that's gonna be the day, man. He said his mom taught music to uh Ray. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I don't like y'all bottom of the map. All y'all from New Orleans. Y'all from the tour of the booty stank down there. Y'all sweated. That's why we at the top of the map. Close to the pants there. We clean. You know what I'm saying? North side. Yeah. Y'all know what it is. Yeah, North and South stuff, man. But yeah, bro. That man, the Japanese woman was cool. Man, I met so many women, bro. Like I met women from a lot of cultures. And I was just a douchebag. If I had the knowledge that I have now, bro. Yeah, but I ain't gonna trade in my Mika, man. I got a good Mika, so I'm gonna keep my Mika. Yeah, yeah. She got she she know how to tolerate those ignorant. Ass. Now you know what I like. What I respect about her, bro. What I respect about her, bro. She allowed me to be me, no matter what. I'm gonna be me, and she not tripping. She uh like we go with my cousin. Him, you let him talk like that, bitch. I'm grown. Now yeah, I'm gonna talk like that. You because you a woman, you gonna stop me? I'm not gonna curve. What the fuck I'm gonna say because of you? Is you stupid? No. If it ain't disrespecting, I'm not gonna disrespect her. But man, like, yeah, bro. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So look at this photo. So this is um this was taken about 19. Um, hold on, I'm trying to find you. Shit. Call, come back. That was an accident. I'm an idiot. There we go. I know. I, I was trying to highlight myself you. out. Hold on. Oh, you kick yourself out? Because I was trying to solo you out to see the picture. <laughs> yeah, ahead. so here we go. So this is... um. 
me see here. Facing back. So this is about 19, probably 88, somewhere in there. This so that's my mom right on the right left. Right. On the left. And that's oh. me. Mm-hmm. And that's and my grandmother. That? And then my aunt. And then my little brother. They were small women. Yeah. Yeah. They were small women. Dang. Yeah, everybody in that, all, all my aunt, my mom, everybody's like four eleven. So, so do all y'all not a massage? Really? <laughs> <That's> <laughs> <all right. laughs> really? You thought you, you thought you was gonna make Look, it? You're a racist. You're a racist <laughs> bug. <laughs> we know you eat chicken, but then you're not a massage. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm just fucking with you, bro. Don't get offended. I'm just talking shit. Yep. Yeah, man, that's crazy. Like, uh, yeah. he not a massage, and he for real a nigga knees, y'all. Shout out to yeah. God. Hey, but really <laughs> fascinating. Hell yeah, because I be playing. This right. dude, he's serious, and that's why we linked up. But listen, bro, just we jam. Just it's just we connected the first time I ever met him. He nigga knees. Right. I'm thick nigga knees. He real nigga knees. He like the Coca Cola, and I'm Big K. It's all cool. We represent the right. same thing, Cola. <laughs> Right. <laughs> good people are just good people, don't matter where you come from. People, bro. Absolutely. For real, dog. And, and it go back to it go back to what we said earlier, dog. Surround yourself with good people. Mm-hmm. I yep. surround myself. That's an entrepreneur, that's an innovative dude. When me and this man talk, we we talk about BS, but guess what we talk about? Our conversation is challenging each other. We challenging mm-hmm. each other, and it ain't it ain't ain't no challenging like in no ego pissing because it's it way. it's, it's it challenging. Like me and this man just sat up and thought about how to, how can we make a high point better? How can we piss people off with a high point? Like who think of it? Like I think of weird stuff, and I was like, damn, I got another weirdo. Oh look, I'm normal unless we just two abstract weirdos that just linked oh, up. Look. It's all good. Then I got weirdo skinny now. He can't be the drum for shit, but he can draw his ass off. Then we got Ray Fisher. You know, say he make porn hub. He give you the password to it. You know, somebody so you can get it for free. It's all good. You know, what I'm saying you surrounded by good people, man. Bugs, granddaddy. That's just you disrespectful. <laughs> Steel sharp and steel, bro. And that's real talk, Joe Bob. Like, like I talked to him, I can have the conversation with these guys right here, these four guys that's on this panel. We can have different conversations that I have with everybody else because all of us are really trying to get to that next level. Like, how can we oh, get yeah. to the next level? Most definitely. How can we get there? You know what I'm saying? Dude, I'm in Shreveport. This ain't my product. I wish I had it on me. I went to Dab Tech. Dab Tech was so enthused with me. I'm like, man, I'm say, man, look, this is my partner, Oda Norman. Go check him out. They all on his Instagram page looking at his product. Ah, ah. Then you know it's always a hater. Oh, that doesn't make sense. Why would you put a gas pedal on the carry gun? I said, why wouldn't you want to stabilize something to make you shoot better and make you more proficient? Why wouldn't you? Right. Absolutely. He didn't have nothing to say then. I said, until you touch the product, don't don't judge. Yeah. I said, uh, order the product. If you don't like it, uh damn, damn, tell them to send you back. Tell them Tackerberry Bug said. You didn't like it, you sent it back, and then I pay him for the product. Now what? When I said that to the dude, the dude was like, "You quiet now, like man? Come on, man! Until you got the product, don't 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 crash, judge. Man. Yeah, don't judge until you can get it and you get your hands on it. Mm-hmm. Now, if you get your hands on it, now I play with staccatos. I got an XC staccato. I got a bull armor. I prefer the bull armor with staccato. So I say the staccato when the XC ain't trash. But the cheaper version of the staccatos, the lower end staccatos are trash because you got to do stuff to them to make them work. The same way it is with a prodigy. That man had to reinvent the prodigy to make the prodigy work. Mm-hmm. So it's trash to me. I got a right to give my opinion because I, I touched it, I dealt with it. Yep. That's like this one site I got that I had got that I thought was going to be a good site. But uh, it was it was for my pistol. And, <laughs> and what it <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and, Oden, and, look, look at the screen, Oden. Go ahead, finish tell your story, Skilly. So, um, so it's a pop up. <laughs> so you you pop it up, and you, <laughs> and that's when the red dot come on. Yeah. Well, when I was shooting my nine, it'll pop back down, the lock back down. I'm like, motherfucker, ain't supposed to be doing this. Mm-hmm. 
So it's a bad product to me. <laughs> shit, for real, shit, you got a bad product. That's your experience with the product. I, I love staccato. Is cool, y'all. It's overhyped. It's not the STI. Style. It ain't overhyped. But when you uh -oh. can make your staccato do this with one finger, and it's that smooth, and then you can air rack it. Hold up. Uh, Rambo J just air racked the high point. Yeah, ten millimeter. But but look how smooth that is. It's one finger. Now man. now you see it just it just clipped up. It's just it. It just bind. No no. So uh, no 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 no. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna show you something. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna learn you something, no, no, son. No 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 no. I'm right. I'm right. It bind it. No. So that's the that's the uh, the disconnector back there, right? It always. There's always just a little bit of hitch, just a little bit, always. Get that hitch off. The bull just move, it just goes. Shoo, shoo. Yeah, but watch this. Shoo, shoo. I'm gonna tell you, your bull can't do this, right? You know what this is, yeah, right? Yeah. Why are you putting it out? You disrespect. Yeah. So I'm just saying. I'm just saying. We're not measuring the. We're not even measuring the trigger. So we zero it out, right? Mm -hmm. We yeah, zeroed zero out. out. Watch this. Watch this. I'm gonna pull on that optic, right? So six point three one. Oh, I'm sorry, you had lost out. We can see this. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. So I'm gonna do it again. I'm gonna do it again, right? Hey, one more time, you see what you trying to show us? Ah, I did just that. <laughs> five point five eight. Uh, yeah, that's smooth. Right. That's smooth from out, out the out the handle. I mean, yeah. that's out the damn sight. But look, yeah. look what you did to this Sakato man. Go on, on you. What I'm talking about, bro. Come on, let's just have this debate now. What okay. I'm talking about is out the box. Out the box, no modification, no touching the spring. No, come on, man. You know that gun ain't all it. It ain't really it, it was it was good gun. Out of the box. It was great gun. But you made like it. anything I touch, I gotta make it a hundred percent. I gotta go for it. And so, so 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 out of the box. Ooh, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna let you touch it. So I'm gonna let you touch it. We're gonna get an out of the box staccato. Who got us? I think Gershon got an out of the box staccato. And we're gonna take my bull that's out of the box. I ain't did nothing to. Him. And we're just gonna look at him. Bull is underrated. It is underrated. It's underrated. You can't bull, you can't mess with the Israelis, dude. You cannot. Them bull fuckers live. They should be charging three grand easy for their cheapest guns, bro. I don't know if it's all that. Like, it has to be hand built to be a three grand. It's nice, man. If it's hand built, I I'll fuck with three grand. But if it's not, mm -mm, nope. What those staccatos running? Twenty five? Oh uh, yeah, twenty two to twenty five, depending on where you get it. And so you. I was looking on. I was looking at one. I was trying to see if I wanted to buy one. I did. Every, no, the last I saw was twenty two hundred. And then mm -hmm. the most I saw was almost three thousand. God, dang. thank you, thank you. Yeah. That boy is. I'm gonna tell you where to get one at, and you tell them Tackleberry Bug sent you. You call Cash in a Flash Pawn Shop, Shreveport, Louisiana, on North Market. I got the address right here somewhere. They got one. It says Tech Two. They got the they got the X. They the only people had it in stock. I ain't dropped the video yet because YouTube playing with my. Monetization, they don't want to monetize my video. I pulled the Ben drop the video. Who was Them it? people got bull armors in stock? Blew what my pawn, mind. What pawn Blew. shop was that? Uh, cash in a flash in Shreveport. Tell them Tackleberry Bugs sent you. Don't mention Tackleberry's, Tackleberry's name because they're gonna be like, Where he at? He owes money. They ain't they they now they say he, <laughs> he the dude that dropped out. That's when I bought that minute 14. Mickey yeah. even said it. Mickey said you had to have it because I didn't even negotiate, didn't haggle. I got a some free bullets and some cleaning products, but I ain't yeah. even haggle with the price. Normally, I'd be on their neck at a pawn right. shop, but I'd be like, I get 500. Man, I ain't even do I want this gun, I got it. But now, man, they got some stuff up in there, bro. Them, I ain't even yeah. do hitting all the pawn shops and gun shops in Shreveport Bowser. Them just a few of the ones, them three of them I went to. And you know, I'm gonna go back down there and I'm gonna hit the rest of them. But I just got to see if YouTube gonna release the videos because I think because YouTube be thinking they they gun stores, man, they be. Playing like if you ain't gonna pay me for the video, I ain't gonna let you put no commercials on here and I'm getting enough of it. Like, so does anybody have you ever built a 1911 2011? 
Nope. No. I, uh, I attempted to build one, and then I got frustrated because I got tired of fucking filing, and I, I gave it back to the gunsmith. And fuck this so thing. the <laughs> filing is is the fast way to go, right? Mm-hmm. But if you truly want to lap them rails, then what you're gonna do is put um they they make a compound for lapping rails, okay? Yeah. But it's like a paste. So you put it on the inside of your slide and you put some on the, the rail and, and you're going to put that slide on. You're going to put some oil as well. Right. And you're going to put that on. a. You're going to put that lower in a vice. Right. Mm-hmm. And then you're going to tap that rail on. It's not going to want to fit, but you're going to fit it on real tight. And then you're going to hit it with a plastic mallet. And you're going to force it across those rails. And it's going to start removing little bits of metal. Right. So push it forward mm-hmm. and you're going to tap it back the other way. And you're going to do that about 15, 20 times. Then you're going to clean all that shit out of the rail. And then you're going to start again. Slag uh, your grease on and put some oil in it and do it again. It's going to take you probably four or five hours doing that back and forth. But I, I don't and it'll start to get it smooth. Tight. I don't want to right? get that tight, though. But no, no, no. It'll, it'll loosen up. It'll get to the point it will loosen up. Yeah, but that's a that's a gun that if too much dirt get dude, I'm bug. I'm hazardous. I don't be caring and I'm not gonna clean it every day. I'm gonna treat it like a slut and I'm running hard, I'm gonna put it up, and then I'm gonna come back and hit it dirty. No bad. Boo, boo, mm. boo, 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 boo. Bruh, no, nah, that's that's why Nighthawk customs and the Ed Brown, I don't shoot that stuff because it's it's too it's precision, like no. Like now, that's too much money to be. You can't play with it. So I like the bull armory because it's still tight, but it still got that tolerance to where it'll let you. And for the price of it, you ain't up here thinking about damn. I got, you know, this Atlas Athena, and I don't. I don't want to just treat it bad. I know I can, but I'm not. I'm gonna shoot the hell out of it. But I don't. Man, that bull on me. Shit, I got fifteen hundred dollars, two thousand dollars into it. Fuck it. You know what I'm saying? Well, when you start getting guns that are duty worthy, combat worthy, right? Mm-hmm. You look at your your nineteen elevens that came from the war, right? That were built for war, right? Pick them up, move yep. the slide. You're gonna feel the slide is pretty tight, and then you're gonna go. Glack, 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 it's yep. just gonna rattle, right? Yep. Those they're loose like that because they're gonna be in grit and sand and shit like that. But that's what you need, so it doesn't stop on you. But when you start talking about people that shoot competition and shoot precision, um, like real precision matches, um, the nerves are so tight. And so I mean, they're not, the slide's not tight, but it's fitted so well that there's no play. No play. There's yeah. no play. So I, I, feel, I felt that on that on that night out when you try to go side to side, it won't mm-hmm. go up or down. You try to squeeze up. Down. Even yeah, Adam, you squeeze. You, don't you, do all that. you do, do right. You take it and try to do you know all directions just check for movement and, and it don't move it just sit right the then that's why i'm there. telling you that's how they get those rails like that is it's they're the literally place. tapping that thing back and forth and you know that's that's what it takes now when you start filing and sanding you got to be careful because you will fuck up that rail fast oh, you know? I know you will mess up a frame what was it, uh that was the fosters no nah, mm-hmm. i had a cast you can over polish it, it. And do the same thing. Screen. That's exactly mm-hmm. what happened. It was too loose. It was just like you put mm-hmm. the slide on there, that baby did this. It was mm-hmm. like that's done, man. You 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 messed that up. I was like, ah, screaming right. three hundred dollars down the drain. Right. So the best way to do it is just take your time and tap that slide along those rails and keep going back and forth. Even if it takes you ten hours, just doing that, you know, over a week. When was the last time? And that's how you build a fine fitted 19 or 2011. When was the last time you built one? You ain't built one in a minute. Mm -mm. It takes some time, dude. And it's not fun. (laughs) You know, Mm -hmm. anytime um, I get a gun, I first thing I do before I even shoot it, I go through it. I tear it all down, clean all the parts. Usually I start polishing shit. Mm -hmm. Anything that's going to touch something else or, you know, rub, you know, turn on it. Oh, all those parts getting polished, mirror polished. I shot at Dan Wilson, uh, Shadow. Oh, the DWX. Oh my god, I like it. Yeah, I, I think I'm about to. I, I'm trying to think 
what I'm going to get rid of to get it. I got to so I got W to guns at the premier gun shows. He had one on his ta- on his display. It was serial number 16. I almost bought it just because it was serial number 16 and just put it away. You know, I should have, I didn't, but what? the only reason I didn't buy it is because it didn't have optics cut in the slide. I'm oh, real yeah, finicky was- about that kind of shit. Like it, you know, you pay this kind of money for this gun, two thousand dollars. It should, and it should it doesn't come with optic cut. cut. Like yeah. so yeah. then I gotta send the slide out to get cut and then I gotta have it re seracoded. Mm-hmm. You know, that's another hundred bucks plus they gotta install the sights, you know, front sight back on. It's gonna be another twenty, thirty bucks. Um yeah, so when you look at paying that much for a gun and it doesn't you already gotta do work to it like that to that level. That that's frustrating for me. So I said I'm gonna just wait eight months and I'm gonna wait for them to release the, the optic ready version. Yeah. But you know what I was thinking about that gun? What's that? You know how that Seymour Rail go through the holding the uh, take down pin? The Seymour. You know, like you know, like when they put the optics uh plate mm-hmm. on it, they put the optic on top and don't touch the slide. Right. That's the way I run that gun. I won't want it with the slide cut. I want to run it like that. But then now you got the drill holes in the frame to hold the uh, optic. Uh, I yep. what's calling, but they should make a version like that because I think that'll be an awesome gun. Because that gun put me in the mind after shooting it, it put me in the mind of it put me in the mind of a staccato, but it put me in the mind of the parrot. Mm-hmm. And that's a slip on gun that people people be sleeping on is them checkmates and parrots. When a parrot is a checkmate, but it's just a different version of checkmate. But that parrot, that's a slip on gun. People sleep on that gun. It's expensive for a reason. Right. That parrot is a mother. And right. as a as a parrot on them, like yeah. And that's why I haven't been going. When I, I got Athena's, but my next, my next um uh, my next 2011, I want that infinity arms. This is there aren't many guns out of the box that have comparable triggers to a Parrot or an Infinity or an Atlas or, you know, but they are custom gun, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but with that caveat, you can also buy them in the gun store. Yeah. You know, all day long, you can go buy those. Mm-hmm. So truly, it's a handmade production gun. Right. That's why they so high. Yeah. And if any, so, as far as production gun goes, they have the best triggers. Like you won't beat them. So, uh, so, uh, what 1911 custom 1911 2011? That's even double stack 45 or double stack nine. That you want. So, um, Joe Ball was talking about Trinity earlier. Trinity or Nighthawk. That's my ultimate guns. So you'll take a Trinity over Infinity? Yes. I sure take, would. Take a Trinity over uh, Atlas? Yes. I played with Trinities and they're, they're, they look better to me. They, they, they're cute. They're cute. Yeah, they look better. Um... I love that squareness of the gun, you know, along the whole rail. I like how their chamfers are. I like their their shapes, you know, for the um uh, yeah I'm drawing blanks here. This uh this part of the gun. Yeah, I know uh, what you're talking about. Um but yeah, I, 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 I love that whole gun. Um Atlas, like big- I think Infinities look a little bit better than Atlas's. You know, as far as looks go, but it's a real, it's a real close call on all three of them. I'd be glad to own any of them. Mm-hmm. You know, you you put any four of those guns up, I'm gonna take. I, I'll close my eyes, I'll take the first one. I don't care. But, mm-hmm. uh, but yeah, if it was left up to me, I'd go for the Trinity. You go for Trent. Yeah. Thank you, Joe Bob. He's at front rail serrations. Yeah, front rail serrations. Yep. Yeah. Man, I, yeah. I, I love my Atlas. To me, I think until I shot an Infinity, 
I was Atlas, like Atlas, 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 but it's too many custom gun companies out here that you don't know about. <laughs> that you just don't know about because like they say, there's levels to this gun game, man, and mm-hmm. everybody can't play the gun game. Like, it's levels to this gun stuff, man. Like, Well, it, it all comes down to how much time are you going to put into that gun to make it the best it is, right? Mm-hmm. And it's either about mass producing or it's about making one-off guns that are heirloom quality that are going to be passed down from generation to generation and still be top of their class. Right. Mm-hmm. So, and then you got everybody in the middle. Yeah. Um, um, but I'd say for anybody buying a gun, buy a gun that's two levels above what you're planning to buy. Yeah. And you will not have buyer's regret. Never. Buyer's remorse. Yeah. Because there are a lot of times you buy that gun. Let's say you go buy, buy a Brita 92X, right? Mm-hmm. You go and shoot it, and you realize the recoil is terrible on it. Mm-hmm. You're like, why the fuck did I buy this gun? You know, people have SIGs and they're shooting flatter, but it's almost the same price. But to me, yeah, the, the Brita is proven, right? It's battle proven. Um, it's all steel, you know, but, you know, when you turn around and, um, shoot it and it doesn't shoot like you want it to you know um then you're gonna start adding parts to it right but you can take a x5 legion out of the box if you know yes. what you're doing with this gun yeah you can shoot pretty damn flat with it you know right. but you better be strong um but if you if you have risks like skilling there um uh, yeah, you're, not little, gonna you're not gonna manage you're not gonna manage a my lady <laughs> Olive oil, little sister arms. Right, I understand. Right, yeah, you gotta, you gotta have some some good wrist some action. Good, good, yeah. And uh, if your wrists are are not big and robust, yeah, you're gonna have problems managing that recoil. You know, and, and yeah, because it's not the same as you're doing this here, man. You got the whole recoil. Right, you anyway, got a death grip. Hey, right. I, I want to say this to dress to kill Tay. Just to kill Tay, that garrison, that garrison high power. If these people gonna release my video. You go look at my channel. I'm gonna drop a video. I ran across one in National Jury Lawn, bro. Gold and white. I saw that thing. Oh man, it's dangerous. white. It's a white gun with gold. Um, gold barrel, uh, gold accents, gold trigger. Right. Oh, oh, I was like, bro, I got a real FN high power brown. So, okay, so so I bought. I used to have a. Um, I bought this gun because it looked really good. And it was the um, the SAR K12. It's the clone of the oh, Italian the CZ, oh, the right? The right. In the, in, the, in the shadow, yeah. But I took the slide off, and the first thing I noticed, machine marks yep. all up under the slide. Mm-hmm. And I was like, this is not going to be good, you know? And then took it out to the range, and I was having failure to feeds, um, stove pipes, um, all kinds of issues. So I brought that gun back home and I was pissed, you know, because I bought it at Range USA and this is no refund policy, right? As soon as you shoot it, take it out the store even. They can't take it back, right? So um, I was pissed about it. So I, I just went to work on the gun and polished the barrel, polished the feed, ran, polished the breech. How I shoot now? How I shoot now? It was a sewing machine after. I know. But I changed out the spring for a real 1911 spring, not that damn Turkish spring. And then I clipped the spring, you know, so the follower would fit. Um, and then I went through the magazine and they had clipped out the followers out of the, um, out of like a model part tray, you know, and they were real sharp on the edges. So I took some sandpaper, filed those up real nice, um, clean the inside of that mag, um, checked the spring and everything. I went through the whole gun. And then when I took it back to the range, it ran beautiful. Like, but, see, but, you know, that's most people aren't going to get to that level. You got to tear that whole gun down and figure out what happened. Mm-hmm. And so it was one of three places. And whatever I did, I fixed it. And it so. runs, uh, uh, Joe said we're going to talk about ammo selection. And then, oh, uh, good, he came in. So he can bring up the conversation. Then, uh, then uh, Philly said, uh, what's, what are your thoughts on the night hawk and the sand hawk? Oh, that Sandhawk is pretty, man. 
But do it shoot though. That's the. I don't the know. Sandpiper. I don't know. The That's sandpiper funny. cool. I know somebody with a sandpiper. One of my partner, um, Jacob, his friend got the sandpiper. Man, he got every goddamn thing. That he got about five staccatos, Nighthawk, two or three Athenas, Infinities. The dude got a case. I promise you, when he opened this case of 2011s, it's about 200 grand worth of guns. And I ain't even talking about the optics. We ain't even got into the optics and mm. the optics and the lights and all the other stuff. He mag wells and grips. This is just the guns, bro. He got a case like this full of 2011s. Like, like them, them who I'm inspiring to be like them douchebags. He just built the 300 normal. So, you know, I'm trying, to, I'm trying to be like him. Hey, good evening, chat. Thanks for having me on, man. What's going on, Joe? Man, what's now, what's up, man? About what's the, up? Uh, the ammo. Yeah, no. So, um, just like uh, uh, Carl was saying, um, you know, you can go in there, you can spend all that money and, and get like that Beretta and everything else. And then when you get it, it doesn't shoot. But the one thing I, I was trying to bring up, wanting to touch about, because I know you shoot competition. Yeah, ammo is important also because you have to think of it as a system. Right. Shit in equals shit out. So, like, if you're shooting, you know, plus P plus or uh, an, an anemic ammo, you're going to have all these issues with um, cycling issues, uh, ejection, you know, stove pipes, failure to feed. If you got cheap springs, you know, or, like, um, some of your race guns, some of these uh, – Purebred, some of these Athenas and Lago Elians, they're designed around 124 grain ammo. They're designed around like minor power factor ammo. So if you start uh -huh. putting this um, commercial white box stuff in there, it's not going to feed properly. Um, then also some of your, uh, your your bullet formation, the argive on the bullet, like one of the issues, you know, people's like, oh, you can't run hollow points in 1911 A1s because, you know, they always jam in stovepipe. But that was because of the bullet design. That feed ramp was designed around a specific ammunition from World War II that they stopped producing in 85 or 86, mm -hmm. something like that. So you had all those issues. Wilson, um, Wilson from Wilson Combat solved that issue with his magazines and the, uh, the angle. I think it went like from a 32 degree angle to like a 33 or 34, whatever it is and shit. So a lot of that stuff is that right there. So people that get these guns and they won't do their due diligence because, like, I might have a gun that I swear by it shoots great for me. It's not going to shoot the same for you or for Call or anyone else, you know? Right. right. And the last two things is, Carl, you owe me money for a macro, and I need to talk <laughs> to you. I need to talk to you about that gas pedal for a macro on a serious note. Um, yeah. Then Epstein didn't kill himself. So, so <laughs> let me let me discuss that macro, okay? Let me unload this real quick. So, the problem I'm having with the macro, okay? I know you keep asking about it. Um, is well, let's say I I have the macro frame on my XL as well. So I have yeah. you know basically two of these guns, right? But Snop. if I were to make a some rest for this. It's going to go on the rail naturally because they use the 1913 style rail, right? So let's say somebody takes their gun out and they shoot 350 rounds because they got a thumb rest on it, right? And they're excited about it and they heat soak the shit out this gun, okay? It's basically starting to smoke, right? It's cooking oils. And they set it on the table and then they come back, you know, five minutes later after loading some magazines and they want to shoot it again. Well, you've really heated up all that polymer, right? And so this is what happens. Just this is this gun is cool. Now watch what happens when I pull down on this light. It's gonna, it's gonna droop. Right. It causes yeah, frame sag. Flex that flex in it. Right. Yeah. You get frame sag, right? Yeah. Now imagine that happened permanently because you're pushing down on the bottom of this part, right? And you're really torquing down on the on the frame, right? And this gun is hot. And then a frame sag and get stuck like that. Yeah. Hey, but so I I got a solution for that, Carl. So here's the deal right here. I, I need a gas pedal. I'll send you what I got. I, I have a metal frame. Okay. Uh -huh. So. Gotcha. Yeah. If you have, um, that's why I'm thinking about working to make them for the, the Icarus or what's the new one that just came out that it has the look, it has grip panels on it. Uh, shit. The, the Ace. 
from Acris or no, 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 not the, no. It's uh, it, no. There's a new one out for the P365s, and it actually has real grip panels on it. Yeah. It looks um, you can swap out the grip panels on the front of the gun on the the grip of the gun. It looks more like 1911 style. All right, yeah, but All yeah, no, and that's that's um, that, that, that's why I guess I'll I'll, I'll push the information to Tackleberry or, or I'll figure out. The yeah, just send it to me. Yeah, just hit and, me up on Instagram. And um, figure it out because yeah, the polymer is great and everything else, man. But it's just like I'm I'm a metal gun guy. You run out of ammo, man. You could beat the fuck out of someone. Somebody with it. Oh my! <laughs> That's why I missed the, the Ruger P3, the Ruger or uh, P series, the P94 and P95, the P89, the P89. <laughs> you could beat the hell out of somebody with it. the P93s on back because those the metal frames. They stopped the P94. Yeah. And, well, and on back. And and, and, I, and I would say also. Uh, one polymer gun you can beat the crap out of someone with is the HEK USP series because them boys is beefy. Hey, look, he don't pull it out of a P89. Yep. What you doing with that P89, boy? <laughs> that boy got a P89. Yep. What you know about that, man? I got a lot of guns, man. They go back, bro. I used to have every Ruger ever made. I sold my collection, dog. Yeah, I had the P from the P85 to the P. Uh, 85, what is it, Mark Three, to the P87, to the P89, to uh, the P90, the P91, the 40, uh, the P93, 9 millimeter, then the P94, then the P94K, which was the 40. Now, yeah. for, for Ruger Sturm to be a German company and then move to the States and become a shit company, that hurts. That yeah, hurts so bad. Ruger? Ruger's yeah, always Sturm. an American company. No. They German descent. Yep. Yeah, it might have been German descent, but they started up because Ruger's Ruger's first pistol um, was modeled after the Japanese Nambu. Oh yeah, the twenty two. Yeah, the twenty two. I used to have it then. The twenty two. Uh, damn, what was it? It was before the mark. You pull the back back from the side, and they had the ten shot long clip, and you can shoot. Yeah, so it's, uh, it was probably like the Mark One. Mark one, yeah, yeah. It, 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 it looked like a German Luger, but yeah, like a no, Nambu it was in the back. It looked like a Luger in the front. Yeah, it was. It, it was that modeled was after the uh, Japanese Nambu. Hey, we put me in the back chat. I gotta handle something. All right, get you up out of here because you win. Yeah, or uh, uh, Joe, man, that, that was one of my things. Uh, that that that's one of, bro. <laughs> that that three sixty five. I just bought a. Uh, I just won it on Gun Broker. I just bought an FCU for a 320. Nice, nice. And the 320, I'm going to build this. I'm going to build it from the ground up. The 320, I'm going to figure out what can I do to – um. I think the gold FCU is like the best. It's already upgraded, right? The gold one? Yeah, it's, it's the, the titanium one. Yeah, titanium, yeah. yeah. I yeah. think it's already upgraded, but I, I'm, I was going to see what else I could do to the, the fire control yeah. unit. I think that comes with a, a flat trigger, flat fist yeah. trigger, anything it else. With, it, so, yeah. Are you going to do – um? A plastic frame or you oh no no sir no sir i'm doing i'm trying to get the lg the lg frame i want right. the metal frame i want All to right. build because i got two tech ops i got two tech ops that's before everybody you know they the military even got the roof i mean the um the 320 i had the tech ops you know uh one carry and one full size and both of them shoot 17 shots so you know yeah one threaded barrel um I said I wasn't gonna bother them because I talked to the um to Carl about it. Carl was like, hey, man, leave them the way they are. You know, don't 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 bother them, just leave them like that. Because they came and that's uh -huh. something too, man. Like uh -huh. you know, a lot of times we'll go get guns and we'll we'll start changing shit out and everything else, man. And that at that point you might as well just go ahead and build yourself Self. because you you go and get a Glock for four hundred bucks. You know, you get a Glock 19 four hundred bucks. 150 bucks depending upon where you're at and then first thing you do is replace the sights trigger. replace the trigger replace the barrel you know replace the should have built it yeah yeah you know you replace should have piled my 80 and built it yeah got a polymer my 80 for 100 you can cut that frame to whatever the hell you want it to be because i got a p80 right now that i'm gonna be able to a glock yeah. for my bug nation glock well, so they, they started selling glock frames you can go and get a legit factory oem glock frame and just build it out, man. You know. Mm -hmm. But I'm gonna build it, um, cause this is the look I'm going with. 
um, you know they made that Spectra in 320. Compensated. Yeah. So I want the Spectra slide with a 10 barrel, and then I want 10 controls. If I got to send the controls off and get them 10, cool. I got the FCU go uh, fire control unit. Drop it off in there. Um, I'm going to take – I got an SRO on the uh, VP9 tactical that I like it. But I don't like it because the VP9, you know, it tapers up like this. Tapers up, yeah. And so yeah. and so it protrudes like that off of it, and it looks weird to me. It just to me, it's it's a me thing because I get to shoot and I see it and it just drive me crazy. Yeah, it's <laughs> metrical, man. So I did that one time. I I, I picked up a uh, uh, a six hour P220, right? Um, mm. Nice gun, man. Beautiful gun. It was one of those. Uh, dude brought it. He got hard up for some cash and had to sell it, right? So I picked it up in the pawn shop. Brand mm -hmm. new gun, man. And it was um, a commemorative gun, right? So it had, like, you know, some inscription and shit on the side. And it was, like, really freaking me out. It was really bothering me, man. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to sell this gun. I'm going to get rid of it, get a new slide, do all this. A rabbi was like, well, what difference does it make? You can't see it when you shoot it. So he's a smart motherfucker. <laughs> Damn. I hate when people make me be logical. So who told you to come up here with logic? Nah, man. I'm just saying this shit, man. So I, basically what I'm going to do is I'm just going to buy another SRO. I think that's my favorite new red dot now. The SRO. I ain't going to lie. The 507 is kind of cool. It's durable. But the SRO, I'm going to go get the little metal the covers, for, the covers yeah. for them. But the SRO, I think I'm in love with the SRO because I can actually see it. And I got eye problems. So you know, kind of blind sometimes. And I want I want to do the uh SIG and I want to build it, build the SIG, put the heavy uh mag weight on to get the extended mags and everything. Um the put the uh Terran tactical base you know, plates. Yeah, base plates to yeah. make it balance out. You know, and this is all metal gun, and I can slap your side here because you know, to be honest with you, like I understand people like the new X5, but if I'm not mistaken, then SIG make was that the original was the X6. Uh, I'm not sure, man. Or was it the X5? They brought it back out again. But you remember the first one? It was like $2,300. This was back in the early 2000s. So the yeah, XC, yeah, that was Legion. The, the, like back then, it was like all the Legion stuff. Mm hmm. And it, it was, was X something. Yeah. I remember what it was because uh, Mitch Mick was at a pawn shop and she told me to buy it. And I was like, it's $2,300. And I would have been broke. And back then, I ain't know no better. And now I look at the same gun, this same gun, like 10 grand, six, seven, yeah. running from seven to 10 grand, the old one from West Germany. And I want to say it's double action, single action, because they know the new ones now is just single action. Man, and I was like, damn, I should have bought that gun. But um, the, X, the X5 is a bad gun. But I, I was like, man, I'm buying all this stuff. And then I got guns, bro. Like, I got a parrot. I got a couple of parrots, man. And I went to shoot them for old time's sakes and was like, damn. I'm tripping. Yeah. Like I'll so, just be wasting money. And and, and 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 again it goes back to like what are you using the guns for, man? Because from my understanding, those uh those CZ Shadow Twos, man, they're great. The CZ 75 yes! guns. Yes. And, I listen. Two. Yeah. Shadow two black. Shadow two AccuCheck black. You yeah. got like the 1911 barrel on it. Yeah, it has it has the uh barrel boy. Bushing but, on it. Yeah. Oh has, man, I love that gun. Um, that gun is a. I want to say it's it's uh Cajun Gunworks, and I'm not yes. trying to plug or whatever, but you can send your stuff off to them, and they'll accurize it for you. And then CZ USA, I, I think that's what it is. It's a shop. They'll they'll do the accurizing. You know, they'll add a bushing to it and everything else. And that bushing helps out a lot because it aids in that lockup. It aids in the accuracy. You know, that, that gap in between your barrel and the slide affects your accuracy, but it doesn't affect it to the point to where I notice it or maybe you notice it. But, like, your, your shooters, your competition shooters. Oh, they notice it. Oh, yeah. They're like, oh, this, this, this rotated a half of a radian up. It's like, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> Bro, listen, I own it. Like, so let's go to my cheap guns. We're going to go through my cheap CZs. We start off with the PO7. I love it. That is my boo. That's my bedside on the side of the bed. Uh, seventeen shots. You gonna? That's what I'm. A, I'm gonna gun you down with that. With some limited defense. You know what I'm saying? 
that's my boo. My PO, my PO seven, then I got a PO9, then I got a P10. My P10, I'll take that over my Glock. My preference. Then you go up to the shadow. That gun got more video. I got more videos with the shadow, the black shadow, than any video. But Lonzo, everybody, you know, it made everybody go buy guns. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, yeah, it made people like Lonzo when they got the P10 competition. I was shooting a saddle, you know, like, like, hold on, man. People sleeping on CZ, like CZ 75B. The 75 ain't, that gun is not real renowned for nothing. Yeah, that, that, that 75 is the truth. And then you go the, uh, based off of it. the 75 SPO1 and, you know, then it rotates, it morphs into the shadow. Then the, the shadow. shadow two, then the checkmate. The checkmate, then your parrot, you know. And your parrot's rocking out there with the Seymour sight um, mount on it and everything else. And it's like one thing I don't understand is like, well, why would I do that? I can just mount uh, uh, a sight to the slot. Well, you do that because that sight doesn't move and you want quick follow up shots. You're not waiting for that slide to go back in the battery mm -hmm. to that slide. So it's one of those things that's like, I know how to pull a trigger, but I don't know how to shoot, if that makes any sense. Yeah. You know? Like, I, and I, that's an fundamentals, but I don't, I don't have the mechanics. I don't have the science, you know, behind it. You know, I just I can throw a punch, but I can't box. Right, right. <laughs> it's a difference, and it's a difference. And and like when we get to the shadow, we shoot the shadow. Everybody like boom, man. We pop, 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 pop. And listen, and I didn't know and this is this is when I found out. Like you said, it's about ammo. I start shooting my shadow. I'm shooting one fifteen. Ah, it's cool. Man, I started putting that hot 124 in there. Boom. I was like, hold up. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah, yeah. And it turned to a whole different. I was like, my regular shadow turned into a monster. That I was like, hold up. I got a good gun. gun. And he was like, yeah, you've been shooting that crap out of there. Yeah. I was like, nah. Man, I shot that thing. I was like, whoa. Then I said, okay, let me go get some good stuff. When it got on my parrot. My parent didn't like the one, it didn't act like he didn't want to shoot the one cycle to 115. My partner gave me some 124. And then my other partner, he got match ammo. He makes this ammo for matches. Man, I shot a mag of that stuff out that thing, man. That's when I seen, like you said, that's when you tell the gun. Yeah. Man, that gun didn't move. It just said boom, 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 boom. I was like 10 yards. Yeah. So, so also like, like with that, man, you know, you change out the springs in there and then you can probably shoot some of that lighter ammo, that lower recoil and ammo. But like, once you get, um, like the right combination, once you get that recipe down, say it's over fucking banger, man. It's over. It, it's like, you know, and those guns that you don't hear Joe people sleeping on them. Hey, I want a staccato. I want this man. You Mess around that CZ man, and especially the SPO one. The SPO one opened the door for the shadow, the shadow right. two, and the shadow, and all that. And see, people keep forgetting it's a difference between the shadow and the shadow two. Two, yeah. Well, so also like the the original shadows and everything else was single action, double action. So some of the shadow twos now are just single action only. My and, double action, single action. Yeah, I can, I can pull. I love that gun. Yeah. My black. I, that's the one I shoot because my expensive stuff. Because I, I'm like this, Joe, and I don't know if I'm weird or probably because I came. I know how people think. I'm not going to be riding around with two or three shadows, with a uh, with a with a shadow echo check, two parrots, or a checkmate, and an Atlas Athena. I got all these expensive guns on me, and thirty people decide they want to take that from me. Yeah, yeah. You see what I'm saying? Like yeah, no, and people be like, well, you be paranoid. I'm like, now nah, because I know how it go. You know, I know how it go. I done seen some things. And just yeah. like Carl said, if the society come together and they know when Tackerberry got guns in his house, he got ammo, he probably got food. Let's get 50 deep. How can I stop 50 people if I don't got no munitions? I don't got no HE or nothing like that. Yeah, no, you can't. And and that that's like, you know, that's, that's going into a whole nother subject where you need to develop your network before you need them. So you need to know people. That's that's vetted, that's trustworthy, that's moving in the same direction you're moving. Whether right. it's preservation to a preservation of self, making money, mm -hmm. 
DJing, playing basketball. Mm -hmm. You have people that have the like, common interests and goals, and, and, and everyone moves in that direction. And then, like, like you say, still sharp and still. Yeah. You know, because you can sit down there with a certain group of people be like, hey, Joe, you're fucked up, man, but come over here. We're going to unfuck you. Like, hey, you right. doing? Like, hey, Joe, remember you used to fucking uh, shoot in the dirt? <laughs> it was like, right. You should remember because it was like 15 minutes ago. No, like, right. Exactly. All love, you know? Like, and, uh, go ahead. Finish. No, you're good. Like, uh, like a buddy of mine that stayed right here by me. It's 10 of us right here in this one area. Everybody cameras watching everybody. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. My camera's watching yeah. him. His camera's watching me. But that's how we work. And we network on the phone. So if anything was to happen, we already know to centralize. Like, we got a plan yeah. to get the hell out of the city. Because right now, where I am, we in Universe Park. We in the city. We got to get the hell out of the city. So all my stuff is not here. So I, I'm going to grab the pieces that I got to go. And I'm dipping. Yeah. You know, I'm bugging out. I'm out of here. I'm out of here. So, like, but that's what we we sit up and we talk about this all the time. And we like, Ben, I got your back. You got my back. Because at the end of the day, all we have is each other. Yeah. And and, and it, it's crazy. And it's weird because it's like, you know, you, you not to get all fucking technical and everything else, but you have to have a mutual agreement that if something happens, you know, you're going to get your shit together. And then on your way to roll out, you're going to start activating that link and making sure everyone else is okay. And then you know, you might have to dip out because you might not be home. So someone got to go to your place, grab your bag, and and you know, and and meet you at the fucking at the spot and shit. Hey, we have the uh on my doors we have the electronic keys. So I'm the administrator. So I you know, we all got keys, you know, like you know what yeah. to do. Grab yeah. it. But normally when I'm gone, when I'm away from here. Every firearm is gone with me. Damn, truth and integrity. I'm, I'm bouncing in between the chat and myself. I know. I just seen them too. I just saw that. I got the SPO <laughs> one shadow and the shadow two and the shadow two optics ready. I was just finna go to uh, what is that precision? Um, they got the optics ready shadow. I was uh, finna get the optics ready one, but I did awesome precision. Yeah, yeah. They got the uh, optics. It was yeah. 400 bucks for the slide with the slide yeah. cuts. And I send them the, the optic and put on it because, like I said, it's all. And I was going to do that to one of my shadows. And until somebody just told me this, they making the shadow with an optic ready. With optic, yeah. yeah. Yeah, with I was like, it's optic ready. Do I got to buy another gun? Yeah. Or do I just but go see, get the slide? And, and I, I believe, I'm not sure, I, I think you can buy the slide uh, as a standalone product. You I'm can. Not, yeah, um, but yeah, I mean, like that, that shadow is nice, man, because it, it has a nice weight, a nice balance and everything else. Now, it's not going to make you shoot like John Wick without training, but it's, but, it's yeah. a good gun. You know, I, as much as I hate to say it, I also think Glocks are a good gun. Because they are. They're, they're reliable and you can put a lot of shit through them. You know, just don't let your dog get a hold of it. Yep. Cause it's gonna go off, and don't 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 walk around with it in your purse with any kind of pencils or something. Up now, 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 what I'm saying about that, cause your dog will chew up your clock. <laughs> oh, oh, listen, I got I got I had pit bulls. I, I trust me, I got I got a Glock right now. I have a Gen One, Gen One, Michigan Department of Public Safety Glock. My dog got two big bite marks on the handle. <laughs> The helper canine pierced the inside of the grill. So yeah. I had to go inside with a heat gun to try to push it back. Push it and back. Wind, and wind up because I couldn't push it back the way she left the hole. It was so just red, jagged. I had to go inside and file it out. Yeah. So you tell me a Gen 1 Glock. Now, you know what a Gen 1 Glock going for, right? Yeah. Right yeah. 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 In the yeah. Tupperware. Yep. In the Tupperware. Gen 1. That Wayne's bit it. I could have killed him. Then you're looking at the dog and you're like, man, I don't, I don't want to. Oh, I hit those out of here so hard. And then so you we, think, man, especially in Texas, man, if you abuse the animal, you're going to jail. <laughs> yeah, I ain't, ain't abused. I knocked the hell out of her, though. She knew we had to talk. But see, that's something I love about my dog. I just, me and Mika was just talking about this uh, yesterday. She said, 
I said, man, I don't like my kids. <laughs> it was like, my dog. I, said, I said, I don't like my kids. I love my grandkids, my biological kids. They suck. I don't like none of them. I said, I miss my babies. She said, your guns? I said, no. Nah. My dog. <laughs> I said, I miss my dog. She <laughs> said, yeah, them, them helpers was low. I said, yeah, I had two of them. I said, see, I had two babies. She was just like, when Lucky acted just like your daughter. I said, yeah, she did act like money. I said, but it was money dog. So I tell people, the dog is a figment of the personality of the owner. Yeah. It's an extension of their personality. So I was like, she act like Lucky was ignorant. Money's ignorant. Neffy laid back. I was laid back with Neffy. Man, I she bit me, she bit it. I smacked her, and then I just talked to her and just said, Neff, you can't eat the gun, man. You see this? You can't eat this. Smell it. And she looked at me and she gave me the look. And I rubbed. I was just like, man, you can't do that. She stopped eating my guns. But Lucky <laughs> kept going eating Mika paintings. So I was just like, <laughs> she was like, you beat her. Like, you got to talk to him, though, but you got to treat me like kid. <laughs> and I just told her, I said, baby, you can't eat guns. Because I'm going to tell you what she loved, though. She loved AK Wood. It's something about AK Wood. Do you know she ate a Narenko man. on the fold? Fucking she, ate, she ate the hand guard to the screw. Because she eat wood. She was just crazy, bro. I could have cried, but I found another hand guard. I found another, uh, another set of wood. Grip. Yeah. I found the pistol grip, man. She ate the pistol grip, bro. I could have cried on the underfold. Yeah. Narenko, check a pistol grip. You know, I mean, you know, I'm not going to take nothing from them. Uh, what's the name of them boys? Um, Clinician Carver. They make some good replicas, but ain't nothing like original. Yeah. The, uh, block. uh, Clinic, 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 yeah. And like right now, man, like all your your AKM variants, your AKM 47 variants, um, because different different countries called them like uh, they called them a type 56, uh, yeah. Korea, yeah, Chinese, Chinese, was Chinese, type Chinese was type 56, um, Poland called them something else, but it's basically the same, same. And they made some great guns, man. And like, I, I, I kicked myself in the ass because, you know, yeah, it's kind of my fault, but it's not my fault. You know, the ex-wife walked away with a lot of shit, man. She walked away with guns, scuba gear, fucking everything, man. And just on GP, and she didn't want none of this shit. No, she just no. did this shit out of spite. Shit, yeah, just out of spite. Just out of spite. Oh, uh, my buddy, man, my buddy, my buddy wife left him, and she left with a gun that he really, really wanted it so damn bad. He just bought it from her. He was like, man, just sell it to me. Yeah, sell it to me. She and then she took the one that he really wanted. She waited a couple of years. He bought out out of everything. He just paid him. You know what? I'd make up with her. Like, yeah. look, let's reconcile. I get all my shit back, and I take her rings and shit. And be like, her get out. Hey, look, look, look at this douchebag. See, tell my I eat wood and my dog eat wood. It's now, busy. man, that's you, man. That's you, bro. I don't oh, it's me though. Okay. Yeah, I don't okay. like the wood, man. I'm allergic to it because I give it. <laughs> Hey, 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 yeah. hey, Carl. Yeah. If you don't mind me, hey, what do you want me to call you on the live, man? Using your government name and shit. You know? Oh, that's fine. I'm I'm fine with Carl. All right. Hey, but check this out, man. Hey, so um, in your comps, like, like, uh, you shoot major power factor, minor power factor. What, what, what's uh, what bullet weight are you running? If you don't mind me asking you. One twenty four, sometimes one forty seven. All right. Oh. Can I ask you a question? Do that 147 suppress well, or you got it all dynamite it up? No, no, no. So you want to reduce your power. You want to reduce the, the amount of grain uh, powder that you're putting in your bullet, right? So your bullet shoots a lot slower, and it's softer. And so when you see people shooting terribly flat, like with almost any gun, um, and there isn't – they're not just using off-the-shelf, you know, 115 mm -hmm. grain, you know, Winchesters, then yeah, they're probably shooting powder puff rounds. Yeah, that's so, what we call them in the competition world. Yeah, and also, they got re reduced power factor rounds. Like uh, again, it's one company, Phoenix Ammunition. They make a lot of competition shooting gun, uh, rounds, and they got you know the RF, you know, reduced power factor rounds, one twenty fours, else, and like they shoot flat. And and again, those rounds are they're not really for self defense. Where you can go buy uh, a white box of Winchester ball ammunition you can get away with that for self-defense you start shooting at you know reduced power factor 124s you can use it but it's not ideal yeah when you start seeing lipstick bullets 
<laughs> yeah. That's what I call them. Um, they're usually blue or red or, you know, some kind of off green or something. Yeah. Chances are they reloaded their own or they're buying them like that. So you can go to like bluebullets.com and, you know, order bullets like that all day. And then when you put them in and you start shooting with them, you're going to have a flat shot. Okay. A lot. It's probably noticeable, like 50% at least just with the bullet. So on the competitions, I thought they were up the app. They were up the pile to make the ammo shoot faster. That's you don't want your bullet shooting faster. That's more recoil. Yeah. So now, so now you're now you're getting into your recoil management, and especially with some of these quote unquote race guns, competition guns, you don't want that muzzle rise, that muzzle flip. If you're not shooting compensated, you're going to get it. Um, you start messing with compensators, that's a whole different beast. Yeah, like beast. that. Yeah. That takes tuning, and yes. then you start messing with like if you shoot factory ammo in your comp, and then you go to put a minor power, power factor ammo in it, you're gonna have it's gonna fuck it up. Like you, you're not gonna shoot well that day. Yeah. You're gonna be frustrated. You, now, mm -hmm. you need to bring a second set of springs that are lighter yes. for that 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 less powered round, right? Yes. And then you need to be able to have different weights so you can tune it and figure out which one you use. Yep, and uh, I. Got there's a lot of companies that make um, weights, you know, weights like Wilson Combat. They make frame weights to go into their um, their uh, 365 frames and 320 frames to to reduce that muzzle flip or that muzzle rise. And 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 again, like I always I always like to think of it as a system. You know, if I do something on on this side of the equation, I'm going to get an effect on this side, so I have to balance it out. You know what I mean? It's a directly it's inversely a it's it, it's an inversely proportional relationship. Yeah. So, so the faster the faster your bullet goes, you literally need a harder spring. So I got a question for you. I got a nineteen eleven. Remember the coat I showed you the coat custom with the comp? Yeah, yeah. I was shooting some hot loads out of it and it shot well. Then I put factory loads in there, it started acting crazy. What kind of when you say hot loads, you're talking about plus it P was, or plus P plus? I mean, I don't know. There were some hand loads. I had bought were some they specifically loads. made for that. That for did the guy that sold you the gun? Did he give you those bullets too? Nah, I had got the bullets from another guy that shot 45. Okay. Now he said they're hot, and when I stuck them in the 45, it was. <laughs> now we was last time we shot it. It was like we were shooting white box. And it was okay, so this is what you need to do. You need to put your phone on the bench next to the gun. Mm -hmm. Get as high to you can, high as you can to the ejection port. Okay, and you need to start a video, like in 1080 or 8K or 4K, whatever you have, whatever mm -hmm. high is recording you can get, get use it. Then, if you're using 8K, you can slow down to one eighth speed. Yeah, sometimes to one sixteenth. And you can you need to watch what's happening to the shell. It's just being extracted. Okay. Okay. So as it's coming out of the gun and it's starting to be extracted, is it making it all the way? Is the slide making it all the way back to the ejector? And if it's not, let's say it's just barely turning up because it just barely hit it, but then the slide starts closing before it before the shell you know, is before the shell is like leaving the leaving the breach, right? Mm -hmm. The ejection port. So if the if the shell's not leaving the ejection port properly, and on its way out and flipping, then you have a problem. That's your spring. So a lot of times, what happens is it'll come back just far enough to turn the shell, and then the slide starts push going backwards, and it'll still pipe it. Yeah. Also, take a look at your shell casings because you're once you look at your shell casings after firing, it's going to tell you a lot. You, do you have busted primers? Are the shell casings dented, you know? Um, I got something that's dented now like this. Look, you see how this is the hole, right? Yeah. They did it like that. Didn't like that, yeah. So that, that sounds like the, the slides coming back for it before it's fully ejected. You're getting a pinch. Yeah. And, and then, see, like... Uh, uh, a guy uh, stole my screen, got my gun. Yeah, and, like, some of them, like the FNFALs, right? They're, they're notorious... Uh, in the PR ones or the G3s, they're they're notoriously hard on brass. That's why, like, you can tell because, uh, like, they'll leave a crease down the side of the shell casing. And mm -hmm. Things move. So, so 
idling so fast. What I would recommend is order a whole range of springs. Okay. And your springs are going to have a color set on them. You can, you, you can buy them in a range. Okay. So let's say you buy the 16, the 15, the 13, the 14, the 12, and the, and the 10. Okay. They're all going to have a different color set and keep those springs together. Now, what you're going to do is go, go to Brownells and buy the spring gauge. Okay. Because if you don't bring the paperwork with the springs, you don't know which fuck is, which one is which. Right. So you'd be like, well, I'm going to try this one. I don't know if this is the 13 or the 16, but I'm going to try it. Right. That's not the way to go. <laughs> spring gauge, you drop the spring in and literally squeeze it and it'll tell you what that spring is. Yeah. The compression ratio, the compression rate on it. Mm -hmm. yep. So, you know, if it's 12 pound and your, your gun was failing with a 12 pound spring, um, and it was stove piping, you might need to go down. So try the tent and then watch your ejection pattern. Yeah. And then like Joe Voss said, look at your cases that came out too. So yeah. shoot 10 rounds, watch the ejection pattern. If you're getting a gun that where it leaves, um, out of the gun and it's kind of chasing, you know, this almost like a 45 arc mm -hmm. and it goes around four to five feet and then, you know, drops hard. That's a good ejection pattern. But if you're getting them going straight out to the side, that's bad. If you're getting them going straight out, they're coming out forward at a 45, that's real bad. <laughs> so, yeah. And if you have an odd ejection patterns, you got a whole different problem. Yeah. And and like like odd ejection patterns, that could be an ammo issue. That means you don't have consistency in your ammo. And and mm -hmm. it's just that, man. I'm glad you brought that up, Carl. Uh, I'm not a competition shooter. Like, I know how to shoot, but I don't yeah. know how to shoot. You no, know, I can throw a punch, but I can't box. And there, there's right. a whole science behind this shit, believe it or not. Man. And, you, you know, it, it's just amazing. Like, if you dig into the weeds and you start looking at it, you look at the science, and it's just like, wow, this was, this was the cause of this, you know. And then you, you get, like, some of these F-class shooters and some of these uh, long-range accuracy shooters, well, precis precision shooters, and, you know, them motherfuckers, like, they work for NASA and shit. They come up with all these gadgets and gadgets and shit. And I was just like, it's like, what the fuck? <laughs> but it, it, is, it is. It's all about physics. Yes, sir. You know, the, the mass of your slide, the spring rate. Um, you can even get into using um, dual springs, triple springs. I think I have so, dual. I have a captured dual. Spring, mm -hmm. um, set up because you got to take the spring and put the bang in there and take the and put the die rod it. in there mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. everything else yeah and, and that's um, the way that is but I had shot that gun I ain't shot it in a while and last time I shot it was hanging up on everybody and yeah. you know it was jam it pissed me off and I was like ah cleaned it put it up so they and make then, springs with two different size springs spring yeah I got, that. I got that I got the yeah. one with the fat spring in, 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 in the front and like the little spring in the middle the back yeah yeah kind of like they do glock yeah, yeah. the the clock gym before started the uh capture springs and everything else and then also like sometimes you can check your ejection port because sometimes you might have some burrs on strikes that right and 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 then like it goes down to like uh carl was saying about getting a, a load cell or a spring uh spring load tester um it, you know you start breaking out your micrometer and just check your tolerances on injection port because it, everyone makes lemons. You know, sometimes you got tolerances, and sometimes you're stacking tolerances in the wrong way. Mm -hmm. All that plays into it, you know. But, like, for your average shooter, man, hey, I'm going to the store. I'm going to get me a Glock because it's a Glock, and I'm going to shoot. And I'm not paying attention to where my shells land and what they look like after I shoot, you know. Uh, am I shooting high-pressure loads, you know, um, like and then one of the things that like people do sometimes they'll they'll go and they'll buy a gun they'll start changing out um, the slide right so that slide is designed with a certain mass for a certain range of ammo so you start tweaking right. that now you got a lighter slide and that causes some issues so now you got to go in all right I got a lighter slide I'm shooting this ammo I got to change the spring and it just it, like if you don't know what you're doing. Yeah, it, it it can get complicated. You'd be like, "Oh man, this gun's a piece of shit. Don't buy it." Whatever, whatever, whatever. And then you know, someone to pick it up because you sold it for half price. You want to get something else? They'd be like, "That's a spring issue." 
You know, I'm, I'm going to put a steel guide rod in it. I'm going to put a tungsten guide rod in it and uh, a reduced power spring. And it runs like a fucking sewing machine after that, you know? And I did that with, uh, I did that with one of my bills. I did uh, my first P80 bill. It just act like it didn't want to run. I put the tungsten guide rod in there and I went and found an original spring. Glock spring. You remember the old ones? You remember how these used to be the two piece springs? Yeah. Gen twos and Gen ones. Or uh, before they start doing the capture springs in Gen three. I found one of those, stuck it in there, and now they gun howls. When I say it, it's spinning. I had to change the extract out because uh, I put an apex extract in there and it came out real good. Nice, nice. And see, so, that's one of, it's three things I do to a Glock when I get one. Was it? It's a must have. What? The extended uh, mag release, the slide release. Slide release. Got to do that. Oh, they, they horrible. Oh, I gotta get one of those. I do that. I I do me a uh, steel guide rod. Gotta put a steel guide rod in there. What else I do? Them the them the first two things I do when I get it for sure. And and the sights. I gotta change out the sights. The first them them then the must three when I get a Glock. So these two Glocks I'm about to get, them the first three things I'll be doing to it. Speaking of Glock, I'm glad you brought that up. Um, I'm going to show you guys what the new Glock part's going to look like. Hey, man, we don't want Glocks, man. We want that three, 365 macro. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. It's coming. Shut up, Jay Howard. And truth and integrity, y'all y'all go somewhere and make some kids. That's what y'all do. Y'all go make a love child. So <laughs> this is what the, um, the new part's going to look like. It's called the Invictus. Oh, I like that. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Oh, I might have to put it on my Glock 34. That's called or my Glock uh, 19. Yep. So it's gonna mount on the rail. It locks down on this side with some hardware. Yep. But that is the Invictus. Oh, oh. so that side's coming, huh? So what you need? Bug the prototype it for you and test it. Cause I, I got a PSA dagger and I got a Glock 17 that I'll be happy to put it on to see if it worked for you. I'll fold this up. You gonna put the folder mechanism on it? Yeah, of course. Every yeah, Odin. I mean, I'm going to have to buy two of them damn things. Yep, so that's what it's going to look like when it's folded. Let me add the... the. Uh... Oh, I didn't add the hinges in. So, <laughs> yeah. But the hinges yeah. are going to be in those in those spots right here. <laughs> Fucking Howard J. That boy, that was stupid. He said, as "Long as he on top of Troop Integrity, <laughs> be the Troop right. Integrity." <laughs> but y'all So oh, yeah, it I was it was this. gonna be called the um Twilight. the uh, the Cerebus initially, mm -hmm. and I was like, "No, Invictus is the stronger name." No, that's an Invicta. <laughs> okay. Damn, boy, I'm about to get two of them. Yeah, yeah, man, fuck that. I, I still got to buy the um, shit. I got a lot of nineteen elevens, and now I'm building that seed. Um, so in Latin, Invictus means unconquerable, undefeated. Yeah. And so, what's going on with uh the last little dudes that tried to rip you off with the bull? <laughs> oh, um, <laughs> yeah. Well, give us an update, brother. Give us. Yeah. <laughs> so I talked with my attorney last Tuesday. This led yes, two days ago. Or yesterday, and um, we had a long hour long discussion about that dude. And uh, so I've paid seventeen thousand dollars to get my patent finalized. That's what it costs, man. Mm. <laughs> you didn't know patents are not cheap. I got seven of them for Prometheus. Mm. Yeah. Oh. That's why you be at the gun show getting your cell on. I guess. Hell yeah, dude. Like you talk about breaking the bank. We we going up we threw it all at the wall, dude. Literally. Hey, it's finna come back though. It's finna come back though. It's worth Oh yeah. Yeah. It's worth it, bro. I listen, I seen it. When I saw you, you seen like when I saw it, I was like, Yeah. And I knew if you not if you not copy, then you ain't doing it right. So we know you're on the right field because you got two people. Right. Right. But now they're going to pay for it, so it's all that matter. Yeah, so what happens is is um, 
now we can send him those letters, right? Mm -hmm. Cease and desist. And we can also send him threatening letters stating that if you continue or attempt to sell parts, you are now liable for any missed sales from this company. So we're going to fine you for every part that you sold. And then we're going to charge you for every missed sale that Mr. Howard has had because you sold a part. So let's say my, um, my part sells for $180, right? Mm. His part sells for $50. He owes me the difference. And then he still has to pay me for his part because he still made it. Yep. I love it when the plan comes together. Yeah. So. Okay. I, I got you. But I found the dude. I found oh, the you, dude. You found I did. Him? I found him. He's um he's an ex cop for uh, Murfreesboro, Tennessee. To the borough. <laughs> and uh, he's also ex military. And um, what else? He's a uh, he has a training school. He's like teaching, you know, uh, LTC classes and doing some other training. But so he can yep. afford to pay you. That's all that matters. Yeah. So he's I basically found him. I'm real sleuthy like that on the net, but it was just simple. Um, go to his website, look at the video he posted, and it's going to be a Vimeo video, right? Then. Once you open that up to full, you'll see this um, this Defender and Disciples um, uh, title from a Vimeo, right? So I jumped from there to the Vimeo, and he had two other videos there. So then I looked him up on LinkedIn, looked him up on um, uh, Instagram, of course, Facebook. And it's the same guy across all the channels. And that's him. Right. That, see, that's what's up. That's what's up. And so in the video, you'll notice his fingers damaged from gun wear mm -hmm. and um, trying to mitigate recoil. And it's the same dude in the videos. So you can see his fingers damaged. So I took screenshots of everything. So I shot them all to my attorney. So one day, he's going to catch a cease and desist letter and everything he's been paying for. His booth at SHOT Show, the hotel... The, oh, he took your product to SHOT Show? He took his product to SHOT Show and was showing everybody. He, I guess he thought he was going to beat me around the corner or something and wow. attract some major attention. Yeah. And so Align Tactical, Joe Align, Joel from Align Tactical reached out to me on Instagram. And he's the one that told me about this dude. Wow. So, you know, Joel's my direct competitor, right? He makes the little thumb rest, you know. The little blade one that goes way forward on the front of the thumb rest. So, but he's like professional courtesy. I was at SHOT Show. There's this dude selling the thumb rest that folds. He goes, we all have our lanes, and I know he's in your lane. So, mm -hmm. want to give you a heads up. Yeah. No, that, that's that's solid, that guy doing that, man. Right, right. That's so, cool. me and Joe talked, Joel talked a little bit. You know, we talked about how we're doing, and, and uh, I said, you know, you're killing it out there, man. You know, um, still playing a little bit of catch up to you because you're released first. He beat me out the gate like three weeks, but Damn. it was my fault for being on Facebook showing what I was going to release. I should have just released it. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, but see, that's that's like the, the gift and the curse, man, because right. if you're not established, you have to drum up that interest, and the only way you can do that is by just what I sure. got, putting the promos out there and everything else to right. spark that interest to get people in there. But then you got some people that sit in the background lurking and the you know, only thing they do, man, is just pretty much copyright infringement, you know, um, right. intellectual theft. And that that's it. Uh, and that's what it is. It's in intellectual theft. Yeah. So it's, um, I don't know. It's, it's, it's been fun. Um, it's still fun. But when I stay up, when I get up at 4.30, 5.30 in the morning, and I don't go back to bed till 11 o'clock at night yeah, every day, this shit wears on you, man. Plus, I work every – the last seven weeks in a row, I've worked at gun shows. Yeah. Saturday and, and Sunday. And, um, you know, I had the same thing, like, what I used to do and everything else was like, hey, man, there's a better way to do this. This is what we need to do. 
And I, I showed it to one of the dudes in the unit. I showed it to our higher headquarters. And eight months later, a company that had deeper pockets is like, hey, this is what we're going to do to track assets and everything else. So I was like, you son of a bitch. And they offered me a job. And I was like, yeah, I'm not moving. But right. and, and, and it was my fault because I put it out there to our units. It was like, hey, look. We have an issue with doing this and, and managing property and the things we have to do with this property and everything else. Use this. This helps me out <clears throat> throughout all of our inspections, you know, got commendables, everything else. And we're talking about managing um, equipment, you know, mm -hmm. life support equipment, like 20,000 pieces of equipment. And they all had different dates and different requirements and everything else. And you know, I was like, all right, man. I, I shouldn't have showed it, you know, that, that's um, right. But it did a lot for our field. You know? Right. So I'll, I'll take so, that. Myself, but I, I've learned. Yeah, go ahead. No, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. I was done. Okay. So, so, um, I made a, I have another patent out. Um, this was the first one I ever made, but I made it and it got it's turned you, secret by the government. You black. Nice. Now, when a patent goes secret, that's because it could be detrimental to our troops. Yep. Or, so or it could be beneficial to the enemy. Yeah. So, so and so anything that you create can be taken from you when you try to patent it. Yep. And the letter states that I can't I can't produce it, I can't sell it, I can't sell the plans, I can't um, I can't do anything with it. I can talk about it. But yeah. I can't give out the patent number either. Yeah, you, you can't reveal the plans and everything else. Essentially, the government gave you a cease and desist order. Basically, yes. Yeah. So, yeah. And, 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 and it's weird because, like, I see a lot of that stuff where I work at and, 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 and um, just like my last few jobs, you know, some kids sitting around there figuring a better way to catch a mouse. I was like, holy shit, that actually does catch mice. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, just stop stop working on it don't pursue it anymore and sometimes you run into the issues to where the government or you know another government agency or affiliate is working on something very similar you know and like you said it's becomes uh, political yeah well it, so it, let's say raytheon was working on something in that direction right yeah i would lose against raytheon because yeah. naturally they have first dibs they, they have the pockets. Money. They got the attorneys. They got the pull with the government, right? I don't have that. Yeah. But I'm going to tell you what I was working on. No, don't want to know, man. The people, people, you don't? No, we'll do it in the back chat. Yeah, we'll do it in the back chat. People will listen. Right. Anything else? Yeah. No. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah we, yeah, no. Yeah, you know, you know that's people. They'll, they'll be like McDowell's and shit. Like, my buns ain't got no seeds. <laughs> well, they, the the problem is, is if they try to make it, first of all, my, my name's all over the patent, right? So they'll get shut down. They'll spend all their money trying to run up to that point, And then the patent examiner will be like, this is already made. Yep. Sorry. Mm -hmm. so, and so, it's it's a secret patent, so you can't know anything more about it either. And and that's just like um, some of the some of the gun manufacturers and, and some of the uh, I'm not going to say mom and pop shops, but some of the boutique shops they'll do stuff and it'll spark interest with certain units and everything else. And they'll just buy everything. Right. And, and so, they'll, they'll make you sign a, a, a non an NDA. agreement and right. say, Hey, you can't work on this. You can't do this, but we'll produce small quantities or we'll do this or we'll, um, you know, we'll, we'll buy it from you. It's just like with um, uh, cryptic, right. Um, mm -hmm. you know, they, they had the camel pattern, right. And when uh, when the army they was looking for a new camel pattern, that's why it went to the OCP and the UCP, and it was just like fucked up. But the cryptic pattern, it 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 blew everyone else out the water on the test, and it was like, hey, we'll buy this from you for eighty five thousand or a hundred thousand, and the owner had the foresight to say no, because I'm I'm going to make more. And right. You look at like the SMUs and a lot of these units. That's all they're wearing is the cryptic stuff, because right. it fucking works, you know. Right. Now, I'm going to go ahead and tell you what it is, because it's the patent is secret, right? So, do you did you guys ever play Halo? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, that, <laughs> okay. 
So do you remember when you needed a resupply? Shit came flying out of the air and landed, hit the ground. Mm-hmm. And the doors popped off and there was guns and ammo and grenades and shit, right? It's like call the door. Okay, yeah. Well, it's, yeah, it's so like basically <laughs> basically what I designed was a a unit for so you have operators out in the field, right? You have assets <laughs> out in the field. Carl, whatever Carl. they're loaded out with, whatever they left with. Carl, stop. We talk about that in the back chat. So I got a little bit of insight on, into that for you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what's up, STD? Yeah, what's I, up? If, if you want to put it, you want to put it. Tell you from a uh, real world experience and everything else and shit, man. Like some of the uh, some of the DARPA shit and the Natick shit and some of the experimental shit that w- we've used and we are using. You know. Yeah. So I know I know it didn't exist when I was starting to create it because um, I know a drone mechanic and he works on the Predators. He also works on the Global Hawks. Yep. And uh, he works on another one of the drones as well. He goes, that thing does not exist, and it is very needed. And then um, I was also talking to an F-15 pilot, and he was like, I've never heard of this. This is amazing. So um, yeah, that's what let me, let me down that path, right? Mm. Cool. So, um, yeah, I developed it and um, did all the CAD work on it and, um, you know, submitted it you know, to my attorney, he filed for it. And then we were waiting to get a patent pending notice and it was turn secret. And I was like, so what happens to my patent? And so he starts to tell me and, uh, he's like, yeah, you, and then when I get a letter and, you know, there's nothing I can do. So, so they could have used your stuff and you ain't going to get paid for it. Mm-hmm. I might, they may not use it. They're going to use it. Wow. Um, but if they use it, then I, I should get paid now, how That's much crazy. and how much that contract is worth. I don't know. And who's going to make it. I don't know. Well, if, if it's, if it's what I think it is or along the lines of what I think it is, what you're talking about, um, there's, there's several major players in that field. Um, uh, some of the guys that kind of fucked me over, but yeah, they really didn't fuck me over and shit, man. Good guys, you know a lot of them, and they're they're doing it, and we've been using it and employing it. Um, those systems. Um, so, Joe, but let me tell you, just tell you what it is. Uh, so, <laughs> no, so basically, back check, back check, back check, back check, back check. Well, we about to be done with y'all. Yo, we we are, yeah, we at fifty seven. We finna be done anyway. We finna go straight to the back check. Everybody who want to go to the back check, this is the deal. You have to be on that link before I stop the live. The link only lasts probably like 10 minutes after the live. And if you if you haven't been in and out the chat already, you're not going to be able to get in the back chat. MJ, y'all come in the back chat. Y'all got the link. Yeah. Um, hey, Carl, everybody, shout your channels out, man. Thanks. STD, stay in here. Okay, STD, you got diseases. Uh, Odin, tell them how to get at you. All right, so I'm Odin Armory. You can see me at odinarmory.com or underscore Odin underscore Armory on um, Instagram. But uh, I do make a thumb rest for the for the six hour P320s. It folds flat into a holster. Um, you thought you could shoot flat already? Not till you use my part. Yep, yep. And, and if if it don't work, if it don't work.
great episode of Wicked Wicked Wednesday, man. You know what I'm saying? The subject was, was you know, financial. Um, what, what, how can you get financially free? And we touched on it, but we didn't get into it. But man, I know I told you, baby. You know I'm not going to tell you, baby. You know I'm not going to tell you, baby. You know I'm not going to tell you, baby. You know I'm not going to tell you, baby. Take a bear, we just get the squeeze and he tryna put on a show. Who was trapped like the neighbors, then it clicks on him with pole. Nigga know about bug nation when it's up though, we don't go cause shoot a movie, hell it clicks and hollow tips can make a show. Listen nine, two threes, got shot with the cool beans. They say bug came through and left 50 shots on the steam, big ass stick, he pulled the trigger, it's kicking like yeah, feet. Big tell that scope on top and stick, that bitch is 1500 feet. Like what you want, got book line, nigga. What you tryna see, got 45, 40s and nines, nigga. Anything you need. Got two, two, three, and sixty-two. Beats and he 